What is your boy H Money, Mr. The Zone? We in the building. Let's go, man. One FC. We back at it. Everybody hit the like button. Shout out to my boy Rob87 once again. My brother, you feel me? We getting ready for the big fights, man. Mixed martial arts at its finest. One FC on TNT, man. It's the takeover, bro. It's the real takeover. So when I, I want everybody to hit the like button right now and subscribe to the channel, man, as we get ready for the big fights, man. You know what I mean? Shout out to my boy, Boxing Underboss TV. What up? What's good? Boxing Underboss TV. Where MMA champ at? MMA champ, bro, you going Hollywood, man. I see you doing some big things. I know that's you. That's why I said MMA champ. Join the panel. Come talk to me, man, real quick, man. Mixed martial arts. We're going to get Tap Out King in here with you. You went Tap Out King, 1FC on TNT. You can't beat it. Come pull up, Tap Out King. I'm going to interview you, bro. You, you know, you got one of the best channels on YouTube right now. You know, I believed in you since day one. You know what I mean? And I appreciate the content that you're making. Shelton Moore, I'm sorry I just missed your call, Shelton Moore. I just got back to the house. What's good? What's, What's good? Each money. What's MMA champ, bro. What's good? Tell me about the documentary you put together, man. Almost, a, I think you got a thousand views now. So let's talk about it. Um, well, I just want to say this, man. You know, the situation with Johnny Boy is based off of that. And this documentary is basically on the ups and downs on his, basically his YouTube career, like on, in the YTBC, you know, shows that he's toxic and i don't think we need toxic people in the ytbc um i know you watch the h money i know a lot of people a lot of uh, content creators watch it too uh, what do you think about it and I, to be honest with you i think it's very entertaining what you're doing i love the documentary i mean i watched you come up in the game i remember before you even had a channel you know and uh you know, I just want to uh, salute you on the hard work and dedication. And now you got one of the best channels on YouTube, man. And like I said, I've seen you emerge as one of the top guys on YouTube, man. And I think the sky is the limit for you. You're very smart, very intelligent, um, very entertaining as well. You know, so how many channels do you have? Let's talk about that first because I want to interview you. How many channels do you have? I have a oh channels that i do youtube on three so you have three channels on youtube and what's uh, your main channel for those that want to follow you boxing underboss tv boxing underboss tv that's your main channel yes that is my main channel i have one 194 uh, subscribers on it now but your other one got more subscribers uh, mma uh mma's champs dynasty now that got the most subscribers. You almost got three hundred, I think. No, no, I uh, switched it to uh, Boxing Underboss TV. Oh, you switched that one? Yeah, like I, I made, I switched the name. And what could the fans expect from MMA Champ in the future? Is it more of uh, videos exposing people, or is it a uh, live fight commentaries like what I'm doing right now? Uh, could we? Um, uh, what, what? What should the fans look forward to on your channel? Could, okay. So you could look forward to um boxing promo uh, box, boxing fight promos videos, you know, uh clips of fighters training, complications of fighters training, uh boxing highlights, boxing news, and also exposing um the toxic people in the YTBC like I did with Johnny Bum, aka Johnny Boy Boxing. So what what's up with Johnny Boy? Is he going to come back? Or what happened to his channel? Did he delete his channel or did YouTube take his channel down? What do you think happened in the whole situation? And where, where does your beef with Johnny Boy start at? Okay, so, so so first off. Could you hear me? Am I clear or am I breaking up? I'm good? You're clear, you're clear. So first okay. off, Johnny Boy, he disabled his account. He has, he's supposedly going to uh, rehab in Maine. I think he has um has court soon. And you know, Johnny Boy, the thing with Johnny Boy, my beef with him is really that he tries to belittle people and he tries to blame it 
stuff from other people, even though it's his fault. And he's toxic for the community. That's my only beef with him. Beef with him. And people know that I exposed him multiple times. You know, but after this situation with Johnny Boy, and I don't really think Johnny Boy is going to come back. And if you guys uh, think Johnny Boy has come back the most, he'll probably come back. He'll probably come back in the summertime. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll probably can bet you guys that. But uh, he's not coming back anytime soon. I have thousands of proof of him saying he's leaving YouTube now and everything. So he's not coming back um, right now. So do you think that's the end of Johnny Boy? I mean, I seen you put a hashtag, rest in peace, Johnny Boy. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, you know, I don't wish death on anybody. Now, we, we see um certain fighters dealing with mental health issues, correct? Such as Ryan Garcia, Tyson Fury. Uh, do you feel like Johnny Boy, there's a bigger issue with Johnny? Is it uh, mental health? You Do you think that's one of his problems? I think uh, crack is one of his problems. But, oh, uh, come on, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, definitely he, he has some mental health issues. I think he needs to sort it out. And I think he needs to start getting a job because if he is 30 years old and he lives in his parents' garage. I mean, you need to, you know, and for his parents to have to deal with a kid who does, uh, their son who does that, it's very sickening because... If if his he said his dad died of cancer for for super chats, how messed up do you have to be to say that? So I I don't really understand what where Johnny Boy is coming up when he sees these things. But go check out my documentary on Johnny Boy, uh, on Boxing Under Boss TV. It's the the death of the pig i think right or the yeah yeah and it's a uh, johnny boy boxing official documentary so check it out and i mean uh, the, yeah how, how did you come with the idea of doing this documentary what what made you do the documentary is, is it something that you've been working on for a while or what, how did that work well no you know it, it wasn't uh it really came out of nowhere you know Johnny Boy, he's been having a lot of, I guess, downfalls lately. A lot of drama been, been. Okay, give us a timeline. Start off. Where did the drama start off? Let's go. Let's go drama. one step at a time. It started off. Part one of the right document. Let's do part one. Come on. Okay, it started off right before the um, the virus, right? And Johnny Boy, you know, he had beef. He started getting beef with uh. Durden, right, and then spilled over with MXPC beef, and then around there, those times that he started beef from the MXPC, and then this is when all really went down for this. So check out if you if you this is the date where Johnny Boy really fall down the suicide stream, and that was September eighteenth, and Johnny Boy he went on live, and he said. I'm going to hit the kid in the head, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm going to do this, that, 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 blah, 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 right? And then, after that, he said, oh, no more drunk lives. And then after that, he gets drunk again. He says he's, he's going to do something to D. Jefferson and his family. He said D. Jefferson is the end of the ER. And also, Johnny Boy uh, said Mr. Two Hands' daughter is going to be on me? his crotch. So this is really, this is really where you know something is messed up with this guy. He always apologizes, then he does the same thing. He does okay, the do same you thing. Do, yeah. do you think that the mental health has something to do with some of his actions? Does Johnny Boy have any control of himself? You know what I mean. I think there there there's a bigger problem. You know what I mean. Um, obviously he's going through something. We see, like I said, we see Ryan Garcia. He announced that he got mental illness. Do you feel like Johnny, like you said earlier, you think there is something wrong with him? So should should we make excuses for some of his behavior, knowing that he has mental mental health problems? Um. Well, Johnny Boy, we can speculate about mental health, but Johnny Boy has never said he had mental health. He said it was drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. He says alcohol, but alcohol only 
brings out what you really feel. What you say when you're drunk is what you really feel. A lot of people say that, and it's really a theory. So, does that mean Johnny Boy is saying when he's drunk, he really feels? No, I don't know. Maybe it is true. Maybe that theory is true. Um, The thing with Johnny Boy is that I think he has been, I guess, he's been spoiled. I, I, like, I think his parents spoil him because every time his parents keep allowing this stuff going on in their house, bro. And I have nothing. Now, let me say this right now. I'm going to say this right now. I have nothing against his parents. I I love everybody. So I have nothing against his parents. I have nothing against Johnny Boy. I don't hate Johnny Boy because I don't hate nobody. But I do have to call out what he's saying. I do not like what he's saying. I hate what he's saying. But I don't hate him, you know. And this is why I just have to uh, to expose him and just, just dissect everything he's, he does. But I have no, no, uh, have no, no, not no bad spirits and nothing towards John. Okay, so we got a special guest in the chat, the Michael Harris, undefeated prospect, uh, two wins, two knockouts. He's actually uh, sparring against. Shakur Stevenson, right now, you know, um, he's in training camp with Terrence Crawford, Bo Mack, Shakur Stevenson, uh, super featherweight prospect, knockout artist, the Michael Harris in the building, y'all. So we're going to get the exclusive interview with him in a little bit. So, man, uh, the Michael Harris, future world champion in the building. Lisa Bell says salute to the Michael Harris, six foot, super middleweight. I mean, super, super featherweight. MMA champ fell off. Pull back, MMA champ, where you go? Let's go. Shelton Moore said, Rob 87, my boy. So, yeah, man, we're going to be covering the fights tonight. We got an exclusive interview with an up-and-coming prospect, the Michael Harris in the building. You know what I mean? So, it is going to be a great night of fights. We got mixed martial arts. We got a future world champion coming to the platform. He's giving some great work to Shakur Stevenson out there in Colorado Springs. You know what I mean? Let's get it, baby. Future world champion, knockout artist, Jermichael Harris in the building. Let's go. And we call in the fight, so you don't want to miss it, bro. Lisa Bells, what's good? Everybody hit the like button. We got 18 people in the chat, man. Let's get straight into it. So let's talk about this uh, Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua fight. I heard that the fight fell apart. Who do we blame in this situation? Why the fight won't happen next? Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. We heard Eddie Hearn make an announcement, said the fight was on, and now we're hearing that the fight won't happen. We're hearing that Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury is going to be next. So um, I'm confused about the whole situation, but one thing that I do know, Tyson Fury will be in a big fight next. His next fight, Tyson Fury, will be against Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury is going to fight against one of the best heavyweights in the world. If it's not Anthony Joshua, he will fight against the third best heavyweight, which is Deontay Wilder. So at the end of the day, Tyson Fury is going against the best. So say if, for example, say if Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury doesn't happen. If that fight doesn't happen next, what is Anthony Joshua going to do in between time? Who is Anthony Joshua going to fight if Tyson Fury decides to fight against Deontay Wilder, decides to give him the trilogy? If that fight happens, Anthony Joshua will always be on the outside looking in. Anthony Joshua will be watching from the sidelines, bro. Anthony, Anthony Joshua watching from the sidelines while Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder fight again for the third time. Now, if you look at Tyson Fury's resume, Tyson Fury, he's beat the best heavyweight in the world two times. Two times, Tyson Fury went in the ring and shocked the world. Some people say three times. He said, AJ will fight against, Yo, shout out to Lady Chan. Shout out to Lady Chan, the queen. Shelton Moore in here. Okay, he bringing the smoke. 
You know, he team AJ. You know, he banged out with uh, Lady Chan and them. Okay, I'm going to let you cook. I'm on mute. Shelton Moore, what's good? What's up, brother? What's up, chat? How's everybody feeling tonight? Uh, first, of, first off, let me start by putting out an apology. I put it in the chat. The LDBC was right, and I was wrong. Looks like uh, Fury going to fight Wilder. And uh, AJ going to fight Usyk. That's what it looks like it's going to happen. I wasn't going to say nothing about it. I was still trying to wait. I was hopeful. But Frank Warren came out today and said, we can't do anything until the mediation is done. And, you know, Frank Warren, he's a promoter. They all lie, but Frank Warren does, usually doesn't say much. So if he's coming out and saying that, I pretty much know where everything stands. I don't need to hear too much more. Wow. So are you disappointed right now? I mean, we, we went back. If, you were, if you're you a know. true boxing fan, H Money, who wouldn't be disappointed about not getting to see the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world? We haven't had that shit since Lennox Lewis in 1999. So who wouldn't be disappointed? But as I always say, I'm not a fan of any fighter. I'm a boxing fan first. Boxing must go on. We got great fights for the rest of this year. No one man holds up the sport of boxing. Boxing will continue with you or without you. So let's watch, let's watch the fights that we got and let the uh, negotiators negotiate, fighters fight. Okay, so uh, so do, do you... Uh... I mean, do you regret, uh, you know, some of the things that were said, you know, in the past? I know we had a couple of debates here where it got no. heated. No, because debate is supposed to be heated. It wouldn't be no fun. H Money, we wouldn't be cool the way we are if I butt kissed and believed everything you or went with everything you said. And you wouldn't have no respect for me now, would you? Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, I don't respect any yes men. So, yeah, I, I would say yeah. that. Yeah. I wouldn't have no respect for you either if you agree with everything I said just because I said it. It doesn't mm -hmm. just because yeah. you say it, don't make it so. So, you know, I love the relationship that we got, man. We can agree to disagree. And that's what we need more, you know, on this YouTube platforms. And so we need more in the world, actually. We need people mm -hmm. to be able to have a discussion. And if they can't come to agreement, agree to disagree and move on amicably and peaceably. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to be calling each other out our name. Threatening each other, you know, all that soft sucker shit that these fools do. We don't need none of that, man. We grown men and we boxing fans. Boxing, you're supposed to have opposing views. That's what makes the sport it is. Like, like my grandfather used to always say, if you knew who was going to win, they wouldn't have to fight. Yeah, but, you know, uh, to be honest, you know, you know, most of AJ fights, he went in those fights and we knew he was gonna win you know even the fight that he lost you know we thought he was gonna smoke andy ruiz the fight that he did lose you know so i just feel like who is it to blame then i mean is it wilder the one that's preventing it i mean do we uh, do we uh, uh, uh oh the ldbc apology i think you did apologize to him um do you feel like the rest of the people in the community and and uh we doubted Deontay White in it. So do we do do we owe uh Ben Israel uh, uh an apology? Do we owe yes. uh Blue Bloods an apology? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Call that man all out his name, call him blue balls and all this so crazy shit. You know, I went on his platform today, he didn't say nothing. I ain't say nothing to him, but I left in his chat. I apologize to you, good brother. You were right and I was wrong. And that was simple enough. I did that. But, uh, you know, the thing is, man, uh, we have to just be able to come together, man. We all want the same thing. We want the best to fight the best. So it shouldn't be no disrespect. No, uh, that's, the, that's the thing that gets me, you know, as a black man. That's the thing that really gets me is the disrespect. I don't like disrespect in any form. I, don't, I try my best not to disrespect anyone. And I won't tolerate anyone disrespecting me. So, you know, you get what you get. So, you know, at the end of the day, we need to just come together, man, and, and watch these great fights that's happening. The, the sport of boxing is going to continue. We got great MMA on tonight. 
We had great MMA this weekend. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to ask you about that, man. You hear this kid. Uh, what's his name, Paul? You talking about Jake Paul? Or Lo you talking yeah. about Logan Paul? Jake, Jake, Jake. Uh -huh. older brother. He's trying to call out Daniel Cormier. I think that's a bad move, brother. Oh, the little brother, Jake Paul, calling out Daniel Cormier. But Cormier yeah. been getting his ass whooped lately in, in a boxing fight. You got to realize that. Most but of see, these I, thought, I heard Cormier today. Cormier said, I will never get in the boxing ring with him, but he want me to get an octagon. So, uh, exactly. The thing is this. Most of these UFC fighters, they don't, ain't, they don't have any hands. They don't know how to box. They don't know how to strike. So, Jake Paul... Most of these guys, he probably could beat them in a boxing match. Daniel Cormier, way past his prime. He's about 41 years old. Um, 42. He's a, he's a wrestler, right? Daniel Cormier is known for his wrestling. I got Daniel, I think, Daniel I think Cormier is probably the second best wrestler ever to come out of the United States. Exactly. Now, that's why I got to favor Jake Paul in a boxing fight. You know what I mean? So, I got Jake Paul in that one. I seen Jake Paul. He was at the UFC event. And guess what? He was breaking excitement. He was they put him on a jumbo trunk. They put him yeah. on a screen. The fans were going crazy when they saw Jake Paul. And yesterday, Floyd Mayweather announced a pay-per-view with Logan Paul, his brother. So these Paul brothers, man, they're getting bigger. They they are um, some of the biggest names in entertainment at the end of the day. And uh you know, they bring excitement to the uh, sport, to be honest with you. They bring fans, right? They got a huge fan base. They have a huge following. Over 20 million followers on Instagram and YouTube. The whole, you know what I'm saying? I think Mayweather versus uh, Logan Paul going to break some records, to be honest with you. And I think uh, Mayweather coming off this retirement, you know what I mean? He could put himself in jeopardy. Jake, Logan Paul over 200 pounds. Six, one, Mayweather could have been in the ring with somebody like that big, I would say. And then Mayweather is older now. Mayweather's 44 years old. So, you know, um, I'm going to pick Mayweather, of course, but you never know what can happen in a fight, though. That just makes it interesting. And then he's fighting somebody that big, you know, so 200-pounder. Is there a weight, like, clause in this? Is there a catch no. weight? Or something? No. So, maybe, no. so he come in as big as he wants to fight Mayweather. Yeah, Floyd, uh, Floyd don't respect him. Floyd's going to probably hurt him. <laughs> I hope he do. And me just being a huge Mayweather fan, anytime I get a chance to watch Mayweather fight uh, Shelton Moore, I'm going to tune in. Anytime. Well, can, who Mayweather? Well, fight. you can tell me uh, how it goes. Well, I, you know, I, I'm a fan of, uh, you know, uh, of these uh, YouTubers coming to the sport. I mean, yeah. You are. Paul, you are. Guys. So they are bringing excitement, and that, that's what boxing needs, man. As long as we right. can get fans watching the sport of boxing, you know, are they generating money for, the, for boxing? You know, I think it's good, to be honest with you, uh, Shelton Moore. So, Shelton, I want to switch it up real quick. Oh, he, they said it is a clause. Okay, somebody said it's oh, a it clause. Is? It's a clause, according to oh, BNB. Okay. I'm not, you know, I, I'll be honest. I'm not following it because I don't really care about it. <laughs> Okay, but you know, a lot of people do care about it. You know, yeah, they do, they do, they do. It's, go, it's probably gonna sell over a million pay pay per views too. Oh yeah, of course it will, definitely. Look now, look, I'm gonna tell you this: if Jake Paul, if Jake Paul is Logan Paul's little brother, remember, Logan Paul is a bigger star than Jake Paul. Logan Paul is the one that the first YouTuber to do the boxing with KSI. So Jake Paul is following the footsteps of his big brother. Logan Paul. So with that being right. said, Mayweather got, Mayweather got over 25 million followers on Instagram. Jake Paul, right. I mean, Logan Paul, he got over 20 million followers on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. So when you get both of those fan bases together, that's over 100 million followers. So right. I expect them to do tremendous pay-per-view numbers, and it's going to be exciting. You know, I think they fight on a six on a Sunday. What do you think about yes. the fight on a Sunday? It's, it's not going to matter. That's probably the only thing happening besides in June, NBA basketball. Got to compete against NBA basketball, but they'll still get uh, over a million because people will tune into that. They'll tune into that. The playoffs hasn't started yet, so they'll tune into that.
For sure. I don't know. June, June, the playoffs will be rolling, so I don't know. But, but they'll we'll still get a bunch of pay per views. They'll still we get a bunch. Evening. We know uh, the Mayweather fight going to be in the evening, and I'm pretty sure yeah. ain't, ain't nothing going to be going on when a Mayweather fight is on. Mayweather, you know, he stops everything. When Mayweather fights, the whole world stops and watches, especially when he got a good dance partner with him, especially when he got, a, you know, an opponent with a big following. Like a Logan Paul, man, I think, you know, the stars are going to come out for sure. Every time Mayweather fights, he stars, the movie stars. A Denzel that sad? Isn't that just sad? But they going to come, though. It's just so sad. They going to come. You know they you, That's why, man, you're going to be the only one ain't watching, bro. I'm going to be the only one. Man, I told, hey, I told, I told, I told uh, <laughs> my, my daughter asked me about it, bro. I told her, if you want to pay for it, go right ahead. I'm not paying for that shit. Look, a W Wilds, I'll be watching T.O., not the exhibition. Guess what? Tiafimo Lopez fight on a Saturday and Mayweather fight on a Friday. Now, if you take Tiafimo Lopez 500,000 followers on Instagram, compare it to Mayweather's 25 million, you know, you might be the only one watching. Pretty much, you know, uh, I know Mayweather fight on a Sunday, T.O. fight on a Saturday, but everybody going to be watching Mayweather. Mayweather going to do way more pay-per-view buys than T.O. This is T.O.'s first pay-per-view. And you doing it on the same weekend of a Mayweather Logan Paul fight. I think it was bad timing. And then on your undercard, you got a washed up Evander Holyfield fighting. Hey, come on, man. Now that's a bullshit card. If you want T.O. fighting against uh George Cambosis when he's supposed to be fighting Devin Haney at the end of the day. So and we all know T.O. gonna smoke. He listen, Logan Paul got a better chance beating Mayweather than George Cambosis got to beat a Tiafimo Lopez. I tell you no, that. No, he don't. I, I no, guarantee you, Logan Paul will be more competitive no. than the no, he's, no, it's not. The no, it's not. Only, be, it'll, only, it'll only be competitive if Floyd carries him. I, 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 bet, you, uh, I bet you Logan Paul go, go more rounds than George Cambosis if you would like to bet. Only if Floyd carries him. Yes, I would like to bet. Only if Did Floyd carries him. Uh, uh, Conor McGregor? Huh? Didn't Floyd uh, carry Conor McGregor? Yeah, he carried him. Okay. So that tells you everything you need to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that tells you everything you need to know. George Campos yeah. is the only chance. Tiafimo Lopez is going to beat the fuck out of George Campos. He, gonna yeah, he should be out of there. He should be out of there inside of five. Inside, I'll say inside of six. I'll give him, I'll give him five rounds. I'll give Campos his five rounds. I'll give him two to three rounds. <laughs> i give that man two to three rounds, bro. George Campos, is, people don't realize... He's coming off a split decision victory over Lee Selby. I thought Lee yeah. Selby boxed him in that fight. And before that, he fought Mickey Bay, Devin Haney's trainer, to a split to a split decision. So he's his last two fights, he barely won it by split decision, bro. Against right. Lee Selby. Serious. Tiffany Lopez is gonna kill this man, bro. You know what I mean? So, you know, so a shout out to Mayweather, shout out to T.O. getting his money. You know, I, I'm happy that he's getting paid. Shout out to his father. You know what I mean? But he we all know that he should be fighting Devin Haney, and that's the fight that everybody was talking about. So with that being Sam said, UK. Sam UK, they're gonna watch it because it's not for boxing fans, Sam. It's for Instagram followers and Twitter followers. They're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna buy it out. They're gonna buy it out. So uh, I'm sorry. What'd you say, brother? I'm sorry. No, I just told I was telling Sam UK it's not for us. We're not going to be the main demographic watching that fight. It's going to be kids and followers of Logan Paul and people who just follow Mayweather, just love Mayweather. They're going to they're going to they're going to buy at least a million. It's going to be at least a million pay per view buys. Watch at least a million. So, uh, so we got a special guest coming to the show in about probably like twenty five minutes. Uh, his name is uh, DeMichael Harris. He's a super young kid. Yeah, you was telling me about that. I want to talk to the kid. He a young prospect coming up, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, right that's now. always good. He's in Colorado. He's in Colorado Springs right now. He's in Colorado Springs as uh, Shakur Stevenson's main uh, sparring partner. He's out there with Shakur Stevenson right now as we speak. He's in Colorado in training camp with Shakur Stevenson, Terrence Crawford, and Bo Mack. He's six foot, super featherweight, fights at 130, and he's a knockout artist. He's giving Shakur some good work out there, so we're going to bring him in. We're going to talk to him about his experience sparring against uh, Shakur Stevenson in front of Terrence Crawford, my brother. So uh, what's That's your a good thought? Point. 
Go ahead. That's a good thing, man. We got to support the up and coming fighters, man. This is the future of boxing. We got to keep them, keep them in our prayers. We got to support them, watch them come up. That's the best thing. That's the greatest thing for me about boxing is watching a young prospect come up and reach his potential. I love that part. That's the part I love the most. Amen. You know, just to give the fans a head up, a heads up on him. I believe the brother, uh, he started boxing, I believe, at 19. He started boxing at 19. He had a short amateur career, but he was so natural with it. He, de he decided to turn pro right after, you know, after a short amateur career. Now, when you look at him, he's been on an undercard of a Tank Davis. He fought on the Tank Davis undercard. He's an Atlanta native. He's from Atlanta. You know what I mean? Uh, we know about fighters from Atlanta, such as Vernon Forrest, Evander Holyfield. I, be I believe Holyfield was born in Alabama, but he grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. You know what I mean? So what's he your was. opinion of uh, Vernon Forrest? Um, uh, Vernon uh, Forrest was a killer. Vernon Forrest was a killer. B. Shea Mosley twice. I mean, you know, a lot of people ducked him. He uh, died tragically short in the middle of his box. Towards the middle, towards the end of his boxing career, he was killed in a robbery. But Vernon Forrest was one of my favorite fighters. I love Vernon Forrest. Yeah, and rest in peace to Vernon Forrest. Like you said, he's the yeah. first man to beat Sugar Shane Mosley. And this is yeah, when Shane Mosley was undefeated. This mm -hmm. was Shane Mosley was a killer. Exactly. And Vernon was the man to dethrone him and actually right. dominate him. Dropped him twice in that fight. You know what I mean? Right. right. Facts. All facts, H. All facts. And he was killed. He was actually killed, uh, I believe, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, yeah. He was victim of a robbery. And yeah. a, a robbery went wrong. And Vernon mm -hmm. Forrest shot down. And he was killed. But I want to, uh, you know, you know, give my condolences to the family. Uh, Vernon, the Viper Forrest, was a hell of a fighter. He was a great welterweight. He, he could definitely box. He had a lot of power. He was one of my favorite fighters during that time. I just and he was a boogeyman. man. There was a lot of guys yes. that actually dropped him. Yeah. What's good? D style boxing in the building. What's good, D style? My brother, salute. Salute. Shout out to boxing. boxing. My guy. What's happening? Man, shout out to the HCP, man. You know what I mean? Shout out to the HCP. Hispanics causing panic. You already know. Yo, uh, D style, I want to tell you about this young fighter by the name of Armani Almestica, the legacy, Puerto Rican sensation, only 19 years old. He's a prospect, two wins, two knockouts. He's a hell of a fighter. Watch out for him. Hopefully, we can get him on the HCP. Hopefully, we can get him on uh, D style boxing. Hopefully, you know, we can build this fighter up and we can help him out. You know, I want to introduce Armani to the YTBC, to the YouTube boxing community. He's a hell of a talent. Armani Almestica, he's the next great Puerto Rican fighter, man. For sure. So, uh, D-Style, I inboxed you his information, and let's let's build this kid up, man. Let's help him get a deal. Let's help him get signed, man, because he, he comes from the struggle. Armani, he comes from poverty. He comes from Puerto Rico. His family suffered a long time. He's a tough kid, and he loves to fight. And most importantly, he's a great fighter. He's a great fighter. He's a great talent, and I believe in this kid, man. We got to support the future of the sport, like D-Styles said. We got to support the future of the sport, man. Shout out to D-Styles, man. And we got an interview. Got an interview coming up with the Michael Harris. He is the uh, sparring partner for Shakur Stevenson. He's undefeated in the super featherweight division at 130 pounds, two wins, two knockouts. Shelton Moore, take over the panel real quick. Let me get some uh something to eat real quick from the fridge. It's time for me. It's time. Roger that. Roger that. Yeah, we here, man. I guess this, these fights start in about an hour. So uh shit. Give me some questions, I guess. I don't even know what you want to talk about. What are you guys talking about, man? What's going on in the chat? Had an eventful day today. A lot of new information came out. Not for sure, because we can't be sure of anything in this world. But it looks like the uh, undisputed fight is off. And uh, Fury's going to be fighting Deontay Wilder for a third time. That's what it looks like. 
don't know if that's really what's going to happen, but that's what it looks like. What do you guys in the chat think about that? <laughs> w. Ryle says, Wilder begging for an ass whooping. Well, I mean, who knows, man? Who knows what Fury's going to show up? Who knows what Wilder's going to show up? We know Wilder can knock Fury out. We know that Fury can beat Wilder up. Has Wilder coming off his surgery worked on his game? You know, Wilder went uh, radio silent for about a year. So who knows what he's been doing? You know? Uh, Tony Lyons says Undisputed is going to go ahead 100%. I don't know, Tony, after listening to Frank Warren today, I don't know. I'm kind of skeptical, brother. I'm kind of skeptical. Uh, Rob Eddie Sapper says Wilder will KO you. But Wilder and KO and shit. But I like Wilder. But Nothing in the Madness says another major fight, possibly. Okay. Bill Felton, what you think about DMP Wilder hiring Malik Scott? Somebody he had a fixed fight with to become his trainer. We all know Wilder had a fixed fight with Malik Scott. And now he's right. training. Malik Scott ain't got no experience as a trainer. Malik Scott, he wasn't shit as a fighter. Malik Scott, he took a dive against Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder knocked out. He knocked out Malik Scott without even landing a punch. Right. Without even landing a punch. And now that's your trainer. That's how we know that fight was fixed. Because, first of all, that's your best friend, and now he's your trainer. And we knew that something was something was wrong because the punch didn't even land, which confirmed that Deontay Wilder fixed the fight with Malik Scott. So I want to hear what you got to say now. Well, you know, that's his trainer. I don't understand why you would have this guy as your trainer, being that the rumors are you got a bunch of yes men in your camp. You don't listen to nobody. I mean, I, in my opinion, I think you need like a Kevin Cunningham, uh, you know, uh, Derrick James, somebody who's going to come in and off the get, off the rip tell you, look, dude, this is what I need you to do. If I see anything other than what I need you to do, I'm out. Wilder, in my opinion, needs discipline. Wilder is athletic. And we know Wilder has power. Wilder needs to work on footwork, body punching, defense, and his jab mainly. If he can get all that together, Wilder is very dangerous. Very dangerous. But who knows what, what's going on? If he's still got yes men around, the results are probably going to be the same. Uh, your guest is ready, H Money. Your guest is ready. Okay. I got you. I just dropped the link. I just dropped the link for you in the chat. So this is how you join. Uh, DeMichael, you hit this link right here, this StreamYard link, you hit it in the chat, and you enter the broadcast. You type your name in, but you hit this link right here, and you can enter the broadcast. It's simple. You can do it with your phone. So we got the interview coming up with Super Featherweight Prospect, DeMichael Harris, undefeated, two wins, two knockouts. He's a knockout artist. He's sparring against Shakur Stevenson right now. He's out there in training camp with Shakur Stevenson and Terrence Crawford. He's giving Shakur Stevenson some good work. Shakur Stevenson, of course, one of the best young fighters in the world. And uh, DeMichael Harris is giving him some good work out there, man. Like I said, he's been on the undercard of, uh, of uh, Javante Tank Davis. The Javante Tank Davis undercard, you know, against Gamboa, I believe, in Atlanta, Georgia. This brother can punch. He do got a lot of power. And the one thing about DeMichael Harris that I can say, he got something that you can't teach. And that's natural power. He's a knockout artist. And yeah, I mean, he's out there with the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, Terrence Bud Crawford. He's out there with Bo Mack. You know what I mean? With uh, Bernie the Boxer, Coach Red. He's out there with the team. One of the best teams in boxing. I mean, 
Okay, I think I got him. We got him back here. The Michael in the building. There you go. What's good? What's good? What up, champ? What's popping? Yo, what's going on? Man, we chilling, man. Welcome to the platform. Undefeated, super featherweight prospect, the Michael Harris. How you feeling? I feel good. I just got done training, actually. Okay. You? You? Oh, my bad. I'm over here. How are you, eat. young brother? How are you, you young brother? Doing good, man. Glad to see that you out here living your dream, getting it together. How's it feel to be in camp with those legends? Oh, man. First of all, it's a blessing. Uh, it's actually one of my first, like, camp camps. So, like, I'm going through all the experience and everything, and, bro, and there's no better place to do it but Colorado Springs. For I mean, how does that compare to training to, like, somewhere else, Colorado? I know you're training over there in the high altitude and things of that uh, nature. And how does that help you as a fighter, you would say? It make you work harder. So, like, you train everywhere else, like, you working hard, but you're not working as hard. So now, like, we're in the altitude and stuff like that, running the mountains and everything, doing just, man, we do all type of stuff. It makes sure. you work 10 times harder. So okay. come fight night, it's going to be a breeze. For sure, man. And uh, tell the fans a little bit about yourself. When did you get started in the sport of boxing? That's actually crazy. I'm 3-0 as a pro now. Um, I started boxing five years ago. Only had 15 amateur fights. Uh, me and Javante Davis are actually close friends. And um, he ended up like two years in the box, two, three, not like three years in the box, and he put me on his undercard. He That's the reason I turned pro. Cause he wanted me to fight on his undercard so i ended up making my pro debut uh july of 2019 on his uh undercard in baltimore maryland and then i fought again on his undercard in atlanta georgia that december and i fought locally just to build my record for sure for sure and how did you get into the sport of boxing what made you pick up the sport of boxing like there's plenty of sports you could have chose basketball football but what was it about boxing that made you want to get in the ring? That's crazy. I played everything. Like, I played football, basketball, all, baseball, all that stuff. So, when I was younger, my dad, like, he would always just show me, like, little stuff on the mitts. Nothing too crazy, though. Nothing too crazy. And we always just had boxing around. Like, he'd be always watching boxing. We're from Ohio. So, Ohio is really big on boxing. But we always had boxing around and stuff. So I think like when I was like 19 years old, I was just chilling in the house one day. And um, I was just like, I ain't got nothing else going on. I'm gonna go to the boxing gym. I went to that boxing gym and I never looked back. You, fe you fell in love with boxing, you fell, in, I fell love. in love with it. Yeah, I fell in love with it. I never looked back. I just kept going, kept pushing. Let me so ask a question, H. Okay. So who is your trainer, your main trainer right now? Uh, my main trainer right now, his name is uh, Pete Crumpley out of Atlanta, Georgia. He's actually from Cincinnati, Ohio, but that's who I train with. And he trains some uh, guys, uh, Brad Solomon. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. Keandre Lillard. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Heard he both trained of him before as well. Okay. Okay. So he, he was a former fighter himself, no? Actually, well, I don't know. <laughs> I never even asked. That's a good question. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> But well, that's good, but you love boxing. You fell in love. You've been in the gym. That's your thing. Uh, how do you see what 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 career path are you on? How do you see your career progressing? Uh, I think I'm gonna be a champion. Like I say, I only been boxing five years. I think I'm gonna be a champion, like in the next two three years for sure. Like that's how I see my career going. Cause the work that I've been getting lately, and the experience that I'm getting, and it's only going to keep it enhancing my skills that I already have. And like, it's already crazy. I don't know if you guys ever seen me fight or what, but those who are in the chat have, have seen me fight. You're, you would be amazed the things I can do. And I haven't been boxing that long. Like, it I don't hurt to be like, I had, like I didn't won national titles and stuff. Like that's how, that's how I fight. And it don't hurt to be around secure Stevenson and uh, Buck Crawford. Now does it? Yo, it make, it make you want to work even harder. Like, it make you look at them and be like, yo, I want to be just, like, better than that, really. Like, you really want to be better than that. But I look at it like, man, it's a blessing because, man, they teach you so much just being around them. And, like, Spawn with Shakur, I'm learning a lot. 
Yo, so uh, have you uh, ever sparred Tank? Since I mean, I know y'all cool friends. Have you ever sparred with him in the gym? Yeah, I sparred him like uh, two, three times actually before. Uh, the last time we sparred, we was really sparring. <laughs> so it was really going. But uh, man, Tank, bro, Tank is amazing, bro. Tank haven't even gave you guys the full Tank yet, for sure. He hasn't gave you guys the full Tank. Believe me. Mm-hmm. That's, That's what you know. That, uh, you know, I'm going to his fight on the 26th, right? Definitely, I should. I'll I'm be going there. to Atlanta. Okay, I'll see you there. And uh, I got Tank losing, brother. Oh my God, I don't see it. Listen, <laughs> I have seen Tank. I have seen Tank spar 160 pounders, 168s, 175, and that's sparring 16 ounce gloves on headgear. Put him to sleep. Okay. I can't make this. Okay. Up. I, I I believe you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go on just future work. I just but think. I, I, no, don't get me wrong though. I'm a boxing fan, and I and I'm not gonna yeah. be biased. But uh, right. I think it's gonna be a tough fight. I think it's gonna be a tough fight. Uh, it's a big step up for Tank. Um, I know people always saying like he always fighting smaller guys and things like that. But his power, his power is up there, and trust me, his skill is too. He just haven't. Okay. He hasn't had to go in his bag yet, and when he does, okay. I'll see. That's how I feel. Okay. Now, what what boxer do you look? Did you look to? Who does your style represent the most? Um, I like Tommy Hearns a lot. Ah, good pick. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good pick. Say, I'll remind him <laughs> of of him because I got like wow. a big right hand. I'm tall, lanky, so yes. people always say I like I'm like a Tommy Hearns, but he's a person I've always been looking up to since I started. Um. I like Earl Spence. Those are probably like the most, the, the only two I really watch, watch a lot. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay, I got you. Harold Benson says, he said, um, he said, is Lad um, undefeated? Yes, he's undefeated. Three wins yeah. and three knockouts. So, tell us a little bit about your punching power, man, because from what I've seen, you look like you a knockout artist. Okay, and I yeah. talk a couple of days ago when we first talked and you told me that you know you got that pop you got that natural power could you tell us a little bit about that punching power um yeah i i mean <laughs> how I, I don't know how hard i punch i never punch myself but um the people i spar with the people um i fought so far i mean the proof is in the pudding i guess i can't punch that hard for my weight class but i never lately like what I, what I used to do, I used to let that get in my head a little bit too much, and I would only just depend on my power. But like lately, I've just been working a lot, a lot on my skill because in my defense, because man, the game is hit and not be hit at the end of the day. So no matter how much power you got, speed or whatever, it's always a guy that's out there that's grinding as hard as you or harder, and that got the remedy to beat you. So I mean. I, like I say, I just never let it get to my head, but I do. I can't punch pretty, pretty damn hard for sure. Okay, uh, Chris Court says he said, "Ask him what's it like to spar Terrence Crawford." Uh, did you spar Crawford? I haven't sparred Terrence Crawford. No, I didn't spar Terrence Crawford. I seen him work a little bit, not too nothing, mm -hmm. nothing too crazy. I think they canceled his fight with Pacquiao recently, so um, only seen him work just a little bit, but. To be honest, Terrence Crawford's a. I think he had a phone call. It's all good. He he be right. Y'all getting a phone call? Yeah, I hear you now. You good? Yeah. So you said uh, what you say about Terrence? You was about to say something. But uh, yeah, he's a bad boy. I would love to see him and Earl Spence go at it for sure. That's gonna be a major fight. And I mean, what I mean, what it feels like to be inside the gym with a Terrence Crawford to share the same gym with him. And Terrence Crawford was there when you sparred Shakur Stevenson. So he's seen you and Shakur get down. And uh, you know what it feels like, you know, just to be around the number one pound for pound fighter in boxing, uh, Terrence Crawford. And uh, is there anything that he said to you? Uh, you know, what type of feedback did he give you? And, and Bomac, you know, being in the gym with, with them, uh, one of the Actually, best teams. Um, I just sparred, I sparred yesterday. And um, when I sparred yesterday, my first day, I'll be honest, hey, 
Shakir put it on my ass. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. He put it on my ass because I came in there trying to be like the tougher guy. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't fight the regular way I would fight. Like I came trying to actually like trying to hurt him. That didn't play out in my favor because he outsmarted me. But uh we just sparred again yesterday and Bo Mac, man, Bo Mac was giving me some good pointers. Um, I'm not gonna say those things because that's just for me, but the work was way better. Way, way better. Um and I, like I say, you learn so much off of these guys, especially like Terrence Crawford. The things that he told me, you know, it, it bro, it helps. It helps, man. Like it, it make you have a better look on boxing. That's num that's the number one thing. You would look at boxing totally different. Because the way so I, who do you at, I would just think like I can just run through guys, and like, right. I, which I was and. At home, I kind of do the same thing in sparring matches and things like that. I can run through guys pretty easy. But being out here, it's like, all right, they on the next level. They're not easy. They're they're smart. They have way more experience. Come on, I'm in there with a silver medalist and a world champion. What more do you expect? I hold my own. So at the end of the day, I, like I say, I learned a lot from Shakir Stevenson, and I learned a lot from Terrence Crawford for the things that he told me. And Bo Mack. Bo Mack is a great coach. Matter of fact, every you, coach in here is a great coach, to be honest. All of them are great, especially Shakur, uh, grandpa. His grandpa, bro, he's like a scientist. Do you have a date for your next fight? Uh, we actually looking at June 5th. Uh, Tia Fimo, uh, George Cambosis on the card because my manager uh works with Thriller, and um, hopefully, I can get on that. That'll be on that Thriller card. That's what's up right there. You excited yeah, yeah. about that? Hey, if if ever get everything gets confirmed, man, I'm gonna be super excited. I'll be super excited. That's what's so up. So that's bro. a date. That's, that's a date that I'm definitely looking for right now. And uh, like when I first talked to you, you mentioned that you know when you got down there to Colorado Springs, being in a like different altitude, that it took you a while to adapt to that for your body to adapt is that correct and that's part of the reason why you feel uh that's part of the reason why Shakur got kind of uh over on you because you know you was adapting to the weather out there is that correct yeah 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 and um it's just really the way I came in like the way I came in and in the whole process here is a lot different like you don't just wake up in the morning and spar like we do we do some stuff before we spar so and I was getting used to it and I come in there and I'm trying to be like the macho man, you get what I'm saying? Throwing big shots and stuff like that. And first of all, you're not gonna hit him with no big shot. You better learn how to set some stuff up in the ring with him. Like you can't just go in there. Yeah, he's smaller than me, of course, and things like that. But also, like I say, he got so much experience. And he knows, like, come on, he know. He know how guys. But y'all the come same weight though. Him. Even though he he's shorter than you, but y'all fight at the same weight class. Y'all both yeah, at one thirty. Yeah, we both at one thirty. Yeah. But so, he's, so very, I gotta, he's very smart. He's very, very smart. smart. Yeah, very defensive fighter. Like he got a great amateur background. He's a, an Olympic silver medalist. He's one of the best uh, pure boxers in the world, you know. And, uh, you know, for you to get some work with him, you know, that's great for you and your experience as a young fighter. So now I want to ask you, what's the difference between Shakur and Tank? You spar both of them. What's the difference between the two fighters? Um... How can I say it? I think, well, I will say this. I feel like Shakir IQ is better than anyone at 130 or 135. I think his IQ is on a whole different level. I think Tank, like I say, I haven't even seen the full, full Tank. I've seen Tank do some stuff, and you'll be amazed. It's like, yo, you can you can do this? It's crazy. So I, I've never seen a full, full Tank go. But I think, I, like the, like I say, the IQ of Shakir is just off the charts. Tank power, off the charts. Like, his power is off the charts. His speed, off the charts. I, I feel like Tank is so more you, physical. So you telling me I'm about to lose my money? Oh, yeah, definitely. For the fight with uh, Barrios? Yeah. <laughs> you said that too fast, brother. You said that it's, too fast. Listen, it's no doubt in my mind. It's no doubt in my mind. I think Tank got it for sure. I think it's gonna be a tough fight in the beginning, but I think I think Tank is gonna knock him out. 
I think he's going to get caught. Barrios has no defense. I think the only way that it's probably possible to beat Tank, you're going to have to have some, like, really good defense. you got to make him miss a lot. But, shit, I seen him miss some punches, and then that motherfucker still come out there and knock you out. Like, so I don't know. <laughs> he's a bad boy, man. Like, he's good. He's good. What fights that are coming up now are you? Do you watch boxing, first of all? Yeah, I do. What fights that are coming up now that you are excited about? Um, The Tyson Fury-Anthony Joshua fight. That's one of the ones that I'm excited about to see. That's who, who you favor in that fight? Who you pick? Man, to be honest, I'm going to have to go with Tyson Fury. I Me think too. Right. That's what I've been trying to tell everybody. Break it down for the people. This a pro fighter. Why you pick Tyson Fury to beat I, Anthony I pick, Joshua? I picked Tyson Fury because his, like, He's always relaxed in the ring. Like he's more relaxed than Anthony Joshua. He's more relaxed than all the other heavyweights that he fight. He he has fun in it, and he's smart. He know how to box, and he's and you can't really hit him as clean. I mean, he's been hit with some stuff, but like you're not hitting him as clean as you want to. He he's a like he's a smart dude in the ring. Like for a heavyweight, very fast. He's big, man. For a big guy to move like the the way he moves is crazy. Anthony Joshua, I feel like. After he just that the younger Anthony Joshua was better than the Anthony Joshua that we got now. I think like he started thinking about his body a little bit too much. Started packing on too much weight. He got a he got he got slow. He got real slow and stiff. So he he trying know. to look like a a, a, a Instagram builder. model. Yeah, a yeah. <laughs> but I got a all, question man, for you. Joshua is a great fighter. I just don't see him being Tyson Fury. I got a question for you. It's from the chat. It's from Method and Madness. Could he give his opinion or account on the importance of sacrifice and discipline of a pro fighter? Oh my God. That's that's one thing that I'm learning here in camp. Uh you gotta sacrifice a lot. It takes a lot to be a world champion. It takes a lot to be a contender, a prospect. It takes a lot. It's not like you can just wake up in the morning and just you can do it and it's easy. Like you got to be in the gym all day, every day, working on your craft. You know, you got to run. You got to be in shape always. Being in shape is one of the most important things, I think. But working on your craft is just as important. You got to work on that craft. Um, and you got to stay disciplined. Like, I live in Atlanta. And I know you guys probably know, like, Atlanta is a kind of a party city. So Yes, sir. For a boxer, yes, sir. I mean, it's kind of hard. You can get thrown off a little bit. So it's kind of hard to stay focused in a city like that. But I maintain it. I do my thing. And I stay focused. So you got to have a lot of discipline with this. You got to leave the party life alone, the girls alone, especially the girls. The girls are the number one mess up, for real. In boxing, for any man, with, with any man trying to do something, girls, you got to cut it out. You got to, like, limit it. You know what I'm saying? So no drinking, no smoking, stay clean, healthy lifestyle. Hey, stay disciplined. Stay hungry. Sound sound like one of my favorite fighters right there. Who that? Bud Crawford. <laughs> hey, it's For a sure. true though. For sure. Yo, yo, so uh DeMichael, um, what's your status right now? Are you signed to a promoter? Do you have a manager? Are you a free agent? And uh are are uh, some companies looking at you? Uh yeah. So I'm not signed to any, I have no promotion company. So I'm not signed to any promotion. Um, I have a manager, my manager, Peter Kahn. Um, he manages Xander Zayez, George Cambosis, Amir Amon, uh, Chris Van Heron, a bunch of guys, a bunch of more people on the uh, roster. As my, He's my manager. And um, yeah, so we're just taking it one step at a time. Uh, it's definitely people that reach out every day that wants to sign me. So I just, hey, listen, it's up in the debates. But before the year out, I'll definitely be signed. For sure. God willing. Uh, uh, my brother Shelton Moore, any advice for the young fighter? You know, you know, uh, especially, you know, he's coming up in the game. He's a free agent. Any words of advice when it comes to that Shelton Moore? Uh, in uh, my opinion, 
young brother, in my opinion, just stay focused, man, and stay disciplined. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. discipline is the key. You have to stay always closer around your weight. You can't be going up and down the weight, like you said. You can't yeah. be drinking, partying. You have to stay disciplined. And I believe you will achieve your goals, young brother. Good luck Thanks. to you. God bless you. And I'll be looking out for you. I'll be taking, and I'll see you at the fight. Thank you. Definitely. I'll definitely be looking for you. So you originally from Ohio, your family, or y'all from Atlanta? Nah, Ohio, Cleveland. You was born in Cleveland, Ohio? Yeah, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Sean oh. Porter Town. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, even uh, Charles Conwell. Are you familiar with Charles Conwell? He's yep, from Cleveland. Very, He's a very boxer. familiar with Charles Conwell. And he got a brother, Isaiah Steen. You know about yep. them? Yep. Oh, what's your relationship like with those brothers? I know they're from uh, the same city. I'm not, I'm not really as close to them like that. Like not really too much personal. I mean, we both know we all know each other. Um, but they're they're great fighters. I love Charles Conwell, man. I seen his last fight. Uh, I think he fought like a, a Ukrainian or something. He killed him. He looked good. He's a killer. He's definitely he a savage in the ring. He could box. He's an Olympian. He got power. And shout out to his brother as well, Isaiah Steen. Matter of fact, shout out to the whole uh, Soul City Boxing. The Soul City Jones Boxing, yeah. Ultra Jones, all those guys. Uh, O'Shea Jones, all of them. Yeah, I think uh Ota Jones lost his recent fight though. Yeah, he did. I, 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 felt like, I felt like um to be honest, even like with that situation, like I felt like that wasn't just a smart move for his career to even take a fight like that. Could you explain, please? Uh I mean he's five and oh. I mean he's still growing, he's been in tough fights. I feel like he's been in tough fights ever since he signed to the zone. And like I don't know if it's the zone pinning him in tough fights or is that what they're asking for? I just felt like it wasn't a smart move, especially I think he just came off of a draw, and then you go and you fight like a 12 and one guy, like in a tall 12 and one guy. I think the guy was like my height, and he could punch, like, and he know he doing in the ring. So I just felt like it was just a bad fight. It was a bad fight. It was a bad matchup. Yeah, you you right about that because the fight before that he was coming off a draw, and then yeah. he, he got beat in the fight after. So. You know, I think it has something to do with matchmaking, to be honest with you. You know, is the zone doing a good job matchmaking their prospects? Even uh Raymond Ford, he had a draw recently. Raymond Ford, who's considered one of the best prospects as well. Yeah, yeah. Um Raymond Ford, like even him, like great, great fighter, great boxer. Um, bad matchup. I mean, I'm not gonna say it was a bad matchup. I'm not even gonna say that to be honest. I felt like Raymond Ford really could beat the dude. I just felt like he just had an off night. I felt like I don't know what's going on in his personal life and things like that, but I felt like he had an off night because he can beat him. The guy was mm -hmm. very beatable. Right before, he, he should have beat him. See, the thing is, though, my brother, it's like you got to be patient as a fighter, I think. Like, I these think, guys I think, people, I think a lot of fighters, uh, they bite too much they can handle. Like, they go out there, they ask for these big fights because, you know, of course, everybody wants the money. Everyone everyone want to be, like, known. And everybody want to say, well, I fought so-and-so and I fought so-and-so. But, I mean, look at it. Look at most of the champions. Like, me, mean, most of the champions throughout boxing history, I mean, you take that path of building yourself up. Build a name for yourself. Build your skill. Keep working. Go knock out some you know some journeymen and stuff like that and there you go you get your title shot and everything everything else is gonna come then you can go take those hard fights but at least you'll have probably a belt then or you'll be a contender i feel like nowadays i don't know man guys are just they're not thinking they're not thinking i think everybody just think like well i won this in the amateurs and all these national titles but bro the amateurs and pro boxing is two totally different sports for sure, for sure. You, I mean, you're right about that, man. You know, some fighters, they're great amateurs, but once they turn professional, it really doesn't translate to the professional rankings. You know, it happens. It happens all the time. So yeah. I tell fighters, man, just be patient. Don't rush. You know what I mean? Don't rush. Take your time. You know, yeah. I know. Sir, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah, like certain fighters, you know, um, I know Terrence Crawford, he became a champion when he was 26 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
he took his time, you know, and now he's pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world. You know, um, Bernard Hopkins, he became a champion later on in his career. Marvin Hagler became a champion later on. You don't have to rush anything, man. Earl Spence became a champion at 26. So yeah. I know these fighters, they want the fame. They want to be a champion. They, you know, they, they want the money. But you got to take your time, bro. You got to take your time as a fighter. Build yourself I like, up. I feel like it's only a select few that can really just go out there and be that guy. And I, I, and I mean, look at them. Look at their dedication. Like a Shakur Stevenson, world champion, 15 fights, 15, 16 fights. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez, same thing. When I dare fought the top dog, when I dare won. Uh, a tank, um, you know what I'm saying? Goes out there, knock his guy out, go get him a belt. So I feel like it's it's a, the guys that are top right now, they're top for a reason. They don't have that many fights for a reason, and they still were world champions so early. I mean, it's the dedication. They're dedicated. I mean, a lot of guys, you know, and they have God-gifted skills. A lot of guys have the mediocre skills, but they still, they're not, you know, they got to put in, they still got to put in work. They need to build up. But these guys that are top, like, they're on a different level. They're on a different level for a reason. I mean, the work ethic, the, the, the like I said, again, the God gifted ability to do things in the ring, the mindset. I mean, that's why they at where they at so early. But everybody else, I mean, if you know you're not that fighter, take your time. Just take your time. I mean, everything ain't with the same anyway. So you gotta take your time. And boxing ain't promised. Anything can happen. For sure. Our so champions. Go ahead. I'm our sorry. champions built. Our champions built in the gym. Or is it just something special that's in you? I think it's both. I think it's both. I think I think if we ever look at a – I'm not going to say just champions. I'm going to say people like the greats or people that have the potential to be great. You know, like we know they can be great. I feel as though it's, it's both. I mean, it got to be something in you. You got to have that hunger. You got to have that – that again, that God gifted ability to do the things that they do in the ring, and you in their grind, they grind, man. They they work hard. They don't play with this sport. A lot of people play with this sport, and they look at it and they just think it's gonna be so easy. So I just I feel like the greats are the greats for a reason, and the up and coming are the upcoming for a reason. So it's it's just two different things. It's like how bad do you want it? Like do you want to be great? Do you want to be normal, mediocre? I mean, it's up to you. And uh, what's your uh, goals like when you got when you get into the sport of boxing? Like, what do you want to achieve? What what accomplishments that you want in the future? Is it being a world champion? Is it going to the Hall of Fame? Like, what what do you want out of the sport of boxing? Is it to be the best, or is it is it to be the best that you can be? I mean, what what's your thoughts on that? Um, me personally, I'm just very competitive, and like I say, I just started like five years ago. So a lot of these guys, be, they've been doing this as kids and I know they put their heart into it and I put my heart into it as well, but I put my heart into it because I do want to be one of the best. That's why every day I grind the way I grind. Like, cause I'm really working to be the best. Like I want to be the multi-division champion. I want to do, I want to, I want to break records. I want to do all type of things. I want to do the unbelievable. That's, that's my goal. I want to prove a lot of people wrong when the doubters are against me. I just want to, I want to go crazy with the sport. Like, man, I, I love I really to hear that bro. Game for myself. I love the confidence coming from you. Uh, shout out to the queen, Lisa Bells. She said, "H Money, ask him what is his dream fight. What is your dream fight? Anybody that you got your eyes on that you would like to get in the ring with one day? Is it a fighter? Any beef you got?" You know, or is it just somebody you feel like you could whoop their ass? It, nah, who is nah, nah, nah. it? Y'all, y'all gonna think this is the craziest thing ever. Actually, I'm sparring my dream fight right now. So there you go. Oh, okay. Damn. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Shakira, like, yeah, we've been knowing each other for a little bit. So like I, I always used to tell him, well, my dad, it'd be my man, my dad used to go crazy. He would always tell Shakira, like, hey, my son gonna whoop your ass, my son go whoop your ass, my son go whoop your ass. And like I man, actually when I first started boxing. Shakir and Tank were actually two people that I was watching a lot when I first started. So, um, and I'm not even Southpaw, but I would always still watch them. But I used to always think, like, I can get this dude. I can get this dude. 
until I got in the ring with him. I was like, okay, well, maybe not yet. Let me slow my roll. Like everybody else. <laughs> Hey, look, everybody else that want to take these crazy fights and not be honest with themselves, I'm being honest with myself. I said, well, let me slow my roll. Give me like, I'll tell you this, though. This is facts. Give me like two years. Give me two years. Um, I'll definitely be in the talks with those guys for sure in two years. But, yeah, that, that's my dream fight, though, for real. Like, it is. Let no me ask you. Uh, because he's a great fighter. I'm going to ask you uh, the boxing section question, the Kyle question right quick. Mm-hmm. You you you're a promoter, okay, and and you can go from the past to now, okay. You got to put on a card, and you got three fights to make. Give me your prelim, your co-main, and your main event. I can put any fighters together. Any fighters, any generation, as long as they're in the same weight class. Okay. Uh, damn, this is actually a hard one. But, okay, I got one. I think my prelims would be uh, Aaron Pryor versus Sean Porter because they fight alike, and that's going to be a crazy fight. Like <laughs> um, my co-main, damn, I would have to say my co-main would be Floyd and Sugar Ray Leonard. Wow. Okay. And then... For my main event, uh, this is hard. Damn, this is good. I gotta think. I gotta think about the main event. Okay, my main event. Give me, give me Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali Prime. My man, <laughs> and give me the winners of all three. I think. I think the winner of the Muhammad Ali. Now nah, I'm gonna go from the bottom. I go from the bottom. I think that Aaron Pryor wins. I think that Floyd wins. And I think that damn, this is hard. I don't know who's gonna win that. Coleman. Give me give damn. Give me give me Muhammad Ali. He uses his feet. He a boxing. My man. But yeah, that I think that'd be a crazy card though. That'd be For crazy. Sure. So right now you campaign in at one thirty. You know, um, is it easy to make the weight? I know you six foot. You're very tall. You bit. You a very big super uh, featherweight. Um, how long do you see yourself at that weight class? And I mean, are you making it comfortable? Are you comfortable comfortable at the weight class? Oh uh, yeah, I walk around like on weight. Well, not on weight, but like pretty good, like ten pounds over. So like right now I'm one forty two. Like I'm not too much over the weight. Uh, I don't let myself get too big. I don't ever let myself get out of shape. So, I mean, making the weight is easy. Like, I, bro, it's so crazy because um, all my, like, teammates and stuff that really know me, they be like, yo, how do you make weight? You eat burgers and you eat crazy stuff and, like, you still make weight. I eat anything I want and I know how to make weight. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm making it pretty oh, good. That's right good. Now. That's great. It's I'm making good, bro. So making weight for you is not a struggle at all? No, nah, it's not a struggle at all. It's easy. I actually show people in my gym how to make weight when they can't make weight and they make weight healthy so they can still eat what they want to eat and just the workouts that I do. I just know how to knock the weight off the smart way. That's great right there, bro. That's good. I mean, as long as you can stay at that weight class, man, you're going to be a problem for a lot of people. You probably one of the biggest guys at the weight class, you know? Um, So now, I mean, who do you think is the best at the weight class right now? Would you say Oscar Valdez is it a Jamel Heron and uh, you know who, who would you say Shakur? I know Shakur ain't a champion Shakur. yet. It's Is Shakur. it Tank? It's what Shakur. about Tank? Uh, Shakur. I mean, I don't know where weight Tank. Yeah, really Tank. Yeah, right. It. So mm-hmm. like, I'm not. I'm not really gonna count him as a one thirty because I don't even know if he can still make one thirty. But um, I would say Shakur is the best at one thirty. One thirty five. I'm gonna have to give it to Tiafimo and Tank right under him. Um. So yeah, I think that's how that one will go. What about Devin Haney? What you think about Devin Haney at one thirty five? Um, I just don't, I don't see him beating. I can see him being Tiafimo. I don't see him being. I don't know. Actually, he good. Like he really good. I don't know, but he's like third. He's definitely third. 
Ryan Garcia would be like fourth. And okay. Ryan Garcia, Ryan, Ryan, like people say, Ryan Garcia is a bomb. He's not a bomb, bro. Dude can really fight. Yeah, he got power too. He got yeah. crazy power with his, especially his left hand. I don't, I don't very, see him. I, I, to be honest, you know what's crazy? I was actually gonna bet against him with Fortuna. I was gonna bet on him. I think he would have got Fortuna. You thought Fortuna was gonna beat him? Yeah, for some awkward reason, he's very awkward. Weird, weird yeah, type of guy. Kind of rough, kind of dirty with it too. He yeah, real awkward. Know, that, he would have made that fight a lot different. He'd have been in the ring with some guys. I think that he gave uh, Robert Easter a shit a run for his money. He did. He, he did. He did. He did. A couple guys run for his money. So you're you're how tall, brother? Uh, I'm six foot. So where do you see your career topping out at? Like weight class? Yes, sir. Uh, probably like. I think I'll probably retire at like 140, 147. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? What's right? Yeah. I ain't going to try and get too big now. There's some big guys. I'm in the ring with Jared Hurd. I seen him today. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, he down there with y'all too? <laughs> yeah, he's here. So, uh, Dang. he's a big dude, bro. Big you dude. wonder, does it, does it surprise you that he still makes 54? I don't know how the hell he does it, bro. That's a big dude, <laughs> and he was tall for his weight class. And he, bro, he big as hell. Like I'm like, yo, this is a big dude. Like he tall. Like when I say big, like man, he like a monster for real. So mm -hmm. just imagine a fight night fighting him. I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and stay in the little man weight class. <laughs> 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 that ain't that ain't gonna work, yo. So um. Tell me a little bit about your jab, man. Uh, how your jab is, man. You know, the, they say the jab is the most important punch in boxing. Could you tell us a little bit about your jab? Uh, I have a good jab. Fast. Very, very powerful jab. Um, I like jabbing to the body a lot. I heard I suck the air out of a lot of my opponents when I stick them to the body. I actually like going to the body. No matter how tall I am, I, I like to mix it up, actually. But um, I like to fight on the inside a lot. But the jab, man, the jab is important. Uh, this camp, I've been learning how to, like, uh, how can I say it? Use it a little bit better, like, with more feints and things like that. Just learning. Mm-hmm. I mean, with your height and your reach, you know, if you have a, you know, a great jab, you can give a lot of people problems, man. You know, right, just bro. off that jab and with your your height, the power of your jab as well, because you got natural power. You know, it's going to be hard for people to get past your jab, to be honest with you, man. It'll be hard, especially in those smaller weight classes, bro. You keep yeah, a jab so, on like, that's what like I'm, that. That's what I'm learning. Like, I'm just learning to just let the opponents come to me. Usually I'll walk them down and just try and get them out of there. But I'm like, I'm going to let them walk, walk into the one that they ain't even going to see coming. It's going to be bad. So, who was your favorite fighters growing up? I know Shelton asked you about uh, your style, and you know mm -hmm. who do you uh, who do you fight like? But who was your favorite fighters like growing up? Who inspired you? Was it a Muhammad Ali? Was it Floyd Mayweather, Sugar Ray Leonard, Bernard Hopkins? Who was your favorite fighters growing up? Give me three of them: uh, Lennox Lewis, Tommy Hearns, and Floyd. Okay, that's what's up. And, uh, you know, Thomas Hearns had a great jab. Lennox Lewis had they a great, had great jab. Jabs. Yep, even Floyd. Of course, Floyd was arguably the greatest fighter that ever lived, you know. So, yeah, those are, those are some great fighters that you mentioned. What about Larry Holmes? Did you, you know, tune in and watch Larry Holmes? He um, had a great jab, too. I never really best too jab much. ever. I never watched him too much. Um, but it's one fight I did see with him. He was older, and he fought. And he, I think he beat a dude, too. Oh, Ray Mercer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ray Mercer is actually from Ohio, too. But, uh, yeah, he beat him. That was a good fight. I was like, that was pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Ray Mercer was an Olympic gold medalist. He fought Lennox Lewis. Some people thought he beat Lennox Lewis. He knocked out Tommy Morrison. Mm -hmm. He fought Evander Holyfield. Man, Ray Mercer was one of the toughest guys out, and he had a great chin as well. He could take yeah. a punch. He like did. crazy. 
And Larry Holmes beat him when Larry Holmes was like 43 years old. Larry Holmes beat the hell out of him. Schooled yeah, him. Yeah, it was uh, crazy. Like, yeah, he schooled him. That's what it was. He outboxed him. I was like, damn. Yeah, he looked good that fight. I was I was actually surprised. I like Jordan. Brother, brother, if you yeah. get a chance, go back and look at prime Larry Holmes from 79 to about 83, 84. Okay. Definitely. I'm if you want to learn about a jab, if you want to learn anything about a jab, go back and look at Larry Holmes between the years of 1979 to 1984. You will see the best jab you have seen in boxing. For sure, for sure. And right now, who's your top five uh, pound for pound? Give me your uh, top five fighters pound for pound right now. Who's who's number one? Ooh, uh, Canelo. Uh, number two, Tyson Fury. Number three, uh, I'm going to have to go with Earl Spence. Number four, I'm going to have to give it to – dang, this kind of hard. It's kind of hard. My four and five, I can't pick a four and five. Like it's, I ain't gonna lie, it's up in debates. It's in debates. I would probably say like Terrence Crawford. Uh, and I end it with number five. I would give. I ain't gonna give it to Manny Pacquiao. He like about to leave out the door. I have to give it to the youngin. Um, I give it to Tiafimo, man. He went out there and fought the top dog, and he did what he's supposed to do. So I just give it to him. Who was your number one again? Who did I pick number one? Canelo. Canelo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. number two with Tyson Fury. Can't argue with Fury that. I told you, Shelf, I be arguing with them every day about Tyson Fury. Like, well, what makes Tyson Fury a special fighter in your eyes? And why do you got him in your top five? I feel like can nobody at heavyweight beat him? Like, I don't see no heavyweight beat him. And I'm not just saying that because what he did to Deontay Wilder. Really, he could have did that. In the Deontay Wilder number one, he really he was beating him in the fight in number in the first fight. Really, Wilder just caught him. To, and that and to be honest, it still shouldn't have been a draw, but whatever. It's money, but uh, I just feel like I don't see nobody beating him. I mean, he's an awkward guy. Like he's awkward. He's fast. He's tall. He's big. He, he's smart. So. I mean, he just all smart guys. He's good. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, man. You know what I mean? I totally agree with you. Yeah, like, I can't. I, I, don't, I don't see a heavyweight beat him, though. Like, that's how I know. But I tell know me this. Gonna be. Uh, what's T tell me this. If mm -hmm. someone was to beat him, to beat Tyson Fury, how would they do it? Oh, my God. Uh, I think, uh, to be honest, I think a shorter – a shorter opponent could beat him. They have like a like an Andy. I think Andy could beat him if anybody had a chance to beat him. He has a lot of skill, and I feel like he can get under him. He could apply some pretty good pressure to him. So I, I, I will have to go with him. For sure. You know what Tyson Fury said about Andy Ruiz? He said he could beat Tyson. Tyson Fury said he could beat Andy Ruiz with one arm. He said with one hand. He said he had one hand tied behind his back, and he'll still beat Andy Ruiz, bro. I mean, we're I just, think he did. Just as, a tall guy, as a tall guy. Tyson Fury a says a lot guy, of things, H. You always think you, always <laughs> think you can beat the shorter opponent. Really, man, the shorter opponents give me, like, the hardest time sometimes. I'll be like, yo, because some of them can kind of get under you because they're so little. But, I mean, Tyson, I mean, we're really Andy, not really short like that. He's really tall. He's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, but Tyson Fury is like a fucking giant. That dude is like 6'9". He's crazy tall. I don't know. That's, yo, that's that would be a good fight. I would love to see that after this, though. I think, I think 300 I think pounds, bro. He's 6'9", 300 pounds, and he fast as hell. He can yeah. move. He's elusive. He got great movement. Is like you said, it's gonna be very hard for anybody to beat Tyson Fury, yeah, be especially hard. when he's dedicated, especially when he's training hard. Right. So yeah, that's gonna be yeah, that'd be a crazy fight. Like I say, I don't see nobody beating him. I just think Andy has the better chance out of anybody at heavyweight to beat him. Because I just feel like he has the skill to beat him. And 
I just feel like he's shorter. He can kind of get up under him a little bit, apply some more pressure. He have to lay on him a lot, get him tired. I mean, that'll probably be the only way he can get him. Hey, I think my connection fucked up. Connection might be fucked up. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, Tyson Fury is a Jesus great boxer all around, man. The dude can move. He got a great jab. And to, you know, me, the way I break down fighters, I always go by skills. You know, Mayweather mm -hmm. says skills win fights. And Tyson Fury, he got the best skill set in the heavyweight division. He's undefeated for a reason. He beat the number yep. one heavyweight, Deontay Wilder. He beat Klitschko when Klitschko was undefeated for 11 years. Klitschko was a champion for seven years. Tyson Fury dethroned him. What you think about Anthony Joshua as a fighter? Now, I mean, break down AJ. I feel like um, he he got a lot of skill too. I feel as though he ain't got a heart. Is it because not, he quit against say, Andy Ruiz? I'm not, what you thought I'm about? Really, did you think I'm not going to really too much say he ain't got no heart? It's just something about him, like he off. I feel like he got everything, but something is just off. I, I I'm gonna question his heart a little bit. I think that's what it is. I think I question his heart. Even though Did I you think he drop by Klitschko, get back up, get the stoppage, and all that good stuff. But it's still something about his heart. I just feel like he a little soft. What well, is it because that he, he spit his mouthpiece out when he got dropped by Andy Ruiz? He turned his back to the referee. Some people thought he quit in that fight. Did you think that he quit in that fight? Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he kind of quit. I feel like, I mean, when you go in there with that mindset, thinking you finna just roll over this guy and that doesn't happen, I feel like it just screwed up his mind. But, like, it's probably just mental. It's probably in his heart. It's just mental. It's probably mental. Yeah, I mean, like, when when it got, when the going got hard, when it got tough, he folded under the pressure, man. Like that's a sign of you. That's a sign of quitting right there. You when when he spit his mouthpiece out, it showed me that he didn't want to be in that ring, my brother. It's yeah. like he didn't want to be in that ring, and then he turned his back to the referee, walked away, shook his head. When Tyson Fury got dropped by Deontay Wilder, the hardest puncher in the world, he got back up. He didn't spit yeah. out his mouthpiece trying to buy more time. He didn't. He didn't turn his back to the referee. He got back up. He kept fighting. And he dominated Deontay Wilder. That's, I think, the difference. Uh, Tyson Fury got more heart than an Anthony Joshua. And he showed it throughout his career. He showed it. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he really has. But I feel like it all comes with experience, though. Um, I just feel like Anthony Joshua, you know, he's a very, very popular guy. Makes a lot of money in his country. It's like, I felt like as though he went down. He's just like, damn. It's it's just mental. I, don't, I ain't gonna really too much. Like I said, I ain't gonna question his heart too much because I didn't seen him get back up and he did his thing. But I think it's just mental with him. I think it's, it's mental. You got to get it together. Yeah, mentally, exactly. Like that's important. You know, Tyson Fury he destroys fighters physically and mentally. The way he dominated Vladimir Klitschko. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He he beat him. He already beat him mentally before they even got in the ring. He did the same thing with Wilder. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mentally, Tyson Fury is much stronger, even though he dealt with mental health issues. But in the ring, he's uh he he's doing his job. In the ring, he knows what he's doing, bro. And at the end of the day, skills wins fights. AJ can have all the fans that he wants in the world, but they ain't gonna help you in that ring. Your fans at can't all. fight for you, you know. At all. At all. But, but so we got brother DJ in the building. Dory Jones, what's good, my brother? Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, salute to you, brother DeMichael. I have a question for you. Yep. Um, having started boxing um later in the years, do you feel like you're playing catch up, or are you like a work in progress? Uh, I would say a work in progress. Um, okay. Because, I mean, so far. I mean, my skill, my skill is on a on a high level right now. I'm still learning, of course, but I can stick with these 
like they always talk about these national champion amateurs and all that good stuff. I can stick with them. Some of them I can probably beat beat them up, but um, I just still feel like I'm just I'm gaining more experience, like with champions and stuff like that that I've been around. So it's just increasing my game. Right, great work, coach. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's a great mentality to have, you know. Um, you know, sparring with the champions and figuring out the sport. You know, yeah. learning the sweet science. Um, I, I believe earlier they asked, um, like, who, who would your style uh, like resemble? And you said uh, Tommy Hearns. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, do you feel as though um, that you said within the next two, two to three years you'll be a world champion? And you said, would that be? Assuming at one thirty, or do you plan on going to one thirty five soon? Uh, what to be honest, wherever my body takes me, um, uh, because I don't know what can change. I'm twenty four years old, so I mean, I heard some guys just say they wake up one morning and it's a totally different world for them. So, uh, <laughs> so it's whatever my body takes me. It could be one thirty, one thirty five, whichever one. I'm focused, I'm dedicated to make it happen in any weight class that I'm in. Yeah. Do you um have any regrets not um starting boxing early and going to the Olympics? Regrets? Uh, yes. not really, not really because it was never my dream to go out there and win Olympics and all these nationals and stuff. It was never my dream. To be honest, my dream was never boxing. If if I had to really tell the truth, I fell in love with it the day I got in there and everything just started moving fast. So. Now my my mindset is just so different on things, you know. So I don't I don't skipped all of that stuff. I mean, it can't happen. It's, it's the past. It is what it is. A lot, like I say, a lot of these guys they start at a young age, and that is their dream to go to the Olympics and do all that stuff. But I was older, so it was never really my dream. And once I right, got so into was- the game, like again, everything moved pretty quick. I was pro in three years. So you would say you have a passion just for knocking dudes out and beating guys up. Yeah, pretty you have much. a passion for fighting. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was actually talking to my girlfriend about that. She was like, "Why do you box?" She was like, "Well, I know why. You like control. I like control. Like, like I'm always like I'm very competitive. I'm like, yo, gotta be competitive. Gotta be competitive. Gotta take control. Gotta take control. Like, gotta get it. That's how I am. That's just my personality." How, how could um the so, chat and the plan and people that's watching um reach out to you and follow you? What's your um Instagram and Facebook and Twitter accounts? Uh, you can actually add me on Instagram at Demichael D E M I C H A E E L. Uh, my Twitter account is D H Boxer, and I don't use Facebook. Yeah, that's what what's up right there, Shelton back in the building. What's good? Y'all can hear me. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I have to take a phone call right there. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Hey, how's my audio, DJ? I'm good? Yeah, you good. good. Okay. Audio's yeah. fine. Hey, Audio's uh, fine. Okay. For sure, man. This brother getting it in. Let's support him, man. Let everybody support DeMichael Harris. Follow him on Instagram right now. Super featherweight. He's a, a prospect coming up. He's known for having a lot of power. Six foot at this weight class. He's going to be giving people problems, man. So now I want to ask you about Jamil Heron. I know you over there training with his team. Uh, what you think about Jamil Heron, his last performance against Carl Frampton? Were you impressed by him getting that stoppage? Uh, very impressed. I was very impressed. I didn't really expect that to go down the way it did. So I was impressed. Uh, Jamil Heron, he's a good boxer. Uh, I know he's, he's getting older. Uh, I feel as though... Um, he probably got a couple more fights left in him, though, for sure. But he'll get anybody a run for their money. Anybody. At I see Shakur been calling him out. Shakur uh, Stevenson think, been calling out uh, Jamil Heron. I, I think Shakur beats him. Like, again, I think – I'm not saying this just because – well, kind of. I got a chance to see it for myself. I think – man, I just think he's just smarter than everybody. And his skills are just – like it's different. He on a different level. He on a different level. Oh, is he there in camp with you guys? He... Yeah, I'm in his camp. No, I mean is Jamel there with you guys? Oh no, that ain't gonna happen. 
Why though? Why? Because Shakur over there, they don't want him there at the same time. I is mean, that what I it would is? assume. I don't know personally, but I would assume if a guy in your weight class and you're in your camp and he's in your camp, that's kind of weird. And y'all both could have a potential of fighting each other like, like it's nothing. So I don't know. So do like, you think? So do you think, Jamichael? Jamichael, do you think that uh, Herring is going to take the fight? Do I think he's going to take the fight? Uh, he might. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I think he might duck. I'm going to say duck. I think he ducks, you feel. That's a harsh word, oh. brother. Yeah, I think he duck. Damn. He keeping it real, though. You got to respect it. You know, the honesty. That's a harsh, you know I mean? that's a harsh word, fighter. brother. That's a harsh word. I'm going to go with duck, though. I got to. I, that's what I... That's what I believe in my heart. That's what's gonna happen. He's gonna duck him. The fighter never get made. And what you think about uh, Oscar Valdez, though? I mean, I'm sorry, Shelton. Go ahead, Shelton. You good? I was gonna say, how is their relationship? They got a good relationship, right? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Because yeah. I was thinking my 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 uh take on the whole thing was different from DJ and uh H Money. Is I think that sometimes. If you do have a relationship, a friendship with somebody, sometimes some things are more important than money. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not sure on that relationship though. So, uh, so Shakur actually hit you up and he called you to come out there to give him some work and be his uh sparring partner. Is that correct? That he yeah, reached out correct. to you, yeah. So he knows that you're gonna give him some good work, he knows you're gonna push him to the limits, yeah. That's good, man. You know, uh, plus, I, mean, I remember when, plus he's fighting. He's fighting. He's fighting like a five ten, five eleven guy that can punch. It ain't really too many out there. Yet. You know what I'm saying? So it was on. Oh, the you right. know who he's fighting next? You yeah, got, uh, yeah. Shakur got a date. Long. He fights June 12th. I forget the opponent name, but yeah. Oh, that's what's up right there. That's what's up, man. Uh, go ahead, Shelton. I think you had something to say. Go ahead. No, I'm done, brother. I've asked him all the questions I can think of off the top of my head. I just want to wish him well, all the success, and I will see you in Atlanta, brother. Thank you, man. Definitely. I'll be looking for you. Yo, how yeah. long are you going to be in training camp with Shakur and them? I'm sorry, uh, uh, DJ. How long are you going to be in training camp? How long are you going to be out there in Colorado Springs? Hey, I'm looking to end the camp with them, so it's going to be a while. He fights June 12th. I don't know when he expects to leave and go to whatever state. I think they're fighting in New York. I'm not sure where they're fighting at. So whatever state they find at, I don't know how soon he's going to leave, but I'm expected to stay the whole camp. Dang, that's what's up, man. And you get paid for it as well? I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Hey, shit. That's what's up, man. Hey, Larry Holmes, he started off at Muhammad Ali sparring partner. You know what I mean? He ended up as one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Which is it helps you, man. It increase your game. I mean, it's only right to learn from these guys who've been in the ring and with all the experience. You taking what they know, add it to your, add it to your craft, and hey, wish the best for everybody's success when they get that type of work, bro. That says a lot about you as a fighter because they hitting you up to give them some good work and help them get ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that just says a lot about you, you know, that they respect you. Shakur respects yeah. you, uh, you know, he respects you to get you inside this training camp and get him ready for his up and coming fight. So shout out to uh, Shakur Stevenson, man, giving you that opportunity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get your name out there. You know what I mean? In front of Terrence Crawford and uh, Bo Mack. You know what I mean? That's very good for a young fighter like yourself coming yeah. up in the Definitely. game. And it, it, it only and it only brings you more opportunity. So you got to be thankful for everything that you get. Even like I said, told you, like even when Javante wanted me to be on his undercard, that brought me like so much just success and more fan base, more people knowing about who I am. All that stuff helps, man. So those two guys, man, I thank them so much for what they've done. And other fighters yeah, as well. They're not just the only ones. And when's your next fight? Like, you got a date coming up? When you going to get back in there? Uh, We're looking at June 5th. We're looking at June 5th. So, that's a date I'm looking at. Hopefully oh, yeah, on that Tia Fimo Lopez on the card, right? On the trailer. 
Yeah, correct. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, my brother, man. Much power to you, man. Uh, you know, we we wish you uh, much success in the sport of boxing. You know, some big paydays, a whole lot of belts. You know what I mean? And that's what it is, man. Now, before uh, I let you go, I want to see if a brother DJ has. I think brother DJ has something to say. Go ahead, DJ. No, I was just going to say a salute to you. You know, you always going to hope you get the, uh, that trailer card. You know, and you can attract some new eyes to the fan, new, new new fans in that fight. You know, and put on a great show. You know, hopefully you can still you know you can be the fighter tonight. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you. You welcome. Man, appreciate you, man, giving us some time, man. We know you busy out there training with uh Terrence Crawford and Shakur Stevenson, and you still took out time of your day to come fuck with us, man. It means a lot to me. And yeah, man, we support you on this channel right here, man. This H Money Boxing. You know what I mean? The H, man. You are last name Harris. You know what yes, I mean? Sir. So you representing that H and you doing a good job, man. And we got much respect for you, my brother. Man, I reached out to you. You hit me back and we made it happen, man. And that's what Definitely. it's all about, bro. Definitely. We're going to bring I, you I back, man. Thank you for even having me, man. So, hey, I man, all the time. Do another interview. Man, anytime you can come back before then, you know what I'm saying? You want to just hop on, you know what I mean? Be a part of the panel. Give us, you know, your input on certain fighters. Man, you welcome here anytime, bro. And everybody go follow this brother on, on Instagram. Support him. You know what I mean? He's a young a young contender in the game. He wants that smoke. He got the power. Man, what else you want from this brother? He comes. He gets back to the fan base. Show us love. You know what I mean? Take. He took time out and gave us an interview. So let's support this brother, man. Let's do it. Appreciate it, bro. All the time, man. Thank you, man. Shout out to Ace Money. Let's do it. Get Let's some get rest, it. brother. Have it. Get some rest. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. There you have it. Undefeated. The Michael. The Michael Harris. You know what I mean? Super featherweight. Man, what you what y'all think about the interview? What y'all thought about it? Get your get your audio right, H. Uh, yeah, it was a great interview, man. That's a great young man. He uh, got his head on straight. Seems like he's focused. He's disciplined. He says all the things that you want to hear from a young up and coming fighter. You know what I'm saying? What about yeah. you, DJ? I, I agree. Um, I, it's a good thing, you know. Is uh, you know a lot of fighters, you know, they, as he said, they start off very young. You know, Tiger Woods and the as an athlete, he started as a child. Uh, Michael Jordan, uh, Shakur, he said Shakur Stevenson, Floyd. They, those guys started young. You know, when we see fighters and they start at, at, at the age that he started at, you know, it's usually a passion for hurting the next man. And that's what we need in the sport of boxing, you know. Guys are just going to come out there and bring pain. I'm going to be watching the kid, man. I'm, I'm going to be watching him. I'm going to check out his next fight. He says it's early June. And uh, I'm going to bump into him. I'm going to look for him when we get down there to Atlanta, man, see if I can bump into him. Chop it up with him for a minute, hang out with him, you know? Yeah, hopefully you get that trailer card, you know. That gives me a, a way bigger reason, you know, because I know it's going to be some Yeah, if he gets the card, H Money got to keep us in, informed. If he gets that trailer card, I'm going to have to go ahead and buy it, even though I yes, said sir. I would never support that trailer garbage, but I'm going to have to buy it <laughs> yeah, if he's on yeah. the card. I'm going to have to buy it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I said that gives me a good reason, you know. Um, I, I'll be more excited, you know. We want way more excited. It's excited where my money's going. Yeah. yeah. I think that was a great interview. I would like, uh, I think we, I'm, I'm, I'm excited now, you know, especially this week is fight week. I think in the chat, everyone's talking about uh, Ruiz versus Ariola today, uh, Saturday. I had to break down today, DJ, and apologize to, to the chat. I had to apologize to the LDBC because it seems like from the information we got between the last two days that the LDBC was right and we were wrong, brother. Looks like Deontay's going to get that fight. I, yeah, I mean, um, I, on, it was certain platforms. I disagree with how they went about um, you know, trying to bash Wilder in a sense. I, I'm all for, you know, the Mark Breeder situation, you know, that I don't think Wilder himself is very confident in that statement. But, um, you know, to turn into a, 
like a, a hate fest, you know, instead of, you know, because we all can forgive, you know, when Tyson Frey made his mistakes, AJ, in my opinion, he quit in the ring. Ruiz, he came in there more obese, you know, um, and those guys are forgiven, you know. So hopefully, you know, if that fight does happen, we all can, you know, support by the fight of his pay-per-view and just support the fighters and hope we get a great show, you know. But it takes a man to apologize, you know. Yeah, I had to, man, because I've been bashing them dudes and talking shit about them dudes for a long time. And, and and they was right. I wasn't I wasn't willing to get off my square for no means, for no reason. But when I heard that come out of Frank Warren's mouth today, I was like, okay, said, well, yeah. Frank Warren, yeah, Frank said, Warren uh, said he did an interview with Sky Sports and he and they were asking him about the uh the uh Fury AJ fight and he said we can't do anything. We we cannot do anything until this arbitration is over. And that's all I need to hear, brother. Oh yeah. Well, I'm. I, I, cause I, now, my whole thing was um, with a lot of things that were being said. Like you know, I, I have no, I have no problem with the undisputed fight. But if it's a clause and it's paperwork and they say they have to fight, it's, it, we can't. Dis- I can't dispute it. You know, that's like if if, uh, if I got a paycheck and my company don't want to pay me, but I and I sign, we agreed that I gotta get paid this day. You know, you got to oppose your word. And that, that part I did understand. You know, but as far as all the, um, the accusations, you know, I, that's a different conversation. As far as on the business side, you know, I, that was something wild I had to um, take care of. And Fury, he does have to uphold his word on that, you know. But if we get to fight, you know, um, who do you got winning, Fury? Oh, Lord. Say again? Who, who do you have? If they, if they do fight, who do you have winning? Wilder been out for 15 months and he came off a bad loss. All I saw in 15 months was a little snippet of pad work yesterday. That's not enough for me to say he's going to beat Fury this time. I got Fury winning. Yeah, um, and I saw the uh, the mid work and uh, the training. It was, you know, it's not enough. It's still, it's, it's still things that I'm. It's it's still things that I do want to see. You know, I don't think he's at that that fluid moment at that stage when he's fluid. You know, when his punches are just like bang bang. You know, it's like it's just everything is it's rhythmic in a sense. He still has some way to go. But he, his footwork, you know, I saw him stop on a dime and then change angles. And I was like, I, I like that motion. But we got to see, you know, both both been out the ring. And Fury, he has upper hand right now mentally. Mm, I'm going with Fury all day, man. Fury dominates. Well, we know that, H-Money. H-Money, you need to chime in. We already know where your heart, we know where your heart is at. Let me get my two cents because I see Wilder could have hired any trainer in the world, but instead he decided to, to hire Malik Scott, somebody that you know how to fix fight with Deontay Wilder. Now, I remember some LDBC channel saying Canelo had a fixed fight with Sergey Kovalev, but you don't say nothing about Deontay Wilder's fixed fight with Malik Scott, who is now his trainer and his best friend. That's how you know that was a fixed fight because now that's his trainer and his best friend. Malik Scott, he don't know shit about boxing. Malik Scott don't know a lick about boxing. He can't teach Wilder anything, bro. Now, the, the sad part about it is Deontay Wilder, he could have hired any fucking trainer in the world. Instead, he went to go hire Malik Scott, who had never seen fight in his life. So this was a let terrible... Me, hey, hey. Let me ask go you ahead. a question, H Money. Let me ask you a question. What reputable trainer that's out there right now, big name trainer, is going to work with Deontay Wilder after seeing what he did to Mark Breland? You work with Deontay Wilder and it don't go right. Mark Breland was with him for 10 years. If he'll do that to Mark Breland, what will he do to me? He'll do that to anybody if he loses because he's a sore loser. He don't know how to handle the loss. You know so I mean? did you ever think? So did you ever think that Malik Scott was probably the only guy he could get? 
No, I, I wouldn't say that because I heard Floyd Mayweather reached out to Deontay Wilder and wanted to train him. I know that George Foreman reached out to Deontay Wilder and wanted to train him, but instead he chooses another yes man. Wilder got a whole bunch of yes men around him. You know, people like Kay Jones. We ain't heard shit about Kay Jones until this whole glove shit pop up, and all of a sudden he pops up. He's on every platform, and he wants fame off of this. He's doing this for fame. Wilder, these guys don't care about you, bro. They never did, and they never will. So Wilder needs to get a real team around him. Why is JD still around? That's what I don't understand. Uh, um, I, I don't really know much about Malik Scott. Um, all, I mean, ba- I'm gone based off right now because um, Freddie Roach was a terrible, hey, bro, I say a terrible boxer, you know, but he, Freddie Roach I trained keep, some. My brother, you know that Malik Scott had a fixed fight with Deontay Wilder. You do know that part. Red Catch had a fixed fight with uh, Pro Grade the other day. But we talk, you know, we're talking about Deontay uh, Wilder. No, I, 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 my brother, we're talking wanna, about Deontay Wilder. I don't want to bash Malik Scott. Let me just say one thing. We're talking about Deontay Wilder having a fixed fight with his <laughs> trainer, Malik Scott. Now, could you explain that? Because nobody want to talk about it. That's how you know it was a fixed fight. I don't, I don't know, you know, because some guys they don't want to get hit. You know, it could, it could it have been a multiple of things. You know, it could have been a multiple of things. He, he could have quit in the ring. He could have took the dog. It, both of us the same. Taking the dog, taking the dog because you don't want to take no more punishment. He probably felt the power and he said, "Shit, I don't want to get hit anymore." That's it. We saw a guy when he fought an FA jog, but he went to the ring. He walked out. We could have said that. You know, we could say that's a fixed fight in a sense, just for a win. You know, but I think it's a good thing that he's in the that he's training. We saw that he's in he's in good shape. And we and we might get a trilogy, you know, and the best man will win that fight. You know, I think we should just push for because no matter who wins, Abby Josh is following that fight. That's all we know. Abby Joshua or Ushik may be next after that. But, but I, my brother, man, you know, I respect you, but I mean, you still talk, you know, we're you know, not talking about how they fight with the shot. And you got a lot of background on well, you, you got a lot of background on I got you. Fix your audio, H. How is my audio? Am I good? I can hear you. I can hear you now. Well, so, so DJ, now let's get back to Wilder and Malik Scott. You know, how is Wilder able to have a fixed fight? Wilder didn't even land a punch against Malik Scott. And Malik Scott went down and he acted like he had a seizure. I knew it was a fixed fight back then, and I know it was a fixed fight to this day. So now, back to Wilder, hiring Malik Scott, somebody who took a dive for him. That's how we know it was a dive. That's how we know it was a fixed fight. Because now that's your best friend. It it makes sense. It, it makes sense. You didn't even land the punch against your best friend. Now that's your trainer. He don't know nothing about boxing. You could have hired Derrick James. You could have hired Coach Kevin Cunningham. He wanted yes men around him that ain't gonna teach him. He wanted to say he wants a yes man around him, so they won't teach him shit, and he could do whatever he wants to do. Go in there and run the show, run the camp. Like Mark Breland said, this guy is uncoachable. So he can't bring a real coach in there because he doesn't want a real coach in there. He wants a yes man, Malik Scott. That's what he's so, That's what he's saying, Doc. My, my thing hey, is, money. so if, yeah, if, go ahead. If, go ahead, if, if Tyson Fury and, and Deontay Wilder do have a third fight and Malik Scott trains Wilder for that win, then what does that say? You understand what I'm saying? That's why... I don't. I don't really want to get caught into the past because then it's like we can bash Wilder's past as much as we can bash Fury's past. You understand what I'm saying? Because all the accusations, and then we be going down a different rabbit hole at that point. You know, because it's a lot of it's a lot of things that follow Fury previously to all the fights today to 2021. You know, and that's that's why I really don't want. I I understand what you're saying um, with the Malik Scott situation. But I mean, obviously, he has some. He has some training. I don't know who trained him previously, you know. But I've been under uh, trainers, and I've I've never trained a, a fighter a day in my life. But I, 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 my trainer did enough of, of a job to where, as though both of them, they, that I, I, I soaked up the game. And when I speak to fighters, and I, and I train with fighters, spar fighters, that I understand enough of the three I still have more to learn, but I could 
I could go out there and, and, and replicate what they what they, what they were teaching. But, you know, but I, I'm not going. I don't want to dismiss Malik Scott's intelligence with his IQ of boxing. You know, he does Derrick James box. Derrick James had a boxing career. He wasn't the best boxer. You know, he got but knocked out. Was a contender. Derrick 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 had a terrible career. Um, Derrick James is not a contender. Derrick James was a contender. Freddie Rose Derrick was James is not a contender. They they weren't they weren't the, 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 they, they were okay they were okay they were okay. They were okay. They were okay. They now, no, wait, Aki, you want to compare Freddie Rose to Malik Scott? That's a bad comparison. Freddie Rose worked with Bernard Hopkins. Oscar De La Hoya. My man, let me be fighting. I'm telling you, you got fighting, experience. Fighting, fighting, wait, wait, wait. I keep one more time. When I, I, I got a question now. What experience does Malik Scott has? A, ha, what, what experience does he have as a trainer? <clears throat> and this is why. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, what experience does Malik Scott have as a trainer? And now Wilder is bringing him in for the biggest fight of his career with Malik Scott. The biggest fight of your career. You chose to get a Malik Scott with no experience? That's some bullshit. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ock. Yeah, but same as that was Danny Great kind of what he's saying. He said he could have brought in the John David Jackson. And again, that goes back to what Brother Shelton is saying. Um, Wilder kind of burned bridges because a lot of fighters and trainers are are are, you know, because again, like, like Bob Byrne says, it's a brotherhood, it's a family in a sense. They didn't take that rather well, you know. So Wilder had to start somewhere and his and it. Whatever came about, Malik Scott came in, you know, and um, and again, Freddie Roach was beaten into uh, Parkinson's from box. He wasn't a great boxer, um, but but uh, he uh, 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 um, Derrick James wasn't the most prolific boxer. Roy Jones, yes, he was a he was a he was a great champion, but he skill wise, his skills can't match uh, um, Bernard Hopkins. Train fighters. This dude ain't trained nobody. Now you, Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach you never trained no one, but he finally took on that role. You, it's a, it's a one day you have to take. You on gotta that. start somewhere. You, that's H. That's, Baby, you, you gotta start somewhere. You can. You Freddie Roach started start. somewhere. Bro, he he had to start somewhere. He gotta start somewhere. You say he gotta start somewhere. So he want him to start against the number one heavyweight in the world in the biggest fight in boxing. So you start Here's right. The thing. Here's the thing you got to look at. This is what we all got to look at as fans. This is what we all got to look at as fans. This is what we all got to look at as fans. This is what we all got to look at as fans. It doesn't matter what we think. De Deontay Wilder thinks that's the guy for him. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what we think. Yeah, and you, we just have to accept it. Hopefully, Malik Scott can be easy... You know, because at the end of the day, um, from what my trainer said, usually when the fighter loses, they try we try to blame the trainer, and you and all blame has to go to the fighter. The trainer, some trainers, I've I watched certain fights where the trainers didn't know jack squat about boxing. Uh, I think it was Pat Gayle versus uh, uh, was not Van Heerden, the other guy, and he said, "Well, it's getting ready to happen now." And then this fighter gets not gets Pat Gayle, you know, she, she squashes him. You know, um, but it starts somewhere. Malik Scott has to start somewhere. Maybe his calling may be as a trainer. Maybe within that fight, he can bring out what Wilder needs. Maybe Wilder was being hard hit. Maybe Wilder is saying, like, dang, you know, you know, you, we never know. At the end of the day, we're not in these rooms. We're not, we're not in these conferences. We're not on these phone calls. Maybe Malik Scott being as a friend to, to, to uh, Wilder, it probably can. Because Wilder, again, similar to uh, how the brother was just learned, the Michael, he started late. You know, and all in their mind is I'm going to come in here to bring pain. You understand what I'm saying? So Wilder's Wilder's best thing is not to get into a Derek James game plan. That shit takes you know that stuff takes years. You understand what I'm saying? That stuff takes years. That's the same thing I see with Ryan Garcia. It would take years for Ryan to get where Canelo was at. It's gonna well, take gonna years it. for Oscar Valdez to even get where Canelo's at. Same Y'all take uh, over the team. I'll be right back. Y'all take over. Y'all and the same goes with Andy Ruiz. That stuff takes years. Canelo has been with uh, Eddie Reynoso for years. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in three months. It doesn't happen in a year. It takes time. So for him to get with a John David Jackson, we might see little progression. But Fury has been with his trainer and Crump Jim for, for years. years. He's been around those guys for years. So he knows right. what they're asking for. And the certain subtle changes that they want, they're going to implement. You don't change a fighter altogether. You can't just throw Wilder in there. You can't there do that. With, uh, you can't do that. With, uh, um, I'm using another great trainer. I, I spoke with him last night. Um, um, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Porter. Kenny Porter's yeah. a great trainer. 
He couldn't yeah. just go in there and just change Wilder completely because that's a mental boxing is mental first and foremost. Right. So right. you have to take what you have, and I think Malik Scott may understand it, and that's all Wilder may have at this time. But we just right. have to accept that he has Malik Scott, and hopefully Malik Scott can show something. And the best man may win. I, again, I, in this fight, I, I can only favor Fury because I think mentally he has the advantage. But Wilder right. can bring that upset. Like right now, right. based on the mental. He he just he won that previous fight, um, and he's been having a long. He's been with uh, Sugar Hill for so long, and Sugar Hill knows what he wants, and he already knows what to expect in a sense. He knows he know where he could probably hurt Wilder at, and that probably applies him with AJ. You know, he 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 stay studied the game. You know, which side is his weak side? Can he take these body shots? How deep would we want to take him? You know, but right now I'm side with Fury. I think if it happens, I'm going to pay for it. You know, I'm gonna support the fight. You know, because at the end of the day, after that fight, we have to have undisputed. That's all I know. You know, and if that's the contract, get the contract out of the way. The best man win. Please go fight AJ. We need the undisputed heavyweight. You know, I'm not going to sit. I, I don't want to get into a Wilder badge because then I can go into a Fury badge. And I can go into an AJ badge or a Ruiz badge or a Klitschko badge. And it just it's, it's a long rabbit hole that will never get us undisputed at, uh, at heavyweight. Well, the thing is, you know, my whole, my biggest point is what I think H is omitting is the fact that people don't understand how big of a detriment he did to himself by accusing Mark Breland of doing all that stuff that he accused him of. That I, I can tell you how business works. I don't really, I can't speak on the you know, fraternity of boxing because I never made it to the professional level. But I know in any kind of business, if I'm doing business with DJ and I put out a bunch of lies and try to smear DJ name and don't bring no evidence, anybody else that's in that business that DJ's in, I'm trying to do business with them now. They're going to look at me sideways. And they're not going to want to fuck with me because I, the last time somebody in their business and they circle messed with me, I bashed them and dragged their name to the mud. Nobody is going to put their reputation on the line to fuck with Wilder right now because they feeling like if this shit don't go right, we already know what he's capable of doing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it, 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 it uh, invalidates the world. It's he discredited Mark Breland as a fighter, as a Hall of Fame, a legend that he was, but then those statements. As know, a man. Like, as a man. Yeah, as, yeah, as a man in time, you know, and, and then every man that respects, loves, and admires and looks up to you from his kids, everyone around in the boxing sport, in the sport of boxing, it rubbed the wrong way, even to the fans, you know, and that's, and that's it kind of cut off, the well kind of went dry for a while in a sense. Who can I go to, you know, just to get what I need for this fight, you know? And, and that's the reality. He, he has to accept it. You can't burn bridges with people, you know? Now, again, if, it, if he would have had any evidence of it, we'd have been having a different conversation, you know? But because there, there isn't anything, that's, that's the wild part. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's a slander, you know? And you, you can't just say things with no, well, any evidence because you have a feeling, you know, a feeling... We met it. We can't go off feelings. We can't go mm -hmm. off of, you know, off our my gut feeling is telling me that uh it's an Advil PM in my uh in my water, you know, like you can't just say that, you know. You know, you right. have a drug test or this, that, and the third. You know, you, right. you have to do your right. due right. process, you know. And, and then after the due process, none of that has came out. Mm -hmm. You really still to this day, to this day, you owe that man an apology, you know, if that's not what happened. If it didn't happen, you owe him a public apology the same way you publicly defamed him as a man. You need to make, make amends. That's all That's all a lot of fans want. You know, we're glad that you're in the gym. You're working. You know, you, you're still in shape. You know, we just want that apology from Mark Freeman. You know, you can say F, you can say F Fury all night and day long. Some fans, we, <laughs> some of us, we don't care. You know, that's boxing. Promote the fight. Right. As far as Mark Freeman, you know, as a trainer, we he's done for boxing, you owe him a apology. Yeah, that's the thing, you know. That's that's that's, that's the major thing, and we gotta look at the fact that maybe Mark, maybe uh, Deontay Wilder trusts Malik Scott, and that's the one thing you gotta have in a cohesive corner. The fighter has to trust the trainer, and the trainer has to trust the fighter. Maybe this is the guy he trusts, and that could 
can't be nothing but a help to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that most definitely. Um, uh, you've been in the gym, and you probably had multiple trainers uh, in the gym. And you're dealing with one trainer, and you probably deal with a different trainer. And certain trainers can probably bring out the best in you. Some of them, it's because, again, it's I, I don't want to use like horses and the jockey on the horse. It's, 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 it's a method to it. It's a method of madness to all of it. I mean, I'm using my name in this, a method of madness. A trainer has his, his, his job is to reach out to this fighter and bring out the best of his potential and maximize him as a fighter. And sometimes some trainers cannot do that. And it's not to be little Mark Breeland, but at the end of the day, maybe Malik Scott can be the best for Wilder's career going into the day. And they just had to part ways. The problem is what Wilder came out and said. Now, if he had just separated from Mark Breeland for his own, his, well, we just, I'm going to try a different trainer, another trainer. That's a different conversation. But once the defamation comes in, then this slander, you know, and accusations, that is a problem. Right. And then on a, uh, just on a practicality note, brother, look at the yeah. NFL. Look at the NBA. Have you noticed they change coaches like every three to five years? Even in baseball. Yeah, they, they change be, managers uh, every three to five years. Because even sometimes the message becomes stale and the players yeah. tune it out. Sometimes you just need a new voice, fresh eyes, yeah. just something the different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah the Clippers, they had Doc Rivers. Now they got, um, what do they got? They got Chauncey Billups and all, the, all those guys. They got Doc Chauncey Rivers. Billups and uh, uh, the boy that, uh, uh, the boy used to play for the Lakers, Tyron Lue. Tyron Lue was the yeah, coach. Tyron, Tyron, yeah, Tyron, yeah, Lue and, and Chauncey. And they previously had Doc Rivers. You know, Doc Rivers couldn't maximize their potential. He had a great team. You know, right. we're not saying Doc Rivers is a great coach. You know, he had he got the ring to verify. But we're saying, right. what, what, what we see is just that maybe these guys can bring out what needs to be done for those guys to, to go where they need to be headed. Facts, facts. It's all it's all part of sports, you know. Um, I you know hopefully again, I hopefully Malik Scott can 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 maximize Wilder's potential, you know, and and he's way more comfortable, you know. Um, it could be, I mean, he probably can change. Wilder can be arrogant at times, you know. He can be, you know, if he if he didn't catch, if he wasn't doing film study of Mark Breland and the guy, you know, having Mark Breland there, you should want to do film study. You know, it's, it's certain things, you know, where he was ignorant in a sense. Not to to be rude about it, but when you have a fight like that around you and, you and you're in the heavyweight division, every day you should be going home doing film study. You had Mark Brillen there, how did he win his fights? Like That also falls into the fighter, you know. And hopefully with Malik Scott, him also have been a fighter um, and, and probably younger in a sense that he can probably get into Wilder's head and help him. Bro, bro, you know? Mark Brillen was a he was a fighter too, and that ain't help. Mark Brillen was a gold medalist. Wilder, at the end of the day, he wants to do whatever he, that he wants to do. He's uncoachable. He doesn't want a real trainer in his camp, like a coach Kevin Cunningham or uh, you know, like a Derek James. You know, I know you compare. You Derek, let, let me talk. Let me talk. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know. I know that. Uh, you compare Derrick James to, uh, to, to I guess, Malik Scott, and that's not fair because Derrick James put in work as a trainer. Malik Scott yeah. hasn't done sh- – wait, wait, wait. Malik Scott hasn't done shit as a trainer, and you expect him to go against the number one heavyweight in the world with this type of trainer, somebody that took a dive for you in a fight, that had a fixed fight with Wilder? This is some bullshit, man. And Wilder lied to the fight fans – he lied to uh, to everybody. He lied to JFL. He lied to me. You know what I mean? And I'm fed up with the bullshit, bro. I'm fed up, bro. As a yeah. boxing fan. But what you're not understanding, what you're not understanding. JFL, and I don't appreciate him lying to you like that and lying to me. For real. What you don't understand, what you're not listening to, H Money, is the fact that the coaches you name, the, the serious, the reputable boxing trainers, that you named probably will not work with Deontay Wilder because they don't want the same thing that happened to Mark Breland to happen to them if it doesn't go well. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. You can't that's forget that. Yeah, that's a good shout point. out to uh, H Money Boxing. Shout out to uh, H Money, Mr. The Zone, Mr. Supreme. You know, Tim goes down, Tim Haney, the real 
lightweight champion, WBC, the most prestigious belt in boxing. Ten toes down. First and foremost, shout out to Team Hank. Uh, so, yeah, like, you know, when it comes to Wilder, he's standing on the square, he's standing on his word. So there's no lies to be told from his from Wilder's mouth. Yeah, you know I mean, so he told he came out when uh most most people want him to be vocal on their time, but Wilder was vocal on his time and he'd be vocal again. So uh people want to feel how they feel, but the key part is in this whole situation for me, was no one can deny Wilder wasn't himself in that rematch. <clears throat> Commentators also stated that. Also, the action shows, and that's what been displayed, bro. So my thing is, in the trilogy, all I have to say is, a hundred percent Wilder. Skill set mm -hmm. remains. He was hundred percent in the you first fight. Any, JFL, you he any, was a JFL. He was a hundred percent in the first fight. Now you are a friend of mine. Fight. I look. Well, let me say this, Jay. I look at you like family. You know what I mean? And well, Deontay Wilder, he lied to us, bro. He no, lied no. about the no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Not he lied me, about the, me, bro. Can I finish? Can I finish, please? Because Wilder lied about Tyson Fury. He lied about he lied about Mark Breland. Wilder lied, bro. You know what I mean? And now he's here, quiet. Here's my, now, here's my I, I don't I don't appreciate him lying to you. No, I don't appreciate you know, here, here, I, don't, here, here. I don't appreciate being lied to JFL. No, no, That's my problem. Here. No, here, here's my thing with the with the Breland situation. Wilder spoke his piece on that. And the end, the end of the day is, let him go out on the ship. Period. Facts, not rebuttal. That's why. Nah, nah, about. nah. He got a family. Nah. <clears throat> nah, nah. As a trainer, anyway, as your trainer, it's to it's to save your fighter and to throw in the towel yeah, when they can't defend what... themselves. Wilder couldn't defend himself. He got dropped three times in that fight. He was bleeding out of his ear. He couldn't fuck with Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury beat that man fair and square, JFL. And it's unfortunate that's, that. That's the, the one, let me finish. Let me finish, Jay. That's it's debatable. unfortunate. Let, can I please finish? Because it's, it's unfortunate that Deontay Wilder couldn't take his loss like a man. And he, he lied to the fight fans. He lied to me. And I, th I deserve an apology. I feel like we all deserve an apology. Mark Breland deserves an apology. You know, for getting fired for no reason. Bro, go ahead, JFL. I'll let you cook. I'm quiet now. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, listen, that's your stance on that. My stance is the opposite. My thing is clean house, period. And that's what you got to do and clean house. You know what I mean? If you got to rebuild, and so be it. Wilder's going to uh, be 100% this time around in this trilogy fight. And for me, I think Fury needs to come in this trilogy on some honorable tip, like how Ruiz was honorable and defeated AJ. Now, if you're coming to this trilogy fight, make it an honorable fight and have a fair one with uh, with Wilder and let the best man win. But 100% Wilder, you will get in the trilogy. Okay. Anybody seen Danny Garcia? Hey, bro. We stand on Wilder. <laughs> still on top of it, bro. <laughs> Um. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the best for Boston. I feel as though. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. How will people feel if Mayweather, the GOAT TBE Mayweather, if he, if he wasn't more of a, you know, when it came to Madonna, let, let's say Madonna, he let Madonna rock out, you know, do what he do, and then gets in the ring and do some act. Uh, 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 foul play to a Mayweather. You know, you know Mayweather hate is already a hate train. So if Madonna was ever going to win off of Mayweather based off of, uh, thirty uh, suspect gloves and tactics, what would be what would be the narrative? When you say Mayweather would have the same type of narrative Wilder got, or oh, Mayweather need to go to the drawing board, Mayweather need the new trainer? Is we gonna say that about Mayweather if he get defeated by a certain way? Um, I think see, it's it's that's that's a different situation. It's not a different, um, it's not Floyd, a different situation, Floyd, bro. Because listen, listen. Floyd. I mean, hold on, hold on, bro, hold on, bro. In that different situation, because that would that could have occurred. So now I'm asking you again the same question. But the difference is in that fight, 
although Madonna still came in there on some tactics, Mayweather was 100% himself to defend himself and defeated Madonna, not once, but twice. Same thing with Wilder. He defeated Fury in the first fight. And in the second fight, you can say that Wilder was 50%. So going into the trilogy, oh. <laughs> you can say 100% Wilder. No. Um, all right. So uh, give me one you second. see my give point there? It's, it's, again, Floyd brought evidence, right? And he pinpointed, you know and he made, he made a spectacle of, of um, the tactics, right? No, 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 no. Um, he made a spectacle of the tactics. I let you explain. I let you explain. Floyd brought, he made a spectacle of and Floyd made a spectacle. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd him, right? listen, you, you, you got to can't. No, no, you, you, got, you can't, words, talk, at this, you can't talk at the same time, correct, my yes. guy. Correct, correct no, the words, don't, don't tell me to correct myself. You listen. Floyd no, made no, a you spectacle. Listen, bro. Floyd made a spectacle. Again, I got to get you off. If you listen, bro, it's, it, it, listen, listen. You got to get out that energy, bro, and listen. Because I'm agreeing with you. No, no, you I'm agreeing with you because nothing, you're so bro. defensive. You're if you not agree, bro. But to agree, and what I'm saying is, Madonna hey, came in. Hold on, hold on. Why Madonna. do you ask a question and won't let nobody answer it? Hold on. That bro. makes no answer sense, it, bro. Answer it accordingly, bro. I'm trying. He ain't got to answer the way I'm you want him to answer. He got to answer it. I'm okay. Okay, you want to dance around? Go ahead, answer it and dance around. Answer it and dance around. All right, bro. Go ahead. Just give me. Go ahead. You got the floor. Thank, thank, thank. Calm down, young. Yeah, calm down, young. Bro, ain't no young over calm, here, bro. Calm down. Ass, calm down. To, how, how old are you, bro? Answer the question. How old are you? Answer the question. How old are you? Answer the question. You're a very aggressive young man. Calm down, man. Again, Free Floyd smoke. made us. A... I am Mr. Free Smoke. Floyd made us. No, 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 Okay. Floyd made a spectacle of Madonna when he brought light to the situation publicly, right? Wilder, if he if that was the situation, he should have made a spectacle and brought complete evidence, right? Yeah, hold on. Of, I got pause. I stop situation. you there. I had to stop you there, buddy. Now slow down, youngin. We're talking about Mayweather. We checked them gloves prior. And listen, even though Mayweather did so. Madonna is Floyd did what? Agreement. Hold on, bro. Hey, hold on, bro. Hold on. I, I can't hear you. I ain't hear you. I ain't hear you. I ain't hear you. Don't worry. I didn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. My, my earphones fell out. You said okay. Floyd did what? Go get some beats, some headphones. Go call Floyd. <laughs> Floyd did what? <laughs> Floyd did what? Go get some beats, some headphones. Okay. You know what I'm saying is this. Even, even, even still, the Wu Sound Free Smoke, Madonna could have still, you know, did what he did with certain girls if he chose to, right? But my thing is, in that fight still, hold on. Even in that fight still, Madonna was still a certain type of tactics fighter when it came to a Mayweather fight. All I'm saying is, if Mayweather got defeated with some suspect ass gloves, what would be your narratives then? That's all I'm saying. You don't want to dance around that. You don't want to dance around that. If Floyd would have lost to Madonna, Floyd would have rematched Madonna and then adjusted, bro. It's two different oh, things. Oh, okay, Again, okay. Wilder so then, has oh, okay. so now they went into justice. issues. Okay. Wilder, Wilder, with the Wilder, all right, we're going to lose perfect up again. The brother that was just on here doing the interview, the Michael, the Michael Harris. He was just doing the interview. Again, I, and the first question they I asked, ask, when, when I asked, nice wait, just wait, bro, just, just shh, calm down, young man. Yeah, we'll my when, he, when, he got, when he got on here, when he was on there, I asked him a question. I said, are you a work in progress or are you trying to play catch up, right? You get what I'm saying? And he says it's a work in progress, right? Yes, around my so Wilder, he should have became a work in progress over the years. Over the years, you know, his footwork yeah. became phenomenal, you know. His head face became phenomenal. His hand face became phenomenal. And, and everything in his overall game should have been getting worked on day by day by day by day, you know. Yes, he's bomb squad. Yes, he has the right hand. So, yes, with Wilder, in his situation, he has to go back. Been, even in his wins, he should have went back and said, that's not enough for me, you know. The contentness was a, the contentness of Wilder was a problem, bro. As a man, he can never be content with anything, you know. He got his I'm always going to be better, bro. You bro. You danced around my question earlier. You did not answer it straight. I up. answered your question, no, no, bro. No, you just no, aggressive, bro. No, no, you, no, no. You, 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 you kicking out this, bro. this like, like you. I, you, <laughs> I'm not getting you, bro. Hit me up. Hit me up. I'm very getting your shit, bro. He truly answered my question. Period. All I'm saying is this. You, I gave an example, and then you, you can choose to run how you want to, uh, you know, talk about running. But here, here's the thing, though. Let me ask you one question. In that, in, that, in that rematch, was Wilder 50% or 100% Wilder? I just need to know that. Which fight? Which fight? 
Which fight? The rematch, the rematch bro. He got he was 100%. Out. He got knocked out. No, 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 he got no. Knocked Ask, out. Hold on, hold on. You know what the commentary said, right? So, After the right hand, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Me ask, Fury me ask, that nigga with the right hold hand, hold hand and that hold was hold it. Hold he he powered down, man. The right hand fuck is there. Again, you're not answering my questions, bro. He stepped into the right hand and it felt wild up, bro. Because he wasn't moving his damn head out the center line. No, 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 no. Answer my question. Yes or no? I just told you. The, no, he no, was no. at 100. The there's right no, hand no hit him, but he went to 50. There's no long rant with that. And then he, yes then he no threw question, a wild ass on the court, on the turn, on the belt. And then he went down to 25. Right, 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 right. He beat him down to zero. Right. right. He was falling over the ring. 100 to 50, 25, zero. Are you done? That's what happened in that fight. Are you done? Now answer my question again. 50% wilder or 100% in that rematch? Was yes or no? After after the re, after the right hand, no, 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 after no, the bell rang, no, no. hey, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, once again, I'm hey, can I right ask? Hand. I'm asking you please. again, bro. Please, please, please answer the question. Uh, so, Tom, if you want to answer, ahead, bro. Who, who next? Hey, go ahead, bro. I answer it, man. Go ahead, bro. Answer. He was 100%. Fuck. He, he was 100%. Yeah, yeah, he, he was definitely hey, 100%. Hold on. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hey, bro, bro. If you say 100%, wow. Now, yeah, he you said the first, but hold on, bro. You cannot say 100% Wilder in that rematch. Not one of y'all can say that. He was 100%. Okay, hold on, bro. Can I say that? Why can't we say that? The first Why can't we say that? He, he okay, nutty, man. He a nut. Okay. He a nut. He a nut. He a nut. He crazy hey, shit. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You a nut, you, bro. You ain't answering my question, so why you talking? Yeah, I, I answered your question, question, man. I answered to the guy. Bro. I answered your question. He's 100%. Hold on. I'm trying to answer you to the guy. You trolling at this point. Hold on, bro. No, go on. Put, hold your button down, bro. You ain't trying to answer the other guy tried to. And fell. That's what I'm saying. JFL. 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 You go take a nap, JFL. Hold on, bro. Wilder lost both fights. You sound like a cranky ass baby, JFL. Hey, you want to keep going? You sound cranky as shit. Wilder lost both fights, fam. You want to keep going? Hey, listen, bro. Yeah, and I got, got 50 on, on Fury this next fight. Answer that. You got 50 on him? Who that talking? Is D, is D nice, name, nice, man, bro? all the way from Cleveland. D nice, baby, hey, all the way from Cleveland, Ohio. What's your name, bro? D nice. Okay, D nice. Yeah, now, what's your what's name? Your name? Yeah. now, you answered my question, but you did not answer it. Now, the first fight was Wild, was Wilder. Say what? Shit. I'm asking to the guy, okay? Go, you know, man, I'm, I'm not about to keep doing your straw man argument, man. No, no, What's ain't no point? straw man over here, buddy. I don't play them games, bro. What's your Something point? Wrong That's one. My you point is, let me ask you a question. Your sideline, your sideline guy, D. Jones. Yes, sir. Why are you putting there when you ain't trying to answer? Man. So now, Wilder in the first fight. D, 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 let him talk. Wilder in the first fight. Was he 100% in the first fight, D. Nice? Yes or no? I'm not here to answer questions, man. Make your point. Okay, you want you want duck too. Okay, hey Shelton, who next? Who next? Who next? Who next? Hey JFL, what daddy got? Then you keep asking the same questions over and over again, bro. Where daddy got? See ya. Answer that. Answer that. Answer that, JFL. Oh, you don't want no smoke with that either. I'm gonna cut your ass. I'm gonna tell uh, we're gonna call Hold up, hold up. No smoke. Hold up, hold up. Smoke come up. JFL. Deontay Wilder was 100% Wilder in that rematch. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Fact. We're talking about, hold on, bro. Hey, Shelton, let me school you about something, bro. We're talking about performance, wise, bro. We know the commentary even stated, bro, that Wilder wasn't even himself. So you're going to go against That's a personal problem, bro. I don't, I don't, that's a personal problem. Listen, problem. That's this is heavyweight boxing. We, this is heavyweight boxing, and we fight for $30 million a piece. <laughs> Your personal <laughs> shit is of no concern to me. Get in yeah, the ring, you ready shit. to fight. Period. Can point I blank. Okay, Can I ask one question? You say that. I say that. Let me ask one question. Okay, you say that. No, no, no. no let, let's stay on. Let, no, let's stay no, on. No, wild, no, man. We stay on topic. We stay on let's topic. Stay on wild. AJ. Okay. I just want to ask one well, question. Divert, I bring up what AJ. What proof do you have that Wilder wasn't a hundred percent? His excuses. No. I, I just want to know what. What factual proof do you have that Wilder wasn't a hundred percent? It don't even. It ain't about it. It doesn't matter though. Cause he went in the room. Oh, it don't, it don't we matter. That's what I'm saying. Because he, you know, I'm saying he, you he started off on two feet. You're going to take your head off, and you're going to walk in there 25 percent. Hey, D-Nice. That's it. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. Hey, D-Nice. OK. Go ahead. Listen. Here's the example. 
when you verse in uh certain type of tactics fighters, right? Now we can go down the list. I ain't gonna say no names, but we can still go down that list. Now we can say that certain tactics fighters for an opponent that was a hundred percent themselves, knowing who uh what type of tactics they was uh enduring. And then guess what? They defeated those certain uh Using certain tactics because they were 100 themselves. Now, okay. this factual facts about Wilder was even the commentators even took notice, bro. Wilder wasn't 100 percent himself. You're not going to overlook that, bro. That's their opinion, was, though. What was, what was, what was wrong with Wilder? What was wrong with Wilder? That's his problem. What was wrong with Wilder? What was wrong with Wilder? That's his problem. You want to go all the way there? Then we can go all the way there. I'm going to tell you what was wrong with him. You want to ignore it? Then you want to dismiss it? That's what was wrong with Wilder. From it, then that's what you want to do because you you would deflect. That's what you do. I ain't deflect, brother. I'm asking you, you, what you, do. you haven't you stated fact. what was yeah. wrong with Wilder. You are a troll. Ain't no yeah, troll over here. The book yeah, was Was it the water? Was it the egg weights? Was it the uh Yo, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, y'all. Let me take that one second. I'm sorry, Hey, Mike from Boston. Wait, 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 JFL. Mike from Boston. He's here. Nice He's here for smoke. Yeah. Mike brings smoke every time he comes. So, so go ahead, Mike. Uh, we talked about this bullshit. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Yo, I'm just saying he's not fucking with Tyson Fury, man. He's not doing it. Uh, yeah. So listen, 100 percent Wilder in this trilogy. What you gonna say? Well, let, let him cook real quick. Jeff. I got 50 on Wilder. I, I got 50 on Fury. Oh, uh, okay. Who got money on Fury? But what up, D Nice? What's D -Nice. good? What's good, man? I, I, I got 50 on Fury. Okay, fifth and first. Who next? Shelton, what you got on first? I got a hundred. Yeah, I don't want to take your I got money, money like that, but I got a hundred. I got a hundred. I got a hundred. I got a hundred. So it's fifty, well, fifty, well, hundred. <laughs> if I was a gambler man, if I was a gambler man, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet against Wilder in the third, third fight, but I, I would have Fury win. I wouldn't bet. Against and, and here you go. And here you go. Here you go. We know that Fury, right? A so-called crunk style, you think that's new? Bro, that's the same crunk style he did in Klitschko fight, bro. So Fury didn't even bring nothing new. He only brought uh the same uh typical tag that he did with Klitschko fight. He the shit it worked. Was fight. That was not the shit worked. Wilder was 50 percent himself and Wilder never quit. So there you go. Wilder so was 110 percent. And he got he now he what fight was he landed okay. the right hand in the first round. Who, who ain't quit? Well, hey, let, let Mike speak, y'all. Let's see what Mike got to say. Go ahead, Mike. Let him talk. Don't cool. cut him off, JFL. Don't my, cut him my, off. My Go ahead. My, my thing is this, man. Wilder, in that, for, in that second fight, you saw him land that right hand twice. He landed it twice, and Fury ate that shit. Like, it was nothing. He kept coming forward. He beat the break. Big up. fact. Oh, oh, I disagree. 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 Oh, I okay. Now you want to roll with that? I, 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 I agree. Mike is right. No, well, let me no, say this. Let me, no, let me no. say this, y'all. What happened? He rolled with the punch. He rolled with no, well. the punch. Which one is he? He's not the punch. Let me talk real quick. Leo, Tyson Fury took Deontay Wilder's best punch in the first fight and got back up. And then in the second fight, Mike just said it. Ty Deontay Wilder hit him twice with a right hand. Uh, and the crowd was like, woo, all of that. And Tyson Fury ate it. Ate it. He so he took his best I, punch. I didn't. I don't he care didn't, how you beat fight, the punch. In the, second, in, in the second fight, the punches never landed. Which one is clean. it? Michael B. Jones. He, he rolled. Fury did a great job rolling with the punch and stepping out of the you know, out of the he, he did it. DJ he, he is did right. a great job. No, I, I gotta get Fury. Oh, I'm gonna get Fury. I'm gonna get Fury. He landed it though. Get, but I yeah, thought. He look, him. Look, he I thought Wilder. Him. I thought Wilder had power. Wait, let me say this. I thought Wilder had power if he lands it anywhere like. uh Malik Scott, right? The phantom punch when the punch didn't even land and knocked him out. So when he connects with Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury, go ahead, Mike. You got it, Mike. Go ahead. You saw the bruise on Tyson Fury's head. You you see the you see the bruise on Fury's head after the fight. He got hit with that red hand, man. He had a huge bruise on his head. So it wasn't a, it wasn't fully before he slipped. He got he got clipped with that punch, but he he was able to he was able to roll with it a little bit, and he was able to continue coming forward. He kept coming forward. Wow, I've never seen anyone do that before. 
I mean, the guy, the, the guy that he fought, um, the one we knocked out, and he put us, and he pawed him with the jab, and he caught with that cross and cross, and he made the, dude, the guy do a flip. He kept coming forward. It, the difference is, and a lot of people are uh, omitting this part about Fury. Fury is about 6'10". Fury is damn near seven feet. Fury made Wilder look like a child down there standing next negative. to him in that fight. That negative. Night. You negative. I'm talking. Let me talk. And that's a big fact. When, no. when, when a guy with that reach and that size is coming forward, he he, had, he also has more. His intangibles are different. You get what I'm saying? Yes. A, a right hand touched him, but it never was clean. It was never that clean as when in the, uh, the first fight when he caught him clean. When he caught him clean, he knocked Fury out. He knocked no, Fury he out in the first. He knocked, he knocked Fury down. He knocked, he knocked him out. I'm going to say Tyson knocked out Douglas, and I would say that Wilder knocked out uh, Fury. I would say and that. And you would be wrong. That's, that's where I'm at, bro. Y'all got Fury, that's cool. You can't, I got you, can't, you can't do that. Now, hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Go recap the fight, bro. You, you got, this is what I'm saying. You got, you got, I, this is all I want for this trilogy. This is all I want. I, I hold on. Hey, hey Mike, want Mike from Boston. What up, bro? Uh, Fury, for me, coming this trilogy, correct. Period. Make it a fair fight and make it an epic fight for uh, heavyweight boxing. If your skill set is, is what it is and your newbie crunk style is what it is, then come forward and we'll see 100% Wilder in the trilogy versus uh, 100% Fury. And let's keep, uh, you know, the uh, let's keep it honorable. Period. That's all. That's why I'm at with it. And trainers, I can get less with trainer it is. 100% okay, Wilder got, is all I know. I got a quick, I got a quick question. If yeah. Fury cheated in both fights, what will Team Wilder do to ensure he doesn't cheat in the third fight? That's a great question. And the thing I wouldn't, I'm not, I'm not going to say 100 percent Wilder. That's I'm going to say want. Fury. I'm going to say Fury is a very dirty fighter. Um, most technical fighters they, they they do use a lot of dirty tactics. And um, but it's boxing, you know, you have to adapt. Forget about the forget only about thing, the only thing Wilder can do is adapt, that, though, but it's cool you, though. And, 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 say and, like and, this and become the book. You know, Wilder, Wilder was Wilder was, never a, Wilder was never a bully. Fury is the bully in boxing because he, he, his skill wise, his size, he can use dirty tactics. That's a bully in boxing. How can you say Sean Porter? Sean Listen. Porter could become a bully. Bro, ain't no you know, Wilder, Wilder, nah, wait, 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 let me say this. They said that, they said that Bernard Hopkins was a dirty fighter. People said Andre Ward was a dirty fighter, but it didn't they take were. away. They were but bullies. it didn't take they away from their greatness. No, it didn't take away from their greatness. I'm not taking away from Well, let me talk. Man, fuck. When I'm trying to make a point, please, let me talk. When Tyson Fury goes in there and he wins the fight, why, why are we trying to tarnish his greatness? We, we didn't do that with Bernard Hopkins and Andre Ward, so we ain't going to sit here and do it with Tyson Fury. I don't care what color he is. So what if he's a white man? He can fucking fight. People hating on Tyson Fury because he's a white heavyweight, bro. I'm sick of that shit, dog. Fury, all right. He's all right, buddy. He's all right. 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 Yeah, nobody but said. No, hold on, hold on, y'all. Nobody said he was not great. Like we never seen. He's the champ. We never seen a heavyweight like Tyson Fury. We never seen a white man dominate the heavyweight division the way Tyson Fury is doing ever in boxing. Tommy, we never seen. I wouldn't say that. I think you're putting Morrison a, uh, a ten on the two Fury. with Hell the domination no. point. You put the sin on the two with the no. domination now. Machine He's not dominating shit. To sleep. Machine gun no. time puts Fury bro, to sleep. Bro, if Tyson Fury was black, we wouldn't hear none of this shit, bro. I'm telling you. I wouldn't hear no, none listen. of this shit. Y'all think Tyson Fury would have beat Tommy, Tommy, Tommy no, Gun Fury? It'd be Mike, Tommy what do you think about that, Mike? Mike, I think he... Did you say Tommy Gun? Hold on. Tommy Gun, yeah. One at a time. Yeah, he would have crushed He would have crushed Tommy Morrison. Exactly. Fury would have killed him. Yeah, Tommy Morrison was chinny. He did not Tommy Morrison out. Yeah, he would have fucked Tommy Morrison up. Yo, yo, Mike, what you say, Mike? Let me see what Mike said real quick. I said, no, I, I agree. I think he would have beat Tommy Morrison. Tommy Morrison wasn't as good as people might remember. He was good, but he's not fucking with Tyson Fury. So Wally yeah, will no. go 12 with Fury with Tommy Morrison's not? I, Bro, no, Tyson Tommy Fury Morrison. had a cut you, you, I guess you forgot about the cut on Tyson Fury. I showed you that he's such a warrior, kept fighting when some, any other fighter would have quit. 
And you're yeah, fucking real quick. Listen, no, we see. Wait, wait, hold up. We see Jamel no. Heron. No, hold up, bro. Let me talk. We see Jamel Heron when he had a cut against Okendo. Stop the fight. He couldn't continue. Tyson Fury kept fighting. He's not about to go twelve rounds at time. Oh my! Boys. Any other fighter would have quit. They would have quit. Yeah. I, that's good. I, 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 H money. Talking, H money. Bro, I'm talking, bro. Tommy Morris' yeah. best fight was in Rocky. Heron, <laughs> Heron didn't quit. Uh, I H money. The quit. doctor stopped the fight. Reggie that's Owens different. Said he quit. Well, ask the doctor Reggie stopped bro, the fight. Bro. Reggie Owens was the fish in that fight. Bro, ask the doctor some stopped the fight. He quit. Some, I didn't say he It quit. doesn't matter what you think. Bro, it matters what talk, happened. Bro. What happened was the doctor stopped the fight. Stop spinning. The doctor stopped the bro, fight. Bro, bro, listen, listen. Some people could criticize Jamil Herring. They thought he quit. I never said he quit, but Reggie Owens thought he quit. And more you just did. said it. Bro, can I talk without being cut, cut off? God damn. I'm just but you saying. said you didn't say it. I mean, you just said it. Bro, I, 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 go ahead, man. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> I can't even fucking talk, yep. bro. This shit is Y'all crazy. Cooking, though. Y'all cooking. No, I'm not. You can talk. I'm just saying. You said you didn't say that. You just two seconds ago said Jamel Herring quit. He didn't quit. The doctor stopped the fight. I never said he fucking quit. I didn't say Jamel Herring quit. Stop saying oh, you said that. I said Reggie Owen said that, and other people said it. So don't That's put no opinion. words in my mouth. I never said he quit, but the fight got stopped. Tyson Fury had a similar cut. A worse cut than that, and kept fighting. And kept fighting with a worse cut than that. But people want to criticize this man. He can't win for lose. He can't win for nothing, bro. I guess that's what it is when you're a white heavyweight, right? Okay. No, I don't think I, I want to say the whole boxing populace hey, hey, the whole guy against Fury. I think. Yeah, it is. Like, Everybody is against Fury. You got AJ fanboys against him. Wilder fanboys against him. Come on, man. This shit is bullshit. I'm not really a big fan of the heavyweight division. You know, you know, uh, you know my stance, bro. I can care all. less of uh, Wild uh, Fury situation there uh, when it comes to that. All I know is I could put certain uh, dirty tactics, factual dirty tactics cheaters on my list that I have multiple diverse lists on of names. So I stand separate from that situation there. All I'm saying is Tyson Fury, if he uh, comes in this trilogy, you know I mean, just come fairly and do it with honorable. And get your credibility back for one. I'm not you lost credibility for me for, for me. You know what I'm saying? Now come in this trilogy, make it honorable. How do we do the same? And then let the best man win. And the trainers, the trainers gonna be what the trainer is. Now you got a new trainer, Wilder, and Furry can continue his his uh, newbie crunk style. Either way, the trilogy's going down. How does he convince you that he's honorable though? Listen, bro. You heard what I said, bro. I heard you, but I asked you a question. You heard what I you heard what I said. Yeah, bro. but I asked you a question. Why are you the only one that can ask questions? You, I, just, I, just, I, just you, bro. I said, how do you ensure he's honorable? I said, Fury, that's that's up to Fury. It's a Fury decision to come in the ring yeah, and yeah, but how, uh, how do you determine how in? do you determine that? And is that and is that the very? I, I said again, if you listen to what I said, I say, all I, I can say you. is, very come in this fight. You're talking in circles, though. Hold on. Ain't no talking in circles. Go straight to the point with it, bro. That's you, D nice. Now, hear what I said. I said, I heard Fury, you. come in this fight in this trilogy, bro, and make it an honorable fight. Yeah, but how Fury. do you determine it's honorable? Listen, um, contract get, wise. Listen, he's saying you, contract wise. Want, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on, D John. Let me dress this D nice. You ain't nice either, bro. You, 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 you too easy, bro. Listen, bro. I'm better than Wilder. That's an honorable fight. Man, I beat the shit out of that Garcia. That's an honorable fight. That nigga can't fuck with me. You get it? Ah. You get that, y'all cooking, yeah, y'all, y'all cooking. Is, Fury can get his credibility back from me. Once he do so, until then, he will be do on that. Do what list. though? Period. Do what? It's you pro boxing, man. If you don't know what an honorable fight is, then what you in boxing for? The the second uh, Wilder fight was honorable. Oh, 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 oh what's for you? Okay. That's an opinion. Yeah, I call the knockout an honorable fight. That's false narrative. Good luck on that too. Nice time. Um, that's 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 a good point. I you just, you just said. Um, how many times did Holyfield and um, where they both fight? Three. Three. 
Okay. Who won the one one? Who won the one one? I cannot compare Andy Ruiz, honorable win over AJ, and honorable loss. Now, you can't do the same in Wilder and Fury fight. No, you cannot. Now. Yeah, it was all honorable because I haven't seen any proof of this honorable. Oh, you fucking damn. I haven't. Uh, I I was taught by uh, Andy the Hawk Price. When you in the ring, whatever whatever the ref doesn't see is legal. Fact. Yeah, yeah. It can be dirty, but it's legal. The ref don't see it. That's what B Hop B Hop excelled at. That. Um, you know when he first started that, like that, bro. You, I didn't he say he started. Bro. I said he excelled at no, no, he, bullying he, he, and he, dominating he, his opponents. First of all, you got to get in the guy's head, bro. and you got to win that he, fight. Bro. That's your he, career. They got some certain fights mixed up. Don't you know Bernard Hopkins was the most uh savvy uh brawler boxer with most accuracy in his fights, bro? He he never was a dirty fighter. Don't even compare. B-Hop was dirty as fuck. B-Hop, B-Hop, B-Hop had to be dirty. He had to be dirty. B-Hop wasn't no uh no huge. Cap, no huge guy. B-Hop fights and compared to an Andre Wolf fight, it's completely different, bro. So miss me with that. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, that's your opinion. Not, we can't not, be mad at his opinion, y'all. Facts, you can't be mad at the man's opinion. Facts, facts. Yes, yes, yes. No, that ain't no, facts. Because B-Hop is dirty as fuck. B-Hop is my favorite fighter behind the Roberto Duran. It's 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 that's skill. That's that's a skill. The, uh, oh, the way I'm about a savvy brawler, bro. Ain't nobody in boxing yeah. you know how can skill set to this day, bro. We talking about skill set. We talking about counter punching. We talking about walking down. We talking about both hands. But no, I can do the most accuracy fighter. We talking about. Shoulders, we talking about elbows, we talking about headbutts, we talking about Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins did what he did, man. We don't even compare that to an Andre Ward, bro. Two different cloths, bro. It's it's not it's not discrediting them. It's just the science. That's part of the science, bro. That's part of the science. You you understand the range of Bernard Hopkins was a a most effective cleaner. We talking about when it getting dirty, bro. We talking about getting dirty. We're not not intentional dirty, bro. Did you get that though? And compared to Andre Ward, completely two different uh, skill set and fights, he can never compare. Yeah, but he, you know, B Hop couldn't deal with Marvin Hagler. You understand what I'm excel, saying? That's all I'm excel, saying. Excel, Hagler, excel, Hagler was a, 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 a specimen. You understand what I'm saying? So they have to, they got to get it out of here. Go recap. Go recap. I watch me. That's my favorite. That's my second favorite fighter. Durant's my favorite fighter. And this B Hop. Go Ray Robinson, Durant, B Hop. Favorite fighters. I, I studied it. I studied it. All I'm saying, I'm not, oh, you're taking yeah, it as like a just, you're taking it as I'm describing B Hop, but it's part of B Hop style, bro. Excel what? Huh? Excel what? Style. Style. B Hop style came with a lot of, that was his advantage that he understood boxing. He knew if that rap was on my left side, I'm going to tuck my shoulder in, I'm going to punch Corey in his damn nuts. And that's what he did. He, 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 he knew what he did. When it comes to B Hop, bro. So Andre Ward. It's always if you're not if you're not seeing your punches, then that's a problem. He saw his punches. B Hop wasn't no dumb fighter. He was very intelligent. He knew what he was doing. It's part of the box. I'm not Andre Ward to a Bernard Hopkins, bro. Never in life did you do that. Period. JFL. JFL. I know you, I know you hear me, JFL. Top, name your top, name, 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 your, name your, your top five fighters of all time. Ali is a list, bro. I go by error, whatever you want. Just all time, five. Take all five time. All time. All time. All time. Top all time. Five. I got all the legends, bro, in that era. Ali, Tyson. See, it's a list, bro. It's an era list, bro. You know what I mean? So that's what it is with me. Here, I'll give you five. You got Holyfield. You got Hagler. You got Floyd. Okay. What you talking about? Triple go. Yeah, I mean, but but they, they my fighters. You know, them, 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 you them, them the ones I like. Ignore, go, go, ignore go. him. You have to, Who's you your list? Who's your list? Be nice. You ain't finish your list. I got hope. Holyfield, Mayweather, Hagler. I'm gonna say and them last two. Uh, they always fluctuate for me, but as of right now, I would say want to say Ward. Mm. 
And I'm going to say form. What about okay. you, Mike from Boston? Mike from Boston. Mike. Um, I'd say um, i go Larry Holmes. Uh, I'd also go Lex Lewis. i go uh, Floyd Patterson. I'd go... Uh, who else we got? Uh... Manny Pacquiao, absolutely, and uh, Marvin Hagler. His top five nice triple goals. What's the question? What's the question? Favorite, your top, your top five favorite, your top five fighters of all time. Favorite fighters or the best? Your top five of all time. My my top five best fighters of all time, or my top five favorite fighters? Just either, either or. or, either or. Same thing. Well, the best. So, if you go with the best fighters, you have to put Mayweather, uh, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, damn, Sugar Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather. Damn, you know. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, damn. Uh, so many fighters. I say Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler and uh, damn Roberto Duran. What's that, Roberto no. Duran? That's a free Mom, you gonna go show me? Yeah, I go. Ali, Sugar Ray Robinson, Marvin Hagler. Thomas Hearns. Mm. Mike Tyson. That's a good list. They all good list. I got Ray Robinson, Duran, B Hop, Hagler, Joe Lewis. B Hop gotta be in there. I probably got it today. I take so Roberto so Duran off. I take Roberto Duran off my list and I put B Hop. But hey, my top five favorite fighters now. My favorite fighters is a different list. My favorite fighters will be uh, Bernard Hopkins, Marvin Hagler, uh, Muhammad Ali. Hey, it's almost the same. Muhammad Ali, uh, Evander Holyfield. Holyfield will be on that list. And uh, Larry Holmes. Put Larry Holmes in there. Yeah, it's, it's not. I, I, the reason I said your, your top five is um because if you take all. because. The fighters from then, like all time, in your opinion, you know, could make a perfect fighter. You know, and that's how fighters are today. That's how I say with like with basketball, all they did was study the Dr. J's and Kareem's. And you know, and that's how we have the, uh, that talent today. These guys are basically doing all the stuff that one great did in the past. When we saw Magic Johnson doing something, they had to study Magic Johnson. Now all these players that they really have, you know. So what Joe Lewis did, you know. Now, over the years, now all fighters, they ever, most, 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 most fighters, you know, they ever met that into that game. You know, what Ray Robinson did, they took those, they studied him, and the trainers, they ever met that into that game. You know, so these guys pioneer. It's all, it's, it's no right or wrong. You know, it's just a pain. You know, um, Mike Boss, he's the first person I've uh, seen put Floyd Patterson in the top five. Wow, that's a, that was, that was, that shot. Look at Ja'Shawn yeah, Brown's I, list. I had never heard that. <laughs> Look that at Ja'Shawn Brown's list. Ali, Mayweather, Ray Robinson, Pernell Whitaker, Henry Armstrong. That's a good list. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of awesome list. this era. Top five of this era. From our era. Go ahead for H. H Money, go first, H Money. This era, damn. You gotta go Mayweather and <laughs> Mayweather, you gotta probably put Pacquiao in there. Pacquiao gotta be in that moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Pacquiao's done eight division world champion. Uh, Bernard Hopkins got to be in there. Tyson Fury got to be in there. And uh, I would say, uh, I would say, damn, who am I missing? Got to gotta be one of them uh, Chavez. Put Chavez in there with it. Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. He got to be on that list. How about we going back? I will put I will put Mayweather, 
War. You got Mayweather, War, Pacquiao, Canelo. Yeah, Ward. I got to put Ward on my list. Take out Chavez. I got Ward on there. You right. Canelo and I would have to put Cotto. What What about Crawford? He ain't on there? Right now, just because he's not done yet, yeah, that, that's why I got him in there. But he's my favorite fighter of today. You think when his career is over, he will be on that list? For sure. Yeah. Depending on the fights that he gets. So, uh, uh, Hall of Fame-wise, Terrence Crawford or Andre Ward, who's higher on the list? Andre Ward. I would have to say Crawford. Right now, Andre Ward. I think Crawford. I mean, yeah, right right now, Ward, yeah, Ward is yeah, already yeah. in. Yeah. But yeah, he's already in. Yeah, who, you're accomplished right. more? who accomplished more? Would, it be, would you say Terrence Crawford, Crawford who's an undisputed yeah, Three division yeah, yeah, yes. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Crawford accomplished more. And, and he got more fights than him. Yeah. And when and when people try to pick apart Crawford's resume, I always point to Sugar Ray Robinson. You can and point it out. And I point Where? to Sugar Ray Robinson because Sugar Ray Robinson did not fight the best competition. He had solid competition, and some of them dudes were very good. But a lot of them guys in there wasn't shit. But he fought the guys that was there, right, D-Nice? He fought the guys that was there. And he destroyed them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, let me get, I'm going to get my list now. I'm going to get out of here, but I'm going to give you my list for this era. Right? And we do, we doing best fighters or our favorite fighters? Same thing. This is all the same. Your opinion, was, was, your opinion, your opinion, the best. The best your opinion, the best. your opinion, the best okay. could be all your right, favorite I'm, fighters. All right, I'm going. Uh, okay, so I'm going Canelo. I'm going Tyson Fury. I'm going Vitaly Klitschko. If you can consider him in this era, I think he's overlooked as a, as a fighter. Um. Uh, let's look at, um I think Triple G as well. I put on my list, and I would put uh, Lomachenko. In the last, in my opinion, for my list for the last twenty years, um, Floyd, Pacquiao, uh, even or I say Vladimir. I say Vladimir because he just recently retired, and he uh he knocked AJ down. He did a he did a, he, before he retired. He did he had a, a great performance. I put Vladimir. Um, at uh, B Hop, I mean B Hop, he, he was just he just retired for the last twenty years, so that's four. Yeah, he was just was, fighting recently. He did just fought yeah. Cole not too long ago. Then, and then and then I would say, uh, damn, um, shit, it's tough. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Ward. I'm gonna say Ward. I'm gonna say Ward. Tough. That's top five in that time. Yeah, last Ward got to be on that list. As far as heavyweights, I would say Fury got to be the best one. He beat Klitschko. You know what I mean? Klitschko was a champion for seven years. He was undefeated for 11 years at that time, and Fury dethroned him. You know, so I would say Fury got to be the best heavyweight since with uh, the Lennox Lewis days. You know what I mean? You, you think yeah, he yeah, thinks Fury? JFL, the, hold on, hold on. Off the Wilder knockout alone. Yeah. Hold on. JFL, top five of this era. Top five of this era. I'll see. Uh, I put Wilder. But Fury yeah. beat Wilder, though, JFL. You got to put Fury because he beat Wilder. You don't have that's to do list. nothing. It's his list, that's bro. That's his <laughs> list. <laughs> I mean, this is what I say, man. Uh, <coughs> undisputed is going to be undisputed, right? So I feel as though, you know, and no one gonna retire anytime soon. Not Fury, not AJ, not Wilder. It's still free smoke to give. And also uh ones who uh redeem themselves like Povetkin and and Dana White and, and everybody else, you know, they gotta step up to the plate. You can't uh, avoid ducking any more smoke. Everybody gotta mix it up and uh you know what I mean, and, and become that, that 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 real champ. But I know you know the two champ for me is still Wilder, uh period, and uh um, I see Wilder in the in the FA Java 
And you know, got Daniel Boyce out there and Fury and Ruiz and, and Pavekin and King and, and, and King Kong Ortiz. So, you know, but the list right now is still and and, and uh are still rearranging it, but I know Wilder's still that number one guy to this day. And shout out to each money, Mr. The Zone, Mr. Supreme, Ten Toes Down, uh Team Haney. Team Devin Haney. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, bro. And, uh, Shout out to the Terrence Crawford team. Shout out to Bo Mac. You know what I mean? I just got off the phone with Bo Mac. You know what I mean? So shout outs to him. Bo Mac, a yeah. real one, bro. You get, shout you out get to him. Okay. Are you getting an interview Talk with Bo Mac? I mean, I mean, we could try to set it up. We could try to set it up. You know, uh, we're working on something else. Uh, but yeah, I just talked to him. You know, and Bo Mac is a real one, bro. Shut the when I tell you the brother's real, real like you. You know what I mean? Like, he cool like the LA brothers, the OGs back in the day. You know, he's just a real one. And you know what they say? I'm telling you, real, real recognize, real, real recognize, real, man. So shout out to Terry Crawford, Bo Mac, man, for real. Appreciate you, Bo Mac. I want to say shout out to, I want to, say on, shout out to all, the, all the trainers, though. Shout out to all the trainers across the board. You know what I'm saying? And uh, up and coming contenders, too. Salute to everybody. H Money, I got to dip real quick. And uh, shout out to the chat smoke. You hear me? Hey, so, uh, so, hey, JFL, look. Wilder, he should have never hired Malik Scott, bro. They had a fixed fight with each other. I know you seen that. I mean, come on. We knew that was a fixed fight back then. And now all of a sudden, well, let me finish. Now all of a sudden, that's your trainer, and now that's your best friend. Now you just confirmed that you did a fixed fight with that man. That's how we know. That's how we know it was a fixed fight. We already had our suspicions back then. And now today it shows that's your best friend and your trainer, which confirms that Wilder had a fixed fight. And we're going to bring all day. that to the light. Since Wilder want to call people cheaters and Wilder to say, no, well, no, since Wilder want to call people cheaters and start, uh, you know, they want to do that police work, right? They want to do police work on Tyson Fury. Oh, Tyson Fury try to kill him. Tyson Fury needs to be in jail in all those lies and fire Mark Breland. Okay. Now let's talk about that big fight you had since you want to be pointing the finger. Now we point the finger I'll, I'll at the lies. I'll say this though. When he lied to you, JFL. No, no, he lied to you. He lied to the people, bro. He lied to me. I, I, I hear you what you're saying, bro. Here's what I'm saying. All I'm saying is this. That Wilder and Malik Scott, bro, that was a, uh, a right hand. That was a uh, Nah, he didn't even land a punch, bro. Hold on, hold on. Straight down the middle. Bro, I see oh, that my fight. God. A thousand times, bro. Bro, he ain't even touching, bro. It, it connected. It connected straight down the middle, down the fight. Now, if that's a fixed fight, uh, if you on quote, then I can say uh, Charlo and Rosario. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. All right, let, let me get my top five right quick. Let me get my top five while, while y'all going back and forth with the banter. Top five is this. This is the top five of this era. I got to give it to Floyd, number one, of this era. Manny Pacquiao, because he did great thing. Three is uh, Canelo. But no, I can't keep put Canelo in there because the semen ain't dry. Canelo still got work to do. Three is going to be uh, Cotto. Four has got to be Andre Ward. And number five is somebody nobody ever thinks about. But he was a bad motherfucker. Joe Calzaghe. Yeah, he was. I got a question. Um, so I, I like that you put Calzaghe in there. When Black... Vladimir, that's why I put Vladimir Klitschko in mind because how, how long he ranked. And uh and then his last show out, you know, was was what was it, like 2014, you know, and he and, and the performance he had, you know, <laughs> AJ, AJ was on the uh, a run, and then uh Klitschko got in there and he kind of he embarrassed him in a little bit, you know. That's when a lot of doubts came around for AJ. You know, right. I don't know. Nobody, nobody threw him. I think only oh, might be Vlad. He'd be he be Vitali in there, but I think Vladimir, like in the last 20 years, Vladimir Klitschko, he, he uh he, he yeah, was he was the man. They he controlled the heavyweight division. You absolutely right. But in my opinion, just, just my own opinion, his brother was better. Yeah, yeah, but did you see what Lennox Owens to the guy? Damn. <laughs> they fought that was a fight. That was a good fight. That was a good fight. Um, hey fella. Uh, I got a question for y'all, man. Earlier this week, 
Canelo Alvarez said that had he been in his prime, he would have knocked out a prime Floyd Mayweather. How y'all feel about that? Um, no. He's smoking dope. He's smoking dope. Because <laughs> no. he, he's, he's he's in his prime now, right? In his prime, he's at one seventy five. He's really he really belongs at one seventy five. Floyd's prime. He's like just too short. He's just you too know. short. I, I think I don't I, think there's I, any version of Canelo that beats Mayweather. No, I mean now. No. I mean I mean now uh, he, he would hurt. He would hurt. If he fought Floyd, the forty four year old Floyd, yeah, he beat him. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, 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 I think now, since we're saying Canelo and going into his prime or in his prime, it's not. It, it sounds. It sounds stupid in a sense because you, you're. He's judging his skill set at a higher weight class, where the speed isn't the same, and and I think the talent pool is totally different. You know, like his best chance of being Floyd, he, he didn't win. You know, but right now, again, his question should have been what he should have said. Well. Uh, me and my prime ought to be a Bernard Hopkins or a Roy Jones. Right. That's where you're. That's where your prime. Your prime is at 160, 168, 175. But he yeah, didn't say that. He said he, he, you know, he competing. He trying to again. He's lowering himself in a sense by trying to say me at one seventy five competing against a lightweight. You know, it just right. to show what kind of mindset he has. You know, this he's a mindset. bully. Yeah, he's a bully. Well, you let yeah, him I, I was gonna say let him chance. Let him chance. I saw that. <laughs> I, I saw that, Lady Chan. That's how I stole that Joe Calzaghe because I forgot about him. I stole that from you. But uh, the thing is, man, if people remember that fight, D-Nice, Floyd beat Canelo because he stayed in the pocket with Canelo and just made and just dodged shots. He just made a miss. He stayed right in front of him and made a miss. If you, if I'm... If you look at that fight and look at all of Canelo's fight, that'd probably be the only time you'll ever see Canelo back up. Because every time he tried to step back to get some distance so he could see where the shots was coming from, Floyd would step forward. He stayed on him and just made a miss. That's how he beat him. Floyd didn't overpower him. Floyd just made a miss and outboxed him from the pocket. In so the face. no version of Canelo beats Floyd. No version. The only reason, only reason I, only the only reason I disagree because he's him at it, he's just too damn big, you know. It, it, it just would be like now. I'm taking a Canelo right now at 175. I think it. I don't. I don't know, you know, because I'm. I well, can't, I mean, it's you got to. It's hard to compare. It's hard to compare. You got to consider yeah. that if if they fight, it would be no higher than 152. Because right. Floyd don't go no higher than that. So take and it for Floyd that. sets and Floyd sets the clauses. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, yeah, that's a good point. Because I'm I'm taking into consideration. Like I, I just he, he too damn big to be going back down, worrying about 147, 130. Like that. I, that I, I that ass with the man. Yeah, I expected him to say something like, "Well, in my prime, and uh, Roy in his prime was." You know, something like that. You know, or Jeremy, you know, Jeremy Clay, like these guys that's, that that have been up there at 175, 160, 168. The guys that you're really competing against now, you know, those guys who pioneered those upper weight classes, you know, and you still focused on the past. You know, Floyd, Floyd fucked them up real bad. Yeah, he did. H Money. He gone. D nice. I'm gonna ask you this because I ask it a lot. We gonna have a uh Fantasy fight right here. Give me your pick. Canelo Alvarez. Mike McCallum. Mm. I'm going to go McCallum. <laughs> I'm going to go McCallum. And, and I'm going to go McCallum based on McCallum's competition. But I don't think McCallum walks through Canelo. Which this way version way? of Canelo you... right here. I, I, yeah, yeah, I think it'd be a, I think it'd be a good fight. Which weight class? Uh, McCallum was best weight class for me was sixty. Yeah, he not, he might knock Canelo out. Um, Triple G stunned him. Um, he had him on the ropes. You, you not, and again, these Triple G is a a decent fighter, but he did not have these intangibles that Mike McCallum had. He didn't. He doesn't. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? That's why I said when Canelo said that back down at 135. You're talking about guys, James Tony and all these other guys. They're gonna knock Canelo ass smooth out, bro. You know, and, and the Triple G did all that without without the skill set that James Tony, Roy Jones, Michael Keller, and all these guys had. 
you know, they, they, they the punish Canelo. These those guys and, and they understand the boxing, the IQ, the power they had, and the endurance, all, all those factors they had. They had a tour. They had to beat the Pharrell Canelo, man. See, it's, and, and it, I, I could roll with I, I could roll with that if the first fight with Triple G was the only fight we had to go off. But in the second fight, he put it on Triple G ass. And Triple, Triple G didn't have shit for him. I don't know. That second half of that fight was embarrassing, man. Triple G came back and started punishing his ass. He caught him late in the rounds. I think, and Triple punish, G, he, 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 I he think punish is a strong word. <laughs> hey, D-Nice, how far you go back? Uh, well, as far as the boxing goes, shit, like... Yeah. Uh, probably early 90s. Okay, okay, both of y'all, you and you know, DJ is young, because I was going to hit you with this one. You may be a historian, though. I don't know. I'm going to hit y'all with this one. Marvin Hagler. Carlos Monzon, 160. I'm going Hagler, man. Monzon was, he was, Monzon was a motherfucker, man, but Hagler, <laughs> Hagler was different, man. <laughs> I think Hagler's will separated him from a lot of motherfuckers. You, you, yeah, yeah. damn near had to yeah. drag him out the ring. Yeah, you had to kill Marvin. But Monzon was, was a beast, though. Yeah, I think Monzon stops Canelo. I think Monzon yeah, prime, his prime stops Canelo. I do too. Juan Martinez, how 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 be cap? How's the channel cap? Juan Martinez, explain your point. That's a very strong. That's a strong idea, Juan Martinez. Shit, I think a prime Sergio Martinez beat uh, Canelo. Ooh. Ooh, that's a I tough one. I don't know. I don't know because Sergio wasn't that durable. He wasn't that durable, bro. Canelo's a beast, man. That body shot, that body attack is nasty. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Canelo probably would have broke his legs. He did. <laughs> he probably had <laughs> <laughs> He might have. You know, I can see Canelo I, folding him, bro. I say that because Canelo had trouble with moving. Great point. That's a yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. And, and Sergio gonna ball, move right? around. And, yeah, and and he got power. Yeah, that's a tough. Oh, that's that's a tough. That's a tough. That's, that's, that's that might be a fifty fifty. It come it come down to willpower. I would get at a fifty fifty. Yeah, that come down to will. Martinez was no joke. Okay, I'll give you another. One. I'm gonna give you another one. I'm gonna give you another one. I'm gonna give you another one. This is you say you from the mid nineties, right? The early nineties. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you another one. Terrence Crawford, Simon Brown, Crawford, Crawford. Brown was decent. I mean, Brown had ability, but Crawford, I think, is a special. I think once it's said and done, Crawford will be considered an all-time great. Yeah, I believe that too. But Simon Brown, Simon Brown was special though. Simon Brown was a fucking monster. He was. He was. He was a I, fucking I, just monster. Think, I think you got. I think you got great and greater when when you compare them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Facts. Facts. Yeah, when I think of Crawford, I think about the Sugar Ray Robinsons. And yeah, like, me too. It, it, it's, it's, it's wait, 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 wait. Now you're going a little bit too high now. <laughs> no, <laughs> sure. it's, 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 it's the only reason I, I, I've been studying when I study that's, when I that's I, how I, I praise, like, brother. I, when I study him, you know, when I go back into like um, you know, go back into the, the books and, and, the, and the tapes, and I study Sugar Ray Robinson, you know, everything about Ray Robinson, you know, um, Crawford has that 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 demeanor, you know. I haven't you rarely see fighters who carry that in them, you know. Since recently, you know, Miguel, you said Miguel Cotto, he made a name for himself, and he had that that grit, you know. And Crawford in today's times, he, he has it's so much about him that reminds me of Sugar Ray Robbins, you know. Like, you know, it's like when he get in there, he, he just becomes a different fighter, you know. Sugar Ray Robbins, he was adored by the public, you know, and it, 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 it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. It's, it's, if, you, if you go back, you know, you that's, that's Times I, mean, I was recently watching the documentary. The first person came in my mind in today's time that, that everything, damn it, everything about it reminded me of this this this, this legend was Terrence Crawford. You know, okay. Do, who who in here believes that uh, a Porter Crawford fight is as hard for Crawford as some people make it out to be? It's not. No. It's not. He stops. He stops Porter inside of nine. 
Inside and out. I think Crawford's toughest fight will probably be Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo, he he he. That's what that I mean. strong, hey, that's, that's what I said. That that in that fight, if Crawford was to go from forty-seven straight to fifty-four, I would have to pick Jamel Charlo. Yeah, that's 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 yeah, you know, and I, and I, I sat back and I thought about like now how great would it be for him to beat a Jamel Charlo? You know, it sounds good, but and that's the same thing for Jamel. I said he beat the pound for pound best guy in box. That's saying a lot about his skill set. You know, um, I think Crawford would have to take the. He, he would have I think to be the Crawford best would have to take the ward. Oh go, no! Go ahead, my bad. No, no, I, 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 you said say that again. Say that point again. I said I think Crawford would have to take the uh, Andre Ward approach to going to fifty four to fight Charlo. Like, Col- like I, Col- I don't Col- think he can muscle Charlo though. I don't think he could go no. inside with Charlo. I don't no, think no, he could do I, that. I, I ain't saying fight box, style. I'm, I'm, stay I'm, outside. Saying getting, I'm saying getting acclimated to the weight. I think he would need yeah. a few fights, right, before jumping straight in there with Charlo. I don't know. Um, I don't. I, that's, I, I thought about that. I thought. Hey, about hold that. on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. We got one in the chat, and that fight is coming up in September or October. Let me get y'all thoughts on this. Gilberto, Zerdo, Ramirez, Dimitri Bivo. Bivo. Yeah, Bivo. 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 I, I got Zerdo, homie. I oh. got Zerdo Ramirez. Oh. I got Zerdo Ramirez. He's too nice of a guy. He's a nice guy. <laughs> I, I saw him um, at that fight. I forgot which fight. He was back on stage. Yeah, with Vic Virgil Ortiz fight. He was talking to Virgil. He seems like a nice guy. You know, I don't want to underestimate him, but but Bivo, Please don't. Please yeah, don't. You know, Bivo Be- 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 just might have that just tenacity. It might just be tenacity when that fight. Well, you know that fight is coming up after you know Bivo fighting Saturday, and and Zerto is supposed to be his next fight after that. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I again. I I don't think too highly of B-ball. I think I, I prefer better be at that 175. How he's doing it, and what he's doing, and and Ramirez, Ramirez, Ramirez. I I know about him a little bit, but I haven't seen much that makes that, that pops out and makes me say, "Well, damn, he's great to take over." You know, like he's great to be the the best thing. The guy, you know, right, right, right. And I right, think right, right. I think Bevo has way. That's more in this bag, you know. You, you you can't sit there and expect to just go twelve, but I'll take your punch with Bevo in there. Yeah, Bevo got nice feet too, and he got power. Yeah, he do. Mm-hmm. I think Zerto would have stood a better thing. chance it, had it been Who? this fight they was fighting right now. Who said again? Did I, I think Zerto? I think Zerto would have had a better chance had he been fighting Bevo next. Right, right, right. Fresh in the division, twenty nine yeah. years old. I got you. I got you. Now, let me ask you about this one. Here's one from today. Here's one from today. Let's take the G-Man. Gerald McClellan. 160. Jamal Charlo. Damn. I'm going McClellan, man. Which McClellan? Which one? The G-Man. Gerald McClellan. Gerald McClellan. I I I don't know, man. Um. He can, he can lose. That's all I can say. He can lose. Well, Gerald McCullough beat the shit out of Jamal. Charles. He can. Oh, Gerald McCullough. <laughs> Gerald. Hey, Gerald, you so vicious, out. H. Gerald McCullough can be outboxed. Out, he has been outboxed before. Gerald McCullough has been outboxed. You know. Gerald McCullough. But uh, who? He's been outboxed. I don't know the name right off the top of my head, but he's been out by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nah, he got he got beat by uh, what's the name, Nigel Ben? He got beat, I think, once before that. But this dude was a Jimmy knockout artist. Charlo, Charlo ducking people right now. Like he, he don't want no smoke with Benavidez or Demetrius Andre. You know, Charlo been avoiding fights for a minute, so you gotta go with uh Gerald McClellan, dog who knocked out Julian Jackson. You know what I mean? A dude that was knocking people out cold, a vicious puncher, one of the hardest punchers of all time, bro. He would have destroyed hey, Charlo. Julian Jackson's been hey, out. Hey, by money. I, I think, I think Jamar Charlo missed his missed his flight with uh with Andre because he should have been in there with Andre this go round, and I think mm-hmm. he could have beat him. Yeah, he could have beat him, but he don't want to. He don't want to take a chance, though. That's the thing. 
That's the way it looks. I, I disagree, you know, because uh, and everybody knows I, I have Jamal, 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 Jamal Charlo never, pound for pound number three on my list. Hey, hey, Jamal Charlo. But guess what, though? Guess what, DJ? Jamal Charlo ain't never been in a 50-50 fight. He's been taking the easy route his whole career. He don't want to take a chance and fight somebody as good as him. You see, he, he avoided uh, Benavidez. Said Benavidez had to take a vaccine. He said he's a 160-pounder, and he the one that called him out. But right. you're willing to I, go fight Canelo, but you don't want to fight Benavidez. I understand those factors. I I, I just think Jamal Charlo, had, you know, I'm, I'm going to say Canelo is the best fighter within 160, 168. But I think Jamal Charlo is like one of the only fighters that can beat Canelo convincingly, uh, convincingly, and anybody in that weight class. I think Jamal Charlo might be the. Uh, he has an egg factor. To me, he has an egg factor, and he he has a higher ceiling. Okay, I got another one for you. Check this one out. You gonna love this one. Now this is prime for prime here at one fifty four. Jamel Charlo. John the Beast Mugabe. Mugabe knocks him out. Yeah. Mugabe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tony Hurst. Jamel Hurst. is a good fighter, though. He could be out boxed, though. I mean, Tony Harrison did beat him, but I don't know. I give Charlo a chance in that fight, though. I ain't going to lie. I take that back. I think that's a 50-50 fight because Mugabe been beat a couple of times. Mugabe only lost yeah. once and he retired, bro. But he got beat by – didn't uh, Terry Norris? But he lost twice. Him? He lost yeah, twice. He lost to Hagler and Terry Norris. That's it. Yeah, Hagler and Terry Norris. I yeah, know twice. On. Twice. You're right. Twice. And I, I, don't think, I don't think Jamel Charlo got in him what Hagler had in him to beat Mugabe. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. That's a fact. J J fact. Jamel, Jamel that's gets fact. frustrated. Jamel gets frustrated and he starts throwing punches that don't make sense, you know. Uh, we seen that with Tony Harris. He started trying to throw punches and they didn't make sense. Tony Harris just kept walking him down. Then uh, when he fought um that last fight, it's the guy man, Jason Rosario. We saw Jason Rosario had some success. You know, I, I Mugabe, Mugabe will take it to him. Yeah, I will have to pick Mugabe in that one. All right, I gotta go downstairs, but I'm gonna give you one more, then I'm gonna go on mute. I gotta do something right quick. At 154, let's go, Jamel Charlo. And terrible Terry Norris. Mm. Charlo. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm going Charlo. Charlo. I, I'm I'm just picturing that knockout from uh, Julian Jackson. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I see Jamel doing the same thing. Just setting him up. I, it ain't either be the right hand or a double hook. I just can't see it. Hey, do any of y'all in here think Spence goes down as an all-time great? No, it, no, hell Hell um, I'm saying I, when it's I, all I, said and done. He almost done now. Uh, that's just my <laughs> opinion. And, that, and people don't agree with that opinion. You know, Jamel Charlo <laughs> said he's retiring at 154. And I mean, he, he's going to hold those titles. Er, I mean, Earl's not moving up. So that means he's going to stay at 147. Now, honestly, picture Crawford being, if he fights Crawford, that's his last fight in boxing. I don't see mm. what's going especially when Crawford beats him. You know, he's going to have, he's going to yeah. retire. You know, um, it seems like he's, his focus is more so, you know, outside of boxing. I think he he, he came, he went, and certainly he'll go. But all time, I think he'll be respected, you know, especially if he, can, if he finally accepts the fight, Crawford. He'll be respected, you know, for finally making that fight. But um, as all time great, no. Yeah, I agree with that. Not, 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 on, his current, not, not on his current trajectory. And now, if he, he starts to switch it up in the future, then yeah, anything is possible. But as of right now, the the uh, the easy route plan, no, I don't see it. And that one fifty four, I think Lubin would be a problem for him at one fifty four. Oh yeah, Lubin did. And that's what I, I said. The same thing. I said it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of guys at one fifty four who you know just if if if, if uh, Sean Porter can have that much success, those guys up there who who are hitting way harder and and they can box that way better, you know. Sean Porter, then yeah, I don't see what Aaron would do at 154. Y'all alone going up at 160. No. 160, I, I think is 160, I think is ugly up there for, for Spence. Yeah, man, he get, man, I think he gets knocked. I think if he ever tries, I just can't see it. Because it is 
he, he spoke of going to 154, but when, then I understand that Jamel is not going anywhere. It's like, so what the hell are you going to do? You see what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, I give him credit, you know. You, you beat Cal Brook. You beat Sean Porter, you know. But this week, we still at 147. You're aging now. You've been in this horrendous car accident. Your clock is ticking down way faster than a tyrant's car because yeah. of the accident. That shit going way. It may not happen now, but as time goes by, that shit fuck you up. That's like if you, uh, they say if you break a bone, you always feel it. You know, they say if you put like metal plates and you feel this. You know, it, that stuff, it, it weighs on you. You know, you get a, a number of fights and accidents and stuff. Your body takes a toll. You know, and on top of the fact he's, he's still partying. And, and I have, I, I broke my whole left side up, punctured lung, torn aorta, shattered elbow, the whole nine. You feel that shit forever. Yeah, you know, you, you don't just bounce back as the same person. You know, that, that accident took some years out of him, you know. How That's many years, you may never know. You know, and I previously, I, I thought Crawford would have beat him Pope's at free accident. And now so post accident, I think it's it's even worse. It may be even even worse. I the Sean Porter fight can the, the Sean Porter fight really convinced me that Spence couldn't win. Oh yeah, and and the way he hyped it up, I thought it was, and everybody else in the world they say he was gonna knock him out. This and the third, Sean Porter would have been. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 Porter worked. You know, and in all honesty, I. I like what Keith Thurman did more so than what Spence did against Porter. And it's, 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 it's certain things Keith Thurman did. Um, I, I think out of all the guys that fought him, well, well, Brooke had the most success. Then they probably the Ugas, Keith Thurman, in my opinion, then Spence. You know? Okay. But it's, it's interchange. I think if you, if you think Spence had more success, I think people can say that. But I think Keith Thurman was like, he had him out on his feet, but he overbit him. You know, yeah, if he went over a bit, I think he'd have been the first person I got with Sean Porter. He had, him. he had him, and he over a bit, let him recover. He did not know cold. I think that I think that recovery was savvy on Porter's part. Oh yeah, that was that was pure boxing skill. <laughs> but uh, Thurman over a bit, grabbed hold of him, turned him, and he went back to work. You know, it's, a lot of guys don't have that grit. You know, so Sean, yeah, Sean Porter deserves all the respect. You know, I would have liked to have seen. I would have liked to seen Sean Porter got his rematch more so than uh, Danny Garcia versus Earl. You know, yeah, that's that, that's that styles. PBC bullshit. You know, any of you, any of you guys hip to uh Fandora uh, at one fifty four? Dude, you talking about that tall guy? He like yeah. six six. Yeah. Yeah. They were showing his highlights the other day, and he, he moves his feet. He, he's, he's pivoting, turning different angles. He's, he's actually very nimble for a tall guy like that, very nimble. You should call him the gazelle, uh, Sebastian the gazelle from door. He gets how he moves. He's very light on his feet. That's a fact. I, I think he might be a problem, man, if he if he pans up. Yeah, you know, he can only get better you know, or worse. Depends. Um, it'd be Unless a tough he fight. don't have a chance. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking of him against a Lubin. He has he has all the physical advantages. Um, but but Lubin's skill set was Lubin been in the game for so many years. I don't know how long Sebastian Fandor has been boxing, but Lubin, he dates back to the amateur days. So does Jamel. Um, and I heard I don't uh, even think Lubin would take that fight. You don't think so? No, nah, I think that's too too much risk. If if he if I don't know, I don't and know. That's I, not to that's not to say that Lubin. Wouldn't win because I would lean towards Lubin, but I don't think Lubin's team would take that fight because a loss to Fandora would be catastrophic at this point for Lubin. Oh yeah, that, that up and coming fighter beating him would be that's bad. That'd be it, Connor. Not it, but it discourage him. It could bring discourage. How long ago was the was the uh, Lubin knockout to Charlo? That was a minute ago, probably twenty nineteen. I think twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen. Twenty nineteen. And he's still bouncing back. Yeah, yeah. That, nobody. I, I did not expect that to happen. I thought I was, I, I was, I was back and moving in the fight. You know, you talked a good game. You showed a lot of confidence. But damn, when that first round, when he knocked him out, I said he may not recover from that. That was an insane yeah. knockout. Yeah, it was. You know, I still think he's a little gunshot when I watched that um, Terrell Garcia fight with him. You know, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, uh, 
He didn't show his best self. He, he was kind of hesitant on all fight. I, I felt the same way. I, I don't think he wants to experience that Charlo knockout again. Yeah, it's a, it's a, what's that? What's it called? You know, it's, it's Charlo. You know, that's I call it that. It's I call that shit the the A the A B syndrome. <laughs> yeah, that's that's something you just can't stop seeing. Every time a guy price, thank you he keeps saying it. <coughs> you can definitely set him up off of that. You know, but hopefully, you know, he 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 can have a great performance. Him and Rosario coming up. You know, the best man win. I, I think Rosario beats him. Though. For some odd reason, I think Rosario was just too too strong for him. I was leaning towards Rosario too. Yeah, Rosario, he, he just that dude. And the way he beat J Rock was insane. Yeah, I thought J Rock was going to beat him. Rock. Yeah, I, I was crushed. I thought I was rooting for J Rock. So he finally won his titles. You get to put on now hometown fight. Got a burst. Got whooped on. I would take J Rock over Lubin at this point. That's a tough fight. Yeah, J Rock can fight on the inside. He, 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 he can fight. Just haven't seen him in the ring. Shit, he had, what, he whatever, had only, uh, whatever happened to fucking her? He going to 160. Oh. He said he going to middleweight now. So he he chasing yeah. that uh Charlo. Yeah, man walking. Yeah, them guys don't play. And Jacobs, he talking about he want to fight Jamal. That's a fight he want to make. I think uh, Jamal lightweight intimidated by Danny Jacobs. I, don't, I, don't, I, I saw I saw the video, and I agreed at that point. But as time went by, and and, and how he was talking, this I don't know. After saying him against Canelo, I, I, I think Jamal knocks him out. I, I give Jamal the edge. I think he will not break Danny think- Jacobs off. I think Jamal beat him. I don't think he knocked him out, though. What's the guy that knocked? Um, Dimitri Pitrov. You know, I, I, I keep thinking that he's, he's possible to get guy. Say that again. When he lost to Pirov, um, uh-huh. the, the Russian, those flat, I always think about that fight and the setups. You know, um, it's... In the Canelo fight, if you can take some of his punches and a triple G and set him up and, and control, I don't know. I, I would say at least not. You know, I think he gets he has little lapses in fights. Uh, Danny Jacobs. I think it's possible. Did you did, did you think he uh Jacobs beat Triple G? Because I heard a lot of that. Hello? Anybody still there? He said, Jacob, did he beat Triple G? I, I, the, the narrative for a lot, well, I, I'm going to say it. The narrative of the LDBC was Jacob's won. I didn't think so, but I was just asking your opinion on it. Did you see at the end of the fight when he, when he was on the ropes and he looked like, damn, I'm glad I survived? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what let me know what Triple G won. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, every time I watched that fight, that let them look when he after the bell rang, he went to the ropes. He was like, God damn, Ooh, you know. I said, yeah, Triple G did yeah. Yes, he did. You, know, you, you can't do that after a fight. You know, you go to the ropes and you looking like, well, what the fuck did I sign up for? You know, it's boxing, motherfucker. Put your hands in there. Do something. At least my hands yeah. up. Mike yet every round he had his hand up. <laughs> right. God damn, Jacobs. Anybody that's listening, if you go back watch the Triple G versus Daniel Jacobs, you know, go all the way down to the 12th round, like the last minute. Jacobs, he he just falls in the ropes. He looks like he's exhausted, you know. And Triple G just walking off, calling like he's a champion. Like he he had nothing to worry about. Jacobs kind of just he, he didn't do him so many things. No, not at all. And I think up until the Canelo point, that was probably well, shit, besides the, his, his knockout loss, that, that might have been one of his toughest fights. Yeah, I, I, in all honesty, I think I think the Jacobs and Canelo fight was more of a money grab out of all the fights that we saw. Because I didn't... 
he was coming off the loss and he forced the same, he fought the same guys and Dre wound up beating, you know, and it, it was more of a money fight. You know, people said, well, he did this with Triple G. And in my opinion, I would have rather saw the fresher guy, uh, Jamal Charlo, have gotten that kind of little fight. Danny Jacobs, yeah, he, he, he did decently with Triple G, but, you know, it was like he, he wasn't proving that he deserved another title fight that, that fast, you know? Right. Because that, we had that Canelo my, fight, we, we saw what he was about. You know, he's bullshit. Yeah, that's a fact. My my biggest my biggest knock on Charlo <laughs> is he talked a good game, but he don't put himself in position to get those type of fights. Like, he calling out dudes at 168, but he fight at 160. He ain't moved up yet. I think a perfect path to Canelo would be if he would go get Caleb Plant's belt. She did, I, I, was, I, was, I thought that at one point, but um, just like how Billy Joe Sanders is, Saunders is, Caleb Plant, they, they, you know, Billy Joe Saunders didn't have, hasn't had any resistance leading up to that Canelo fight. And I, I, I feel the same way with Caleb Plant. They're not going to uh, jeopardize the O, because that's how was the fight with him and Canelo just for paydays. Um, it, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, I, he would never fight a Jamal Charlo or uh, David Benavidez, especially if Canelo, you know, he said, I pick you, you know, and he's saying he's on this undisputed path. You know, none of them guys, we see with Caleb Smith, you know, he was there and we never, all three of those guys, uh, Caleb Smith, damn David Benavidez, Caleb Plant, Billy Joe, they all had, they all were undefeated. Oh. They were all undefeated. They could have unified. You know, Canelo was just a regular champion. You know, right. and I, I never understood why none of these guys were pursuing uh, unifying the title. You know, but when Canelo comes there, then everyone wants to just unify with Canelo. You get what I'm saying? You know, right. it, you know, it's like they, a lot of guys that want to see they're just selling their belt off. You know, that's what it seems to me. They're selling their belt to Canelo. Yeah, yeah, because I don't. I, I never understood the Benavidez plant. Like that should have been the very next fight once Plant won his belt. Yeah, or 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 Caleb Smith. Caleb Smith was undefeated. Billy Joe had got the belt. David Benavidez and and uh, Caleb Plant. Four titles. None of them mix it up. But the regular champion wound up getting all these fights. That was crazy to me. Uh, only reason I say Benavidez and Plant because they with the same promotion. And when Plant beat Usatagi, Benavidez still had his belt. He hadn't lost on the scale yet. Yeah. And right now, if both of them sitting with two belts, I don't think Billy Joe Saunders would be next for the fight. No, I, I doubt Canelo would have even pursued on the speed. I think so he'd have stayed. You, he'd have stayed. He'd, he'd, he'd have been inactive. He'd have been inactive, or he would have tried to fight somebody at one seventy-five. We had never oh. heard a statement that he's too, he's, he's uncomfortable at one seventy-five. Because just bad. recently he said he probably would fight at one seventy-five. He, he's very uh, contradictory. See, yeah. I was thinking to the contrary. I think that on his current path, I think that whoever mm. had two of them belts would have mm. been next up. You, <sighs> I mean, we got to take into consideration. He was he was a regular champion. He beat Rocky Field. Then he went up to 175, you know, and he relinquished right. all his titles at 160, except for uh, the franchise title, the designation, the franchise designation. And then he went to 168, got the uh, regular title from Field, went to 175 for Kovalev, and he was inactive. David Benavidez had his situations, and then all of a sudden we got Kalen versus Canelo. And with Kalen Canelo, they put up David Benavidez's title out of nowhere, you know, I didn't understand. I didn't yeah, understand that's, that. That's crazy. You know, so that automatically just gave him two belts. They, they, they sold, they, they're, they're selling him the belts. That's all that's going on. You know, Plank, uh, Billy Joe, he, he had, he didn't have any resistance at 168. He could have fought Plant for his titles. You know, he was about to fight Andre in all these different uh, situations. But all of a sudden now, we just had Billy Joe versus Canelo for Billy to sell his titles. Billy Joe's not, he's not going to beat Canelo. Uh, I don't. I don't think uh, Caleb Plant is going to go in there with any uh, with any will to win. I think he's going to go in there for that payday. You know, mm -hmm. Benavidez. You know, I think Benavidez. He, he did himself a disservice. He lost yes, the title. He did. You know, yes, and 
You look foolish. You look foolish. You had you, you would uh, you could have been doing the same thing. If you didn't get Caleb Plant, go get Caleb Smith. Go get this guy. You know, but y'all let the guy come from 154, 160, get a regular title and dictate the entire weight class. That's exactly what's going on right now. Now I think we, yeah. we do got to give Canelo some credit though for the things that he's accomplished though. You know, he done some great things in the sport of boxing, moved up two weight classes to fight Kovalev. And at the time at the time Kovalev was the number one heavy uh, light heavyweight at that yeah, time. I, I, I got him pound for pound number one in my book. I got him number two to Terrence Crawford. I got Crawford number one and Canelo number two for me. I only um, got him over Crawford because of competition. I mean, uh, you got to give Crawford uh, credit for accomplishments. Undisputed, that's champion, that's undefeated, that's still, still undefeated. That's Dang, why I got Crawford number fight. two. That's, that's why I got Crawford number two. If if, think, if Crawford was a money man, he wouldn't he wouldn't be. be I, this is my outlook. I have Crawford that's number one because if he was if he was that money man, guys would be jumping in line to fight him. Yeah. they they wouldn't be scared to get their asses whipped. You know, no, they Canelo, they get you paid know, for it. You know, and that's I have number one due to that fact. You know, because he's being avoided. But Canelo, I, I I would have him at number two without you know. Minus my my opinion on, on how, like, the, the, uh, all the issues he's had, you know, it's in the change. You know, if you if you it, it's how you look at. it. I think it's all on your outlook, you know, because Pacquiao still. If we, we want to throw Pacquiao on there, we can because he he beat a very he had he, he had a very good recent win in the last well two years, you know. Right. He's been inactive. Quee Thurman ain't been back since. He he's a disappointment. And I, was, yeah, yeah. I, I thought he was going to beat Earl. In all honesty, I, 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 when I saw the Cal Brook fight, I was like, he beatable, you know. He could be beaten. You know, you, you got to adjust. And one thing about a lot of U.K. fighters, they, they, I'm going to throw Josh, Josh Taylor in there as a U.K. fighter. I think he's, in, that, in a sense, probably one of the most versatile in a long time. Um, but Cal Brook, he, he, he does what most U.K. fighters do well, that one-two, you know, and, and that's that's that grit and butter. They, they, they all kind of robotic, most, most UK fighters. They don't really, all of them don't have that it factor. Josh Taylor is probably one of the many fighters besides Joe Calzaghe to kind of be in that UK area to come and, and be so dominant. I mean, Tyson Fury. What about Tyson Fury? Below, below heavyweight. I'm going to say below heavyweight. <laughs> he ain't done enough, H. He ain't done enough yet. He ain't I mean, done enough yet. one guy. He, he, he ain't done enough yet. He ain't I, done I enough see, yet. He, he I did see enough. Fury he defend his belt. He, he ain't never just, defended the belt, he H. He's, he's never defended the belt, H. He's never defended the belt, H. He's never he's defended the belt, H. He's number one guy. He beat the number one He's never defended the belt, H. That's all. How many times we got to say it? He never defended the belt. Wilder defended his belt ten times, and people don't give him credit. He beat I mean, I'm a true boxing fan. I'm a true I'm a boxing, boxing fan. Age. I see through the smoke of Wilder. I see through that shit. I bro, know who he, he beat. The number one he guy. beat he nobody. Credit, bro. You can give him all the credit you want. I know what Wilder I mean, is. Wilder, I know what he was and I know what he is. And I mean, you, you put really him in. By, you put him in with some stiff competition. He's gonna have trouble. I know it took, what really. to do it. it took a special fighter to do it. You can't say Anthony Joshua is going to be able to do that. Come on, bro. Joshua got They never Ruiz. fought, bro. They never Joshua fought. Joshua got beat by Ruiz, a guy who never beat nobody. Ruiz will probably beat Fury, bro. Ruiz probably, will probably, probably beat Fury. Probably. Yeah, I can't. Crazy, I can't. On, if Ruiz, yeah, yeah. if Andy Ruiz in shape gets, gets inside on man, anybody bro. in the heavyweight you division, he beats him. As you telling me, probably. We know Andy Ruiz never beat a top 10 heavyweight in his career. Brother. He came in on a five-week notice and beat Anthony Joshua. Now, if Ruiz, Andy Ruiz, he's this he's is my him. opinion, so you can't shape it. This is my opinion, so you can't shape it. I, I don't this is my opinion, so you can't, you can't shape it. You can't shape it. I don't agree. You don't have to agree with it. It's not yours. You don't have to agree with it. 
I'm don't telling you, if Andy Ruiz gets excuses. inside on any heavyweight in the division, he'll probably the beat them. But at the end of the day, Tyson Fury's undefeated. Joshua got beat by Andy Ruiz, who beat nobody. Keep it real. Andy Ruiz ain't beat nobody and beat Anthony Joshua on a five-week notice. You can you can tune this horn all you want. I would pick Andy Ruiz over Bob. Bro, Wilder only lost to Tyson Fury, bro. Yeah, I and Tyson think, Fury I think the Wilder. best heavyweight. And who else did he fight? At least Wilder. And who else did he fight? And who else did Wilder fight? Come on, bro. AJ got the who biggest. Who else did he upset, fight? The biggest upset in the history of boxing. He led. Who Butter else did Wilder who fight? Knock him out, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. That's your opinion. Ruiz, huh? so AJ, AJ just doesn't have that uh, chin. Um, what's his name? Joseph exactly. Parker. He went. He went you know, well man. with um, Parker. And when uh, when um, AJ Parker ben fought down. AJ, he was having some success. I think the ref, the referee in that Joseph Parker fight was trash. Um, Joseph and AJ Parker got the amateurs a couple of times, I think. <laughs> and then the white made easy work of uh, Joseph Parker. Now he got dropped in that fight by Joseph Parker too, though. So you can't say that Joseph Parker dropped him. Yeah, Dillian White also hurt. Uh, he he crushed. Uh, Dillian White AJ got dropped Rebus by Oscar Rebus, Rebus too. Let's not forget Oscar Rebus dropped him too. He almost got knocked out in that fight. All right, y'all. Look, give me your top five UK fighters of all time. Top five: Lennox Lewis, Lennox Lewis, Prince Nassim Hamed, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, uh, Frank Bruno. Good. Oh, good. Good list. Uh, Joe Kowalski, nah, Joe Kowalski. Take out Frank Bruno, yeah. put Joe Kowalski. D nice. Lennox Lewis, Kowalski. Lennox Lewis, Kowalski. I'm gonna go Josh Taylor. Mm. Ah, want to say Kale Brook and Tyson Fury. Okay. DJ. Um, Lennox Lewis, Calzaghi, Calzaghi. Is Carl Frock from the UK? Yep. Yes, he is. Carl Frock. Um, uh, I'm going to say uh, Eubank. I'm going to say Eubank Senior. I was watching him last night. I'm going to say Eubank Senior. I don't think he gets enough credit he deserves. Eubank Senior. And um, I'm trying to think of... Uh, um, the guy that uh, the guy that I see, what do you, the guy that Durant beat for his belt? Oh, Kimby Cannon. Does he fall in the UK? Does he fall in the UK? Yeah, Kimby Cannon. Kimby Cannon. Lisa, what's up, Lisa? Hey, how's everybody? <laughs> how's how's Lisa? Lisa? Hey, Lisa. Yeah, top was, five UK was, fighters all time, Lisa. Oh, um, <laughs> um, I got Nigel Payne. Mm, the Dark Destroyer. Lennox Lewis. Uh, Kalzaki is UK because that's Wales, right? Yeah, yep. UK. Um, let me think. Uh, that Kent Buchanan. That's a good. That's a good choice. That's a good one. Yeah. And um, I'll say him too. And um, let me think. Um, what about Chris Eubanks Jr.? I mean, senior. Yeah, they brought okay. him up already. That's a good one. That's five. That's five. My top He's five are. My top five are. The Dark Destroyer, Nigel Ben. Yeah. Chris Eubanks Sr. Uh huh. Joe Calzaghi. Yeah. Kim Buchanan. Mm -hmm. And somebody before all y'all time. Sir Henry Cooper. Damn. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's part of Ali. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good look. That's a great look. <laughs> that's just no doubt. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I refuse to say Alan Mensa after that. Uh, uh, he was good. Happened. I had to beat Alan Mensa. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he was good. He was good up until he wasn't. 
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's good until he ran into Marvin. But did y'all know that it took Marvin forty eight fights to get a shot? Yeah, yeah, I was just yeah. I was just looking at that documentary. It took him forty eight fights just to get a title shot. He was forty six and two. They didn't That's even want to crazy. His name. <laughs> the government got involved. Yeah, they, they had to they had to make them guys acknowledge him. Robert Kennedy. Yeah, no. Robert Kennedy got him a shot. <laughs> yeah. That's sad. It's really sad. Such a great. Yup. Well, I'm glad people finally acknowledged his greatness, you know. Yeah, they didn't have a choice, Lisa. Everything. They didn't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah, H, we we can't put Tyson Fury in there. The, the cement not dry yet, H. He still got work to do. Yeah, I want to see him get off a little more. But ladies and gentlemen, I have to roll. H, money. I'm definitely going to tap back in. You people have a good night, man. Salute. D nice. Right. Salute, brother. You too, D right. nice. You too. Now I was gonna say, uh, who was that that said uh Joseph Parker knocked down Joshua? Who was that that said that? I have no idea. I don't remember that. You remember that? You remember that, uh DJ? <laughs> DJ, you remember that? You remember uh, Parker knocking down uh, jo uh, Anthony Joshua? Do you remember that? You can hear me? Yeah, I got you. Can you no, I can hear you. Um, no, he did not know Anthony Joshua? Yeah, he never did that. No, he did not know Anthony Joshua. I think he said Billy and White. No, no. It AJ was uh, Billy and White. Yeah, I was going to say um, that fight was um, like, I don't know, like, because nobody ever knocked him down. So, you know, he seemed to have a pretty good chin, Joseph Parker. Well, we going to find out Saturday night, Lisa. Yeah. Who was he fighting? Who was he fighting? Chisora. Chisora. Yeah. He a, good, he a good boxer though He's a good boxer But I don't know it just seemed like he just Hadn't been fighting good competition Who uh, 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 Parker I wouldn't say he has a face I think he just can't get over that hill he Can't get over that hop um, He lost him losing to uh, White And um AJ, he kind of put a push, it pushed him back. But he should, he should, uh, he should hopefully make easy work with Chisora because Chisora comes in wild. But, uh, yeah, Chisora, he don't want to go down. Hey, but uh, you can't forget about you know Prince Nassim Hamed. You talk about UK fighters. He only had one loss to Marco Antonio Barrera, and he wasn't even stopped in that fight. He was yeah, Prince was a bad boy. Prince was yeah, a bad boy. Prince. Yeah, Prince yeah, was like a bad boy. Yeah. yeah. I think Prince was like a top five on that uh, UK list. Tyson Fury, of course. Joe Kawasaki, Anthony Joshua. You know what I mean? These guys deserve to be on that list. You know? Ooh. You know who else deserves to be on that list? Yeah, of course. UK got some no, good heavyweights. Now, I put the mother before you name H. That's just my opinion. Some of those other people. Like who? Like, uh, like uh, Shelton mentioned, like uh, uh, fuck, what was his name? You ain't saying it. You, you yeah, those your, people uh, ahead of lowest. them. Yeah. There's, there's, there's some guys that had uh, some tougher, I'll say tougher, it, their legacy kind of uh, it's in itself. Very, yeah. very, very has a ways to go. Which you know, yeah. he can and they, he and and they, both. they he all got Chisora. a while ago. Well, I'm saying yeah. Tyson Fury knocked out Deontay Wilder. He dominated Vladimir Klitschko. I thought he beat Wilder twice, you know, and, and on top of that, he beat Chisora. You know what I mean? He's going to fight Wilder for a third time. Then he's going to smash uh, Anthony Joshua. Like, I think Tyson Fury is the guy of this era, especially in the heavyweight division. 
He I hasn't mean, done like enough, he, though. But he hasn't done enough he, yet. He, he hasn't done enough Lennox Lewis said Tyson Fury be his toughest fight out of all of these heavyweights. He said Tyson Fury is the, the toughest one. You know, that's what Lennox said. Well, I'm not preordaining nobody before. They got to put it's the work time. Well, you, are, you know, who? So you, you know, said who before Tyson Fury from the UK? Let's talk about it. I, Lennox okay. Lewis. I, Lennox, Lennox Lewis. Lewis. Okay, Chris I Eubank never mentioned senior. nobody from today. Nah, been. So, who yeah. did Chris Eubank say you beat for him to be passed He's above Tyson Fury? He, he may have been probably one of the best calm, I'm going to say calm and well boxed for him. Exactly. Like, this he, is, we're talking about a world champion. Two world heavyweight world champion Tyson Fury who had every belt. Wait, wait, let me say this. He had every belt in the heavyweight division. He had every belt, every all four belts, lineal champion, two-time ring magazine. So what has Chris Eubank Sr. do to be above Tyson Fury on that list? All right, so that's a, that's a great point, right? That's a great point. Tyson Fury won his belt against Trisco, uh -huh. and he won his belt Deontay against, yeah. against yeah. Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Right? So, so what did Chris Eubank do? His, his career is still – his career is not over with. See, yeah. I, I don't I – don't, um, when I look at fighters, I look at, like – I mean, when you when you um compare their careers, I look at like afterwards, like when they retire. But I That's think right I now think. Tyson Fury has accomplished more than Chris Eubank Sr. already throughout his early career. Do you think he's accomplished more than Nigel Ben? Uh, Nigel Ben beat Gerald McClellan. He beat some good guys, you know. But I mean, Tyson, not, Nigel Ben never had all four belts in his weight class. He never did that. Yeah, he never was a two-time I mean, lineal champion. No, he never was two-time ring magazine champion in his weight class. So you were still, yeah. Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder, the number one fighter in his uh, weight class. He beat Klitschko, the number one fighter in his weight class twice. So what has Nigel been? Did he did he do that much? Did he beat the top guy in his weight class twice? Yes or no? Again, if you so again, we that's that's kind of like discrediting. Tyson Fury. That's what you mean. Like. I'm not. It's, that's, You're that's, overrating that's, him. That's fine. When he that's, hasn't that's, done that's enough yet. Yeah, he, he's beating Klitschko. He's beating Wilder, but that's it. You know? Whoa, and when Derek he, it's, Chisora it's always, twice? It's Derek always, Chisora? Uh, Derek Chisora, bro, was dealing with so White. Before there was I a Dylan White, it was Derek Chisora. This is the to beat Derek Chisora. Come so on, bro. That bullshit has just came out and beat Derek Chisora. Bro, I'm talking about he beat Chisora when he was young and undefeated. Tyson Fury knocked him out. He the first person to beat him. So you putting Tyson Fury yeah. in the same class as a Larry Holmes? Yeah, that's that's. No, what, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. that. Okay, that's what that. you're saying. I'm not you're talking so about one of the greatest fighters about ever. In I didn't say that. He That's what we're talking about, though. We're talking, talking, talking about all time great. He's talking about all time great. He's an all time great. He's an all time great, but he's not Larry Holmes. No, he is not. He's, he's under Larry Holmes. I would say I would put him under he Larry. He's not an all time great. He's he, under Larry he's Holmes a, for sure. I don't but, think he's better than uh, uh, Spinks. You honest. think he's better than Ken Norton? Yes. I don't think he's better than Spinks. <laughs> yes. I don't think he's better than Spinks. Those dudes fought everybody. He ain't you know, fought everybody. That's all I understand. How he's how he's put up on his pedestal. I'm not buying it. Because he beat the top guys of his era. That's all. And the era is shit. No, it's not. <laughs> now you discredit this all the era. Heavy, 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 you just the discredited the whole itself. era of fighters. <laughs> Come on, Shelton. This heavyweight heavy, heavy heavy era heavy is shit. The heavyweight oh heavy division is, is a little terrible. The era is the skills, shit compared the to the movie. Not Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua. Vladimir Klitschko, these are great heavyweights. We discredit and fighters. You don't put none of them in the credit, even Look, Vlad. If I if drop, if Vlad. you drop, Doesn't if you matter. drop Vlad AJ in the 90s, how does he, he do? He was a champion when Fury beat him, Lisa. Fury was better. How does he do, AJ? Okay. Say it again. If you drop AJ off in 1991, how does he do? 19, 1991? Yeah, how does he do? He do pretty good. Get that man he a beats, pillow. He beats he's going field? to sleep. Eh? AJ is a good fighter. I, I always give AJ his credit. He's a good fighter. Can he beat Holyfield? Does he field? beat Holyfield? It's possible. Does he, he beat Riddick Ball? Ball? He had better training. Yeah, I think now, he was. I, I wouldn't say he beat Riddick Ball. Now, Riddick Ball. Does he beat Riddick Lewis? Yeah. I think he was better when he didn't I have mean, the muscle mass. 
Uh, Rockman beat Lennox Lewis. Lennox Does Lewis? he beat Lennox Lewis? I asked you about Rockman. I favor Lennox Lewis though. I keep it real. I will favor. Does Lennox. he beat Mike Tyson? It's possible. He, nah, no, I, I, go, so. I go. I mean, Mike it, Tyson he can. I'm a. I mean, Mike Tyson, Tyson was a Tyson, Tyson, Tyson was much smaller. Tyson was small, bro. He could beat Tyson. Um, Does he famous? beat Razor Ruddick? Nah. <laughs> you know he beat Razor Ruddick. He could have <laughs> said David Tua. You got AJ. It's. It's certain Joshua Kabaki. Um, that's he, that's he, he, that's uh, Joshua right, but he not, he's not my favorite, that, but I'm not that. but I'm Does he beat Tony Tucker. Up to I, those guys. Listen, he got a, these guys. I'm they sorry. Don't have listen, that look, I think he got a chance to beat a uh, Holyfield, and he got a chance to beat Mike Tyson. But he, I don't think he could beat Lennox Lewis. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think he could beat Riddick Bow either. I don't, don't think he beats any of them. Carlos Tackham, Carlos Tackham, Carlos Tackham hung in there with Ronnie. Remember, these guys, man. Holyfield was cruiserweight, though. Remember, he was a small heavyweight. So he got a Holyfield, chance. Holyfield beats every heavyweight of this era. Every Holyfield one of them. was my favorite fighter. So, I mean, he was my yeah, favorite. So, he was so, a cruiserweight, though. He did if, come up with cruiserweight. Everybody. If he Carlos Tackham... But, but he said, who you think wins? Holyfield or AJ? No, AJ way bigger than him. That doesn't equate to boxing skill. AJ can box. He a gold medalist, bro. He can box too. He can box. We, we, can we box. don't see that in the we don't see that in the ring for real. You I mean, seen it against again, Andy Ruiz in the rematch. I, I don't. You don't, I don't, see I, don't that in the ring. I thought less so. You seen that in the Andy Ruiz I, I rematch, saw bro? Andy Ruiz beating hell out of him a little bit. But what about in the rematch? He boxed. He changed his game think, plan. I didn't think much of it. I didn't think highly of the rematch. I didn't see what I wanted. Oh, he broke. He broke every round. I, I, you can you, we can say that right, but I I it's nothing that well, he did in that rematch. That, that we we, I don't we think that same class. So we dropped him off in nineteen ninety one. He do that same stuff. He get mm -hmm. knocked out because it's the well, who the hell was Andy Ruiz in that fight? You see, what I'm saying again, we, we we just putting that he won, but we're not putting that in the content. The content was Andy Ruiz with like a, a beluga whale, and and he didn't do that. <laughs> he was out of shape. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we put in, we put in a holy field that knocked out Michael Moore in the tenor. second fight. We yeah. put the, the holy field yeah. that for Riddick Bowe every fight. This these guys these guys really can't compare. Tyson yes, Fury, he's, 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 he's trying. Right I think it's I not, think the heavyweights of this era need deserve more credit. Wilder deserve more credit. AJ and Fury. This era, this is a great era of heavyweight boxing. Seriously. You okay, same question, same question. If you drop Deontay Wilder off in of 1990, who does he beat? He he could be Holyfield. He could. Uh, he oh could my be God! Tyson. Cut he could be Holyfield and Mike Tyson. Cut it out. Uh, he could. Break. AJ could do the same thing. AJ could beat Mike Tyson. AJ could beat Holyfield. <laughs> this, it would never be a day. Mike Tyson got beat break. by Buster Not, Douglas. I, I don't know why y'all acting like Mike Buster Tyson. Buster Douglas might break one of. I hope everybody on this panel keep the same energy and um and um compare there's only one heavyweight that retired undefeated and that's Rocky Marciano. Okay. And Ty Tyson Fury whoop his ass too. I don't but know. that's Marciano, not what I'm saying. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all not understanding what I'm saying. Y'all holding right. them fighters for all this because they had a loss here or a loss there. So y'all got to hold them, them to the standards of Rocky Marciano then, which is ridiculous. I, I don't. And I don't. Again, I, I, I personally see Rocky Marciano. He probably can go down as probably one of the best light heavyweights if we're using today's. um. Yeah, metrics. you know, yeah, 175, he kills everybody. Yeah, he kills yeah, everybody. He's probably the greatest bro, light heavyweight, but not heavyweight. Bro, Holyfield was my favorite change. fighter. He was my favorite fighter, but he's a small heavyweight. He got beat by Michael Moore. Remember that. I'm That's, telling you, Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua could beat a Holyfield. Easy. Well, let me finish. Let me finish. And let me finish. Anthony Joshua could be Holyfield, and Anthony Joshua he could be Mike Tyson, who got knocked out by Buster Douglas. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. I, I think I don't I think, see that. Yeah. All right. So I what happened so. in that? What, Joshua what happened in that? What, what happened in that second fight with so, Holyfield? I would say this: there are fifty-fifty fights in them. Those are 50-50 fights. AJ versus Holyfield, 50-50. AJ versus Mike Tyson, 50-50. I think Wilder the same thing with those guys. Tyson Fury, I think Fury beats those guys. Beats them. I think Tyson Fury yeah. beats Riddick Bow. I think Fury beats Lennox Lewis too. Oh. Riddick Bow. Oh my lord. Yes. Kidding me. H Money, you need to get you need to yes. go go in the room, throw some tapes on, go to you. 
Man, stop bro, I watch it. boxing and nonstop. He can't, man. Fury. He not like Lennox that, Lewis man. got He's beat by like Hussein Rockman. Lennox Lewis got knocked out by Oliver McCall. That doesn't matter. Lennox Lewis got knocked out by Oliver McCall. Those, those guys, 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 and hey, so Hasim Rockman would knock out Tyson Fury. Hell no! Oh hey, my God! Hey, you know, Hasim Rockman, Oleg bro. Moskov knocked out Hasim Rockman out the ring. Well, Oleg Moskov knocked him out the ring. Hasim Rockman. In 1990s, Hasim Rockman knocks out Tyson Fury. Hell no! Even Tony uh, Tucker. Wilder Tony Tucker, knock Tucker him out. knocks Let's out go, Tyson Fury. Knock him out. Nobody knocked out Tyson Fury. Nobody. The hardest thing in the of all time. Yes. Deontay Wilder couldn't knock him out. Nobody knocked him out yet. H, you talking about all right, skill for skill, H. Listen to this. Fury, bro, boxers today do not put it. their punches together the same way the fighters bro. in the past did. Bro, if you go Mike back Harris, and watch David Tua versus Ike Babu, Ike Babu, Ike that was probably the last time we saw fighters putting punches in combinations together and not yeah, getting tired. Yeah, yeah. These guys yeah. are so... They're not in the same class of, of, of athleticism. There's nothing they can do because with them guys. The, uh, the training, they don't have the, the the trainers like they did back then. See, the heavyweights <laughs> has to be trained different from the other fighters. It's a whole different style of training for them. You can't train them like a welterweight. It's, they're different, you know? Well, Joe nice. Frazier said in his documentary, when he used to spar for a fight, he would spar every fight, 35 three-minute rounds with a 30-second break in between. That's how he got ready for a fight. Mm-hmm. Them guys were, were monsters. <laughs> like, and Tyson Fury, he's, he's, he's good. Right. AJ's yeah. good. They, they're good in their, in their retrospect and today. If you take the skill set and athleticism of the guys from 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 Ken Norton, Ernie Shea, you just drop them off right now, and you give them the same all the technology they had. These guys would kill half these fights. They literally kill. Oh, no, no, That's how they put their punches together. People thought Wilder was gonna kill Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury did what Muhammad Ali did. He shocked the world. You remember what Muhammad Ali said? Nah, I'm, I'm finna. Go. I'm off. I'm finna go. I'm finna go. No, I'm finna go. I'm finna go. You put serious the same breath without me. I'm going. You can't. 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 Tyson Fury predicted a knockout the same way Muhammad Ali used to do it. He predicted his knockouts, and that's what Tyson Fury did with Deontay Wilder. He shocked the world. Hey, I'll see y'all Wilder, later, man. Let me say this. Deontay I'll see y'all later. Wilder, he was the George Foreman of this era. He was the Sonny Liston of this era. He, they Boy, thought what? Deontay Wilder was going to kill people in the ring. He said he wanted to kill people, Lisa. Remember? H. H. Sonny yeah, Liston was a monster. He did say that. I Joe said you believe it. Was a yes, I believe it. To yes, I believe George it. George Foreman went on to be fighters the died. A fighter just died. Shelton, oh my God. People act like fighters don't die in the ring like Patrick Day didn't die in that fight against Charles Paul. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Somebody just died. Unfortunately, they do. I saw that. Yeah. And may he rest in peace. My condolences to his family. No, I see that. Boxing is dangerous. I never said it wasn't. I watched him. Wilder is not that guy. <laughs> He's not well, that guy. No he was Foreman, that guy until he fought the best heavyweight of this era in Tyson Fury. He Fierce. was never that he guy. Lost a better man, bro. Never. He lost to the better man. H. I don't You're... agree with the excuses, Shelton. I'm with you. It's not no but Wilder You're was a great fighter. Listen, true. Wilder was You're not a great narrative. fighter. Yes, he he was. Oh my God. He got You're one. You're making a narrative. He just because he got one team. loss, Wilder, to the best. He ain't team. never fought nobody, H. We're I don't agree with that. We're talking skill, H. We talking skill. I'm talking about skill. skill. Wilder was knocking everybody out. He was the most devastated right. creature in boxing. He was, he was knocking out Uber drivers, none of, H. That shit don't count. None of the guys, Wilder, oh, and Luis Ortiz, an Uber driver, <laughs> the skill. knocked yes. him out twice. Luis Only Ortiz, who did he beat? Luis oh, Ortiz, my my God. God. Oh, my God. Who did he beat? He beat the shit out of Luis Cuban, Ortiz. We know about Cuban's Cuban. 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 Who did he beat? He was Cuban. 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 I respect AJ's um, body of work way him. more than all of these heavyweights <laughs> right now. I respect hey. AJ and Tyson Fury and Wilder. I respect You're all fighters. talking about the body of work, even though he can't get Yeah, we all respect fighters. Hopefully he can get the bigger fights. Hopefully he can get the bigger fights with uh, Fury and Wilder. Yeah, we I'm respect talking fighters. About all of that other stuff. Yeah, so all we respect fighters. Stuff, that's, yeah, 
We respect fighters, oh, H. We all oh, respect shit. the fighters, but you try to say that this guy Wilder was a really, really good heavyweight, yes. and he's not. Yes, yes, he's he is. not. Oh, he was an Olympian. Hey, 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 oh, oh my God, that's really oh, a potential. As, as, a, as really been, a, you know, people are really thinking that Usyk can win a world title. You understand how yeah. crazy that is? <laughs> he does not he have box, any. Bro. He he's, has, he he does, he, he's not like that, bro. He, he don't have box, any bro. of those intangibles oh that these guys in the past. If it was just, just we don't have that man with bro. motherfucker Ernie Shavers. Which fighter deserves better in this era, according to you guys? Then in this era, Listen, yeah, because y'all don't they, respect nobody. They all no deserve better. You trying to compare these? I think a lot of these. You trying to compare these guys? To Ernie Shavers and Ron Law and D Foreman and yes. fucking Lennox Lewis. These guys Larry are no Holmes. comparison to them. Wilder. Wilder, Wilder Holmes? was like Foreman. Of them no, he was not. Yes, no, he was not. Yes, no, he was not. No, he was not. Wilder was knocking everybody out, bro. Wilder was not. Foreman was knocking out top 10 heavyweights. Wilder, he knocked out top 10 heavyweights. And heavyweight. Luis Ortiz, Ortiz is, is a bum, man. He just called the man a bum. You he is a bum. Oh my God! Are you serious? Are you serious? Luis Ortiz can beat nobody on that list. He ain't fought nobody. I'm talking about competition, bro. I'm talking about competition. Let's be realistic. Oh my God! Name a top ten heavyweight that Luis Ortiz beat. Nobody will call Luis Ortiz a bum, bro. Nowhere. Name a top ten heavyweight that he beat. I'll wait. If you see Ortiz in there, we're ready to He'd have been a bum. Name one, H. Was, uh, I'm waiting. Hey, hold, on, hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. He beat, hold on, he beat what's his name? Name a top a 10 heavyweight Cooper. that Lu Luis Ortiz beat in our way. We know who he beat. Come on. He beat Brian who? Jennings, bro. Stop with the games, bro. Oh, oh my God. God. Cooper was <laughs> he beat Brian Jennings. Now he's a bum. Chat, now, chat. Do y'all hear this? That's Josh. Chat, do you hear this? Everybody's a bum. This man calling every every fighter so, a bum. No, so, that's I never crazy. call nobody Jen a bum. So you saying Brian Jennings beats Buster Douglas? I'm talking to you Chelsea. You saying so Brian Jennings beats Buster Douglas? Say it again. Brian, Brian Jennings, Jennings beats Buster Douglas. It's a chance Buster Douglas got beat. Oh my god! Oh my god! god. Oh my god! god. Oh god. god. Buster Douglas, y'all know about Buster Douglas. So we, but what did Buster Douglas do after that? Who did M Buster Douglas beat besides Mike Tyson? Anyway, since y'all on this bandwagon, he went now. on a war Nobody path really. to get Mike Tyson, bro. Exactly. Y'all he went on a war. Of every fighter, again, call every you fighter a bum. Call Wilder a bum. Then Luis Ortiz is a bum, and is everybody this guy? Nobody called right? Wilder a bum. That's you said crazy, he was comparable bro. to I'm the great on, heavyweights of the past, and he's I'm not. He's not even the day of bums compared to them, bro. I'm saying that, bro. I'm, 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 I'm What's up, Lisa? H money. Yeah, I'm just saying. Me and Shelton, we come from an older school, so. We saw like the greats, and they all fought each other. I watched yeah. those fights. For, I for watched the most watched fights. Fight. So I watched those fights with my father. It don't matter when I watched yeah. it. But I watched that fight please. with my daddy. It's okay, nobody. Please. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I'm saying People I watched try to, them. You try to discredit me, discredit this fight. No, I didn't tell you to make fun of me, bro. I was never discredit you, bro. I was never discredit you. I was never discredit you, bro. I was never discredit you. I was never discredit you, bro. I'm just telling you, you cannot compare Deontay Wilder to the great heavyweights. That's why I'm wasn't a bum. Just give me five minutes. Stop ahead, he's he's not a bum, bro. He was a top stop, 10 heavyweight. Stop, stop this, this, this people from their job. You got to have a job if you're not boxing. I'm pretty sure Boo Boo Andre got a job. He ain't had a fight in a while. Do you think the bills stop because you ain't fighting? You still got kids to take care of. You still got mad shit you got to take care of. So, nigga, I don't care, nigga. Mike uh, Buster Douglas was a carpet boy. Putting in carpets before he beat Mike Tyson. So exactly, y'all gonna, gonna stop disrespecting Uber drivers, laundry mat <laughs> person. So, so what this if I work crazy. at BK? Hey, I I work at Burger King. So what? Hey, a you the fighter? You at? Oh well, nigga, your bills still go, nigga. People don't understand. <laughs> nigga, you ain't, unless you're getting them fucking millions of dollars for a fight, 
then you could chill. But if you ain't getting a fight, nigga, you got to go, nigga, I'll go rake some leaves, nigga, blow, <laughs> this nigga, is a great point. nigga great clean point. up snow. No, you just got to respect people, dog, because if you're not getting fights, you got to find an income unless you get welfare or, you know, you can get food stamps. You can well, get you whatever. But I'm not family. saying it. I'm not saying it like that, but stop the Hodges. Stop D. disrespecting a nigga because he got to work. D. Hodges, you ever been to the barbershop? <laughs> of course I did. A bunch you of times. Talk, you ever talk boxing in the barbershop? I did. Fred called me Cat Williams. I get on there live. This is how you, I ain't talking about Fred. I'm talking about a barbershop in the yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, that's barbershop. Oh, yeah. That's why he said that. They call that the barbershop. <laughs> that's why he said that. Yeah. yeah. A barbershop in the neighborhood. They talk mad stuff in the barbershop. I don't. I don't. I brought my own clippers and I got okay. one person that cuts this my hair. Tell you. Listen to me. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is what I'm trying to tell you. If you go to the barbershop to get your hair cut and you, we start talking boxing, this is how we talk, brother. Oh, I know. This how is we what talk, we but say. We got to stop calling fighters bums. We got to stop calling fighters bums. Money. 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 So, money. Money. so what if he works at the car wash? He's yeah, still, man. He's still, he's still getting in that ring and fighting. He was a good fighter, a dude, bro. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Hold up real quick, bro. Just like Aris Candy Lara, Pam Boa. You know what I mean? He was a great super fighter, bro. You can't call that man a Oh my car. Yeah, I'm in the neighborhood. So man. That the neighborhood. driver could have been boxing his whole life. Like Andy I mean, Ruiz, he was a nobody. He was a nobody. But Andy again, Ruiz was a nobody, who? but then he got that call on a couple of days' notice and he went and fought. Who well, knows what, what Andy so Ruiz is so doing? What do you, you, you know, 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 work? So D Hodges, are you saying that these 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 um these these uh these carpet men of today are damn near as good as the heavyweights in the past? No, not at all. But all right, I, I, I just, I just I'm, want I'm to, about to get off the show. I just hopped on here real quick because y'all gonna stop talking about people that need a regular job. If I ain't had a fucking <laughs> if I ain't had a fight in two years, how the fuck am I paying my bills? I got to do something. I ain't got no high school diploma. You know what I'm saying? Because I was boxing my whole life. Like, what the fuck, dog? People got to work, nigga. Just because shit, you ain't working, bills don't stop. So I respect any fighter. Yeah, for respect. Hey, I want to I want to ask you. Me too. I want to ask you, Lisa, what you thought about the interview with uh, the Michael Harris and uh, Shelton Moore and DJ before we close oh, it out? What it y'all thought great. about it? It was great. Great interview. What you think about him? I I haven't seen him fight before, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing him. And um, you know, um, he's he, he's getting in some great sparring and and um, learning a lot of stuff. So, you know, um, I wish him nothing but the best and success. He was a real cool guy. Yeah, I just talked to Bo Mac about him, and Bo Mac said that kid is he's a very good fighter. And Bo Max said he got a lot of power. Bo Max said he gonna be a champion. Mm hmm. I like mm -hmm. I like his mindset too. Mm hmm. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Appreciate you, Lisa, so much. Thank you for coming through. Uh, tomorrow night we got the NFL draft. I don't know if y'all like football, but you got the NFL draft tomorrow, and also we got the PFL. And we know Clarissa Shields. She gonna be making her debut in mixed martial arts, I believe, in a week. So she fights on a PFL. Tomorrow night, we got Rory McDonald. You know, he's a former uh, UFC fighter. It's going to be a great night of fights. So, uh, uh, Shelton... Is Rissa fighting tomorrow? I think she fight next week. Next week. Yeah. She'll fight tomorrow. Oh, okay. She coming great. up, though. She, wow. She with John Jones, you know, so... Man, I appreciate Yeah, yeah. You. I got her last pay-per-view. I, I enjoy her fighting. Mm-hmm. Yo, Shelton, I like her which, and the other girl. Who? Which one? The one, uh, the one that she fought in the amateurs, Savannah Marshall. I like them both. Who you think wins, Clarissa Shields or Savannah Marshall? I don't know. Uh, Savannah Marshall is a, a beautiful boxer to watch. She's like a female um, Tyson Fury. If you look at her, 
Um, but Clarissa has the speed, so it would have been a really interesting fight. Oh, yeah, she, I, I think know. she trains with uh Tyson Fury's uncle, or I think her dad, yeah, Sean Fury, they train Peter. her. Oh, yeah, Peter, Peter, his Peter uncle. her uncle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's beautiful aesthetically to watch, but hey, she I doesn't have that. the speed, though. So, uh, I mean, yeah, she's, she's slow as molasses in the wintertime. She fast though. She ain't slow. I mean, she's, she ain't slow. I mean, I don't she think fast. she's slow. She's she's tall. She's elongated. Um, that'll be an interesting fight. But um, but to look at her is like looking at she's. I was looking at her that last fight. I was like, oh my god, she's just um very naturally uh just a natural boxer, you know. But she and, got uh, pop though. Yeah, she got a little she pop. Did. Yeah. And Clarissa is a great boxer as well. Great head movement. Um, um, defense is great. Um, she's fast. She she let her hands go. That should be a really interesting fight. I don't even know what to how to pick it. Yeah, but at this time, I would say like Clarissa because she's been fighting more. You know what I mean? And she's um she's just you know been out there. You know. Yeah, that's a great fight right there. I picked Clarissa Shields, but Savannah mm-hmm. Marshall, she's the only person to beat Clarissa Shields in the amateur. She's a very a great boxer, and she has a lot of power as well. But I do pick uh, Clarissa Shields. She has great skills. She kind of fights yeah. like Floyd Mayweather. She's like the Floyd Mayweather of women's boxing. She has great skills, two-time Olympic yeah. gold medalist, two-time mm-hmm. undisputed champion in only 10 fights. She broke uh, Lomachenko's record to become the fastest fighter to become a three division world champion. So she's just one of the greatest of all time already. I think she beat Savannah Marshall. The pros are, is different. This is not the amateurs. Chris Jones right. is a she's a much better boxer. But Shelton Moore, I want to get your thoughts on the interview with the Michael Harris and also, you know, give me your final uh, words. Yeah, that was a good young kid right there. He got his head on straight. He he has a, a a goal that he's reaching for. He's staying determined. He's staying disciplined. He's sacrificing. He's doing all the things. He's doing all the things that make a champion. That's a great young kid. I'm going to start following him. I'm going to watch him. If he's on that Triller card, I'll, that'll be the only reason I buy that card. You know what I'm saying? So if he's on that Triller card, I'm definitely going to buy mm-hmm. it for him. And uh, I can't wait to see the kid go forward, man. And great yeah, boxing yeah. talk, y'all. Great, uh, as always. I see Big Dog Willie just showed up. What's up, Big Dog? What's happening? Hey, hey, what's happening? What's happening? Chilling. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it's going to be a great time, man. I'll be back. You know, I'm always going to holler at you, H Money, even though we disagree sometimes. <laughs> I love the heated debates up here. I love them. H. Happening. Big Dog Willie, when did you come in? About a few minutes ago. Oh, what, what like part? About twenty what seconds did you ago. Hear? What did huh? you hear? What, what did you hear? What I hear. You, all, what I, was, hear I hear. I hear you calling um, um, heavyweight boxers who who won ten title defensive bombs. I don't know how you got that <laughs> one. So what so else? I, ten I, I, I said. I said that. I, I said. I never oh, called Wilder a bum. I never I called Wilder a bum. I said I said Wilder, he fought a lot of bums. I said Wilder, AJ, and Tyson Fury are bums compared <laughs> to the, the fighters of the past. If they got in there with them, they would look like amateurs. Oh, compared to the fighters of the past, I yeah. wanna call them I'm gonna call them bums, but then there's no Ali or no, you know, no Lance Lewis or no Foreman's or nothing like that. Dang okay, I, okay, yeah. big dog Willie. I'm gonna ask you the question that we was arguing about. Take Tyson Fury and drop him off in nineteen ninety. Who does he okay, beat? He beats. He beats. I don't know because it de- depends. Because it just takes one punch from Riddick Bowe or or Lance Lewis to him in his gut, and he's going down. So that's true. Because they're yeah. not going to aim for his head; they're going to beat his body up, and he ain't going to be able to take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what's wrong with these cats nowadays. They head hunt. Mm-hmm. That's my, that was my them. argument. That was my argument. <laughs> That's a great point. Uh, now, Dylan White hits to the body a lot. I noticed that. Yeah, Dylan White's just a bomber. Yeah, he's huh? just wild. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say that, big dog? Will he just chastise me for saying the same thing? Because I can't stand him. I can't stand him. He just runs his mouth. Then he, he man, he gets knocked out by the old dude. 
But who it else? Who, who don't run their mouth in the heavyweight division? Not like him. Not like him. Yeah. Yeah, Dillian White acts like he's uh he's won five Tyson world titles. Fury runs he his is. mouth all the time. But Fury wins. <laughs> <laughs> Fury has a belt. Dillian White has nothing. He has a thunder he cup. Crazy belt. Tough. Well, he been trying to get he been trying to get these fights, but it's just, just so hard, you know. No, but no, he had a, he he fought the back in the first time. He's supposed to win that yeah. easily, and he got knocked the fuck out. Yeah. So so you can't so you can't he 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 has no he can't talk he has no room to talk at all. Then he wins a match. He wins like a match. I feel him. like he got room to talk because he get in that ring, and he don't duck no phase. Uh, he don't duck. I don't know. He only don't thing duck. He so duck only thing he duck is that B sample. I can see that. He duck, <laughs> he duck that, that shit. <laughs> he, he duck, duck that, that B sample. sample. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, they don't. Uh, he, he, they had, don't he got a chance to fight or team to team fight him. Huh? They don't give that out. And you know, so let me, let me ask I, don't you like this, people, I don't like fighters who take steroids either. That's another thing. That's why I can't get Fury his all his whole respect. He took he took um, PEDs. And I, I can't stand like that's not a way to win a fight, man. That's not that's I mean, people like oh Fury this Fury that Fury also took PEDs. He damn so did. Now, big dog Willie, does Tyson Fury beat Razor Ruddick? If Razor Ruddick hit him in his gut, yeah. Razor <laughs> Ruddick got a nice left hook though. If Razor Ruddick got a Razor Ruddick got that smash punch. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Him, in his, him in his gut. I, man, Fury. Nobody has really tested Fury's body out. Exactly. I don't know why. I don't know why nobody. Everybody goes to his head when he's six foot nine. Go to his body. That's the only way I see AJ beating him. AJ got to get inside. Mm -hmm. That whole that whole water has to beat him. You just just that powerful right hand. Him in his gut. Him in his ribs. I bet you he's yeah. Make him show. All you have to do. Right. In well, Willie, really, looks like we go get that fight. Man. Looks like that's the fight we go get. Well, you know what? I. Well, it's Eddie not Hearn's official, pulled. though. No, but that's official. It, it, huh? it, 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 was a, it was in the contract. The contract was there, and and all this. This is Fury's fault. Because Fury could just fight the man, and then we would be looking at undisputed between whoever right now. But right. Fury had to delay it. Be like, oh well, he hurt my feelings, and so it's like, you know, now we're now we have to wait until June or, or July to get this fight out the way to get undisputed. If Facts. Fury would have fought the man, I really don't know what to believe with that story because it's too many different sides, and I really no, don't know but, what to believe with it. Uh, well, I heard. Go ahead. What I heard today was uh, when Frank Warren said he told that lady on Sky Sports that we can't do anything. Until this arbitration is over, that's basically okay. all I need to hear. I don't need to hear that. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so, if you would just fight the man in, 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 in what February or whenever, yeah, yeah, it, it would have been all over. Then we don't have to sit here and, and figure out who's going to fight for undisputed. Mm -hmm. And now that's look, it's, it's almost May. Mm -hmm. That's true. That fight so, probably doesn't even happen to the one. Huh? That fight happened so like these September, October, probably. September. Yeah. September, yeah. October. And yeah, we don't even know when this fight's gonna happen. Like you're right. We don't even know when this fight actually is gonna happen. So understand right. it might come next year. Next, <laughs> next, next spring. I'm not lying. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right, bro. And this you're is why people right. and this is why people ain't feeling boxing. Exactly. All exactly, this, Lisa. All these shenanigans. Like it's too many politics. Like you know, people want to. You see how easy it was with the uh, with Taylor and Ramirez, yeah, and uh, and Canelo. I mean, not Canelo, Ch uh, Charlo and Castano. Easy this fight to weight, win. This heavyweight fight. and this welterweight and this middleweight division is always something. Too much drama for me. Well, this is is you know what it is is those fights are not really looked on as big money fights. So you have to look at like Terrence and, and Spence, big money fight. Um, yeah. You know, Fury, Wilder, um, AJ, big money fights. That and you know, and then even the lightweights with you know with with um, Haney and Tank and and th those mm -hmm. are big money fights that nobody 
then they're going to be fighting over money. And right. this is this what's going to end up happening with Terrence and um, Spence. One of them niggas going to lose. Mm-hmm. They're going to fuck up the whole shit. Just like the Wilder and AJ. Somebody yep. lost. Yep. They both lost. Yep. For sure. Big Dog Willie, what's good? How you feeling, bro? I'm all right, man. What's going on? Man, nothing much, man. Just chopping it up, man. We did an interview with a a, a young fighter, 24 years old, undefeated, three wins, three knockouts. The Michael Harris, he's out there uh, sparring. He's sparring Shakur Stevenson, you know, with Terrence Crawford and them out there. So I think he's gonna be a champion one day, man. So shout outs to the Michael Harris. Appreciate him up. Yeah, he he nice, man. He could fight his ass off. But we got Peter want to join the panel. But yeah, man, I'm I mean, I'm just shocked that Deontay Wilder, he think he gonna go to war with Tyson Fury with Malik Scott as his trainer, man. Hey, I mean man. Hey. Malik hey. Scott hey, ain't never... right. I mean he had a fixed fight with Malik Scott for crying out loud. And now <laughs> you sign him. That's how I knew it was a fixed fight because that was your best friend. You know what I mean? Now that's your trainer. So Wilder is a complete joke right now. He lied for over a year, made excuses, you know what I mean? Fire Mark Grilling for no reason, kept JD's. You know, man, Wilder, I mean, I, I don't respect some of the things that he did, especially the Mark Breland thing and those excuses. He could have just took his loss like a man and got back in the gym. Instead, he waited a whole year and made excuses and cried about it. You know what I mean? Hold so, on, hold on. I'm hold on, hold on, hold on. It's, I'm it's money. Things, it's money. Bro. It's money. He lied, he lied to you and he lied to me. About it's money. It's money. It's money. He lied about Mark theory. Okay, you say you can say whatever you want. Kind of theory he lied about he had a Mark big Breland, bro. Yeah, okay, it's whatever like about he. And then it was a costume. So Fury had no part in this. So are we talking about Mark Breland in the costume right now? No, no, no. We're not. I'm just saying. You say he waited a whole so, year. So I'm let's just keep saying. Fury had no, problem, no part in this. Let's keep. Fury had no Fury part in this. beat him fair and square. Fury smoked him. He got beat. I'm talking about, we're talking about, you said he waited for a whole year. What did he wait for? He went to arbitration so, with him. So let's talk about the excuses, though. Let's talk about that. Line to the, uh, the way I'm not supporting neither one of them. What about the weight in the glove and all those lies yeah. that he made? Lisa, Lisa, Lisa has a point. She says she's not supporting neither one of them. Both of them. I'm supporting Fury because Fury. he won the fight. Fury also did steroids too. In the past, Wilder knew that before he fought him. So why did Wilder fight him? If he so why would you stick up? So why would you stick up for him and not stick up? You you sticking up for a cheater? Wh- and somebody why did Wilder play? kiss him and said he loved Fury and that's his brother and he knew he was okay. a cheater? So it's okay for him with steroids. So why why did Wilder fight him first? Why did he even fight I'm him? If you, he was a I'm, I'm asking you a question. Oh, I'm asking why did Wilder fight him if he was a cheater? This shit too. It's okay for it's okay. It's okay it, for wasn't Luis Ortiz the cheater? And Wilder said I gave him a rematch because his daughter, but he was a cheater. According to that logic, you should never even fought him. But instead, you gave him a rematch. It's, and then it's you, money. Gave, you gave you gave I'm not saying it's money. It's now, money. Wilder you're is talking a liar. About, you're Wilder talking about, about principles. You're talking about principles. You said Wilder liar. I said Fury yeah. cheater. They're on the same level, right? But you, my, my argument is you knew he was a cheater before you no, even no, fought him. No, 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 no. Yes, no, you no, did. No. no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you can put on principle saying Fury, I mean, no. Water so is why, a liar. Okay, so, is so, a why cheater. You, so why you just start calling him a cheater? You knew he was he a, cheater a cheater before. He is a cheater. Is no, you, you waited for him to lose. Once Wilder lost, then you start calling him a cheater. Don't say me. Don't say me. Don't say me. I, I never heard you call him a cheater at first until Wilder lost, though. When the last time, when did uh, before this, when you already heard me talking about either one of them? Exactly. Nobody started using the cheater thing until Wilder lost. He, was, he is thing. a cheater. He's he excuses a cheater. for why he lost. So he no, lost I'm not, he's a cheater. I'm not making excuses for why he lost. I'm saying that Fury is a cheater. All I'm saying is Wilder got beat fair and square, and I hope he stopped making excuses. It's money. It's money. Like a champion. It's money. Why Not did he fire question. Mark Breland? It's Let's money. talk about Mark Breland. No, 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 no. No, no, I thought no, Mark Breland spiked his water. Did Mark, no, I'm asking, did Mark Breland spike his water, yes or no? I don't, why are you asking me that? So that's what Wilder said. That, well, that's Wilder. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. And now, didn't Wilder have a fixed fight with Malik Scott? Yes or no? I don't know that. How do you know that? Because we that's his best that. friend and trainer. We don't know that. Land. We don't know that. It's funny. Okay, what's a fact? Is the Fury cheat? Is that a fact? Or we don't know that either. Fury got caught in the past. In the past. This <laughs> before the Wilder fight, he got caught. So now let's so, talk about that fixed fight now. Let's talk about the fixed fight with Malik Scott. How you know that's trainer. a fixed fight? How because you know that's his best friend and his trainer and the punch never landed. 
Okay. And that's the trainer okay. and his best friend. Okay. That's how okay. you knew. That's how okay. you know. You don't that's know that. But yeah. you don't know that. So you I'm can call that. on this bullshit. So since people want to call Fury a cheater and this and that, now let's so talk about Wilder cheater. fixing fights with Malik so Scott. So so Wilder fixing fight. Where did you get that from? Yeah, with Malik's because he never landed the punch. I saw the replay. The punch never landed. Get... Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, well, you're you're, you're, you're only one funny. laughing. You're only one laughing. You know, it, very... you, I, so you're not upset with Wilder after he lied to you for over a year and made hold excuses? Hold you on, should be upset on. with him. Hold Don't on. be I'm upset with me. I'm not, upset. I'm not upset. I'm just putting you on place because you're saying no, one I thing. I want you to keep that same energy. You're talking about morals. You're talking about You're making excuses. You're saying that Wilder's a No, keep the same energy with Wilder. No, keep the same energy with Wilder for Fire and Mark. Okay, okay hold on, hold on. What about that said JD's? I'm saying. You came out. You said, "Oh, I don't like Wilder." And, 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 and I'm calling you. Energy about Fury. You gonna call he me out? Fury was, Fury was a he's a stand up guy. Da, da, da. He also did steroids. <laughs> <That's more dangerous. laughs> you knew that in the beginning, but you said that's him. more dangerous. You knew that, bro. bro. We're talking about. We're not talking about what Wilder believes. So, so my question you know, you. now my question to you, you. Dog Willie, is we're talking you, about you. you waited for Wilder to lose to Fury. Then we start hearing these cheating allegations. Oh, why well, you we know Tyson Fury tested positive for steroids in 2016. But y'all yeah. didn't say that yeah, in, the the first fight, in, the wait, in the first fight, know nobody what? said in the first fight, nobody called Fury a cheater. After the first fight, no, after the first fight, let me say this. After the first fight, Wilder kissed Tyson Fury and said, that's my brother. I love him. And he hugged him. And he loved him and kissed him on the cheek. That's what he did. So why is he kissing the cheater then? If he's such a cheater, why oh, did Wilder Jesus, kiss him? Bro. Okay. So that yeah, is, are you, are you done with that? Explain Wilder's are actions. Explain are the actions. Are, are, are you done? Wilder is because a liar. I'm just, I'm just Wilder saying, lied about Mark Breland. He lied about the costume. He said he never said it. And then Kevin Ioli released the audio of Wilder saying it was the costume. So which one is it? Is it the costume or was it the water? Or was it Mark Breland spiked his water? And then he kept JDs who checked the gloves. If it was the gloves, why did you keep JDs? And he was in, on, on camera laughing with Tyson Fury. Oh, my bad. JDs got, he got Tay Jones' last three fights. So they mm -hmm. are on the payroll. JD's mm -hmm. helping them get paid. So they, mm -hmm. they cool with it. Uh huh. And that's all. Is that all that you have? That's right? all facts. That's all facts. That's all, that's all facts. Yeah. It's like, okay. But, but, okay. If Fury doing steroids, a fact? He is in the past. He got caught for steroids. Yes. Okay. Okay. You think steroids, do you think Fury was doing steroids when he fought Klitschko? I don't know. Did he? Shit, did he get caught? No, I don't, I don't think know. So. He didn't get know. caught. Did I he, did he, he take was. steroids in that Wilder fight? Did he take steroids in a Wilder fight? No. No. Uh -huh. I think he was. I think now he now was. I think he was. Now it's speculating. I think, I think he was. All the allegations, was. bro. And we get it. We, 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 we see. I'm saying you go accuse Tyson Fury <laughs> with false allegations, and we you get it. Every false day. Allegations. No, we get it every day, bro, in the community. You said Malik. You said Malik. Scott was a was a was a fake it was fight. A fake That's fight. An right? That's an allegation, right? Allegation. So why did allegation? Yeah, it was. Allegation. You didn't even land a punch. Is, is, it, is it allegation? So bring that. You people want to talk about glove game? Let's we'll talk about Wilder fixing fights with his trainer oh, Scott. Go. That's his allegation too. And his trainer. That's allegation too. The punch never landed. Well, Fury took steroids against Klitschko. Oh, exactly. Wilder, bro, come on, man. He lied for over hey, a year. Hey, he hey, hey, well, hey. Why he lied to the people? Why did he fire hey, Mark Breeland? Hey, it's money. You don't realize I'm doing the same thing. thing. I'm doing the same thing you're doing. So I'm you're not making up about shit the Mark and going along with it. Let's talk about the Mark Breeland situation then. Let's talk about that. <laughs> you no, know, you can't You can't turn back on that. Oh, okay, you're right. Let's talk about something else. So why? I have to get, why I have to, get to work. I have to get to work. He said, I 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 No, he said, okay. he fired him for throwing in the towel, and then he said, he spiked his water. So, M Wilder is a liar. How could you accuse him of spiking your water with no proof? So, he falsely accused another black man of not even committing a crime, bro. So, he's, okay. he's lying. He lied and about if, the Mark Breland shit. And Mark Breland was respected. And Fury, and Fury, and Fury accused. Said that his his stairway news came from boar's nuts. That's how you got caught with steroids. Hey, what yeah, is that? Did he not say that? Mark did not say that? Bro, you don't want to talk about Mark Breland getting fired for no reason, right? No, 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 no. I don't know. What I'm saying is, you say this, I say that. You say this, I I'm say that. I'm gonna expose Wilder okay? for lying to me. That's no, no, no. But you don't want to admit. You don't want to admit that 
um, Tyson Fury do the same bullshit you too. Expose Wilder for lying to me. You, you, so you don't want to admit. You, know, you want. You don't want to admit that Tyson Fury does the same bullshit. Wilder lied to me, bro, and I'm furious. Okay. He lied to me about this whole okay. love shit about Mark Breland, and I'm upset, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll be upset. You can be upset all you yeah, want, all but just don't. Here and lie, hey, bro. But keep the same energy when it comes to Tyson Fury. <laughs> Hey, you funny, big dog. You know no, I got I'm, just saying, I'm, just, I'm just pulling your chain though, because you're just you're just going back and forth with me. We're both because saying Wilder, allegations. We're both saying hey, these guys all you want, bro. Whatever. Tell us, we got we got real deal boxing talk in the building. But, all right. What up, real deal? Oh man, y'all talking real, real man. I like this talk. It's a good <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm just furious, I don't know. It's, man. It's, like, it's sticky though, man. I think I think. Uh, Wow, man, it's sticky. I I get it both sides. It's an ugly situation. Wilder Wilder did make some moves I didn't like, but at the same time, Fury did too. It's just I don't know. Honestly, it's an ugly situation at this point. I just want to see that 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 third fight. You know what I mean? Because we can go back and forth about it, but at the end of the day, we got to see the Wilder go fresh enough and, and get some more tools in the box, and then or is he gonna be the same Wilder? And it's Fury, Fury, it's Fury just going to beat him up, and that's going to be the end of it. You know what I mean? So we just got to see that third fight, I think. Facts. Facts, because uh, like, it looks like that's the fight we're going to get. Uh, real deal, according to uh, Frank Warren today, he did an interview on Sky Sports. In the, interview, the interviewer asked him, what's the deal between with the AJ Fury fight? And Frank Warren said, we can't do anything until this arbitration is done. So I don't really need to hear anything else. That tells me what I need to know. And Bob Arum lied about that. Yes, he did. Bob Arum lied about the whole situation. He said the contract was expired. And obviously it wasn't because if it uh, wasn't, none of them, it was. Bob, and um, Frank Warren and none of them. Mm -hmm. Eddie Hearn, none of them. Mm -hmm. And that's being honest. And this made a whole mockery of this whole thing. This is like a three-headed monster, this uh, heavyweight thing. It's ridiculous. Absolutely, I agree. It's a joke, that. man. It's a joke. I don't even trust AJ, though, man. He ain't... I, I don't know. He just ain't the truth to me. He can fight, but I got to see... I got to see what he can really do. I got to see him against somebody like Fury or Wilder. How is he not the truth when he's a, a unified champion twice? Well, he lost his belts, first of all. Slacking. Came to America and lost. He was supposed to be, because a, a, a real true heavyweight steps up, right? So so you, you lose to a backup, right, that you thought you were going to win because oh, he was a little sloppy, but not knowing. This guy has a pedigree. He had solid punching power combinations. Went in there, lost his belts. And if you watch the second fight, let's be real. If you watch the second fight, um, AJ only did enough to win. He didn't go in there and beat him up. He stayed. He, he stayed out of the uh, the wheelhouse. Stayed on the outside, kind of boxed him. And he and he, he, you know, he he fought just enough to get his belts back. That's not a true champion. You were supposed to go in there and flatten him, TKO. And get you don't think that was smart? You don't think that was smart? A true champion. No, it was, it real was deal? smart. It, it, no, he's the I'm, only true champion in this era. That is Lewis Hussein Rotman. He's a unified champion. There you go. There you it go. don't get no it. respect. Then it's Lewis Hussein Rotman. Went out there and crunched his ass. Absolutely. There you go. You got to make a point. AJ. Lennox Lewis and um, what's the guy name? With the, 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 uh. McCall? No, the guy from, um. South Africa? You know the guy from um, where uh Joseph Parker's from? Yeah, uh, he's talking about. Oh, he's talking about. She talking about uh, Corey Sanders when he knocked Lewis Lewis out. No, no, not him. The other guy. Oh, David Tua. David Tua. Tua, yes. David Tua. Like I think he fought that fight the way he needed to, considering it was a, a very immediate rematch. So no, he did. I just he did think, what he was supposed to I do. I just think just... he. I just think he um. You know, like use the lateral movement and um, fall from the outside. You know, just kept his jab out there. But um. So, do you feel like he's the number one heavyweight? 
just because of the belts. Yep. That's, that's it's not even about it's not even just about the belts. It's about what he's done. It's about um <clears throat> well, it's funny how people say Spence is the number one welterweight because he Absolutely. has more belts. So it's like when it's AJ, it's like uh he don't get the credit. So, you know. Okay, so did you see who he fought to get his first belt? Yes. So so okay now now and who did Wilder we, fight for his first belt? Right, but okay, at, the, it's the at same the end of the day, that was thing. a legit. Go ahead. It's the same thing. No, it's the same thing, brother. It's the same oh. thing. He won that. Charles he won Martin. that. Absolutely. Those black black <laughs> Vitali. No, Vitali Klitschlo was re, um retired, and that was a vacant belt. But he did fight um, Ariola twice. It's the same thing. People are just nitpicking. I go by what's on people's resume. And, Real um, deal. See, Real deal. Yes, do need to fight. He do need to fight Wilder and on Fury. I get that. But um, like as so far what? as people not respecting, you know, whatever. It don't even matter what people do. The man's doing great for himself. Well, yeah. It's all at the end of the day. It's all opinion. Like well, the rest is, of them is that but, energy. When 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 Wilder had the WBC belt, where was all his energy? As soon as he lost the belt, you see nobody how scared of Wilder. AJ, AJ, no, nobody AJ, scared of Wilder, and Wilder was trying to a side AJ. That's the real. Answer, yeah. But you got to answer the question. I hear you, I hear what you're saying, but you hopping around the question. If 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 AJ no, is the happy. truth, it was the same energy. If AJ was the truth. Why didn't he step up and fight Wilder <laughs> when Wilder lost the belt? He quickly. Guess what? Started started the fury talk because they want to keep the belt in the UK, the money in the UK. It's all like, but he didn't want no smoke with Wilder. Wilder had that's the belt a, for a that's, while. That's guess what? When when um, what's his name? Eddie Hearn wanted to meet them that Friday night. They refused. They wanted him to verbally agree to something. Verbally agree to what? I know he said that's, about that's the fifty million dollars. No, okay, no, that's what was said. That's what said. Okay, well, guess what? Just like people believe the Fury side, I mean, not Fury side, the Wilder side, you got people that believe the AJ side. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, but we got to go. So you know, if we go with that, I'm we got to go with the facts. Hold right? up, the facts I'm going be, by the facts. The facts is, is that they the wanted WBC, him to verbally Well, Wilder had the agree, WBC. Why the, the didn't AJ fight? Is that that's they all wanted him to verbally agree to. He, listen, Wilder could have came to the UK. He didn't want to, so that's the bottom line. I agree with both. I think it falls on both. I think you know it falls on AJ and it falls on Wilder. I think it falls um, on both. Have... But all these people putting um, it's like they putting all the onus on him. I think they both played a part. I think egos got involved, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But my thing is just like um. Like people was, it's a lot of narratives out there that I believe that was not true. And for him to verbally agree to something well, that he you? don't even know what it is, I don't get that. He can't do that. That's what was said. Eddie Hearn but I, but wanted I, to meet still, with. It still doesn't make any sense to me. I hear what you're saying, but it doesn't make because what? Because Wilder, huh? Wilder Nobody fought. Was afraid the of Wilder. Wilder. That was the, the narrative that was put out there. Okay, but let's let, go let me ask you this. Let me ask we you this. Be, uh, we got to be real. Let's go back to the facts. Wilder's the only heavyweight that fought Louise twice, right? And? Right. Okay. And? Y'all okay, remember so, what so AJ said? AJ, so and? what I'm saying is, so why didn't AJ step up? Wilder didn't have to take the fight him twice. He had nobody else there. So why didn't AJ step up? Like, it's like y'all not. What do you mean he didn't step up? He didn't step AJ, up. AJ, AJ did see, see some funny well, stuff at one point. He did. He said um, he was scared. He, it was something. Well, you know what? Father said a lot of funny style stuff, too. He said that uh, people should spit on AJ. I heard a lot of stuff he said. <laughs> if, if, if he goes around, he's in the UK. Oh, well, well, he is a weirdo. That's, that. that's from there. He is a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, Wilder's a weirdo. Huh? Wilder's a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just be shit. honest, you know what I mean? You know? Yeah, who thinks like that? And everybody <laughs> act like people so, like, live in glass houses and can't throw stones. Come on, every, none of these guys are perfect. Well, we're you talking boxing. We're not talking about his yeah. personal. I'm, 
I, but okay, yeah, so I, it's me. I, I, I get it. So, so let, me, so let me ask you this. Can I ask you this? So if we're yeah. saying that, right? So you remember, you guys remember when Wilder, when Wilder fought um, Brazil, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And they did a face off, right? Right. Yeah. And I remember, hey, this, this is my mindset on AJ. Uh huh. They they did a face off, and you can probably go look it up on YouTube. Uh-huh. And AJ was like, "All you Americans talk, you don't back it up." He don't give. He don't care about Americans. So why would I? I'm Team Wilder. When you disrespect us. Go go look at what he said to Brazil's face. So so if we're gonna talk about I'm Team African say, I'm diaspora. Saying, oh, we're gonna, if we're gonna talk Guess about what, what people said, right? Because you said what you said what Wilder said, right? So if we're gonna say what Wilder I'm team said, Team African diaspora. What does that mean? You got me right. No, I don't. That means that because when you, speak, um, when you talk about it doesn't, he doesn't matter even where you're from. It doesn't matter where you're from. It Flesh doesn't matter where you're from. My people or my people, no matter where they're from. Whether they're from America, whether they're from the UK, whether they're from Africa, whether they're from Brazil, whatever, whatever, is what I'm saying. Well, clear, clearly he's black, but why, let's 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 be real. Wilder, we're taking it there. If we're going off of boxing, Wilder's the only heavyweight that really talks and speaks up for the people. Let's just be real about that. Well, I don't, I don't AJ hear did AJ. too, though. AJ, he attended a a, a Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, what I'm saying event. AJ spoke out. Black Lives Matter is not you. Well, he spoke out. It don't matter if he spoke out. They all, I mean, they both spoke out. I think even Tyson Fury said something, though, about all that shit that was going on with uh, George Floyd. He denounced denounced it. So let me ask, uh, let me ask, uh, real deal something. Let's take it back to uh, when my man won the title, the WBC Heavyweight Championship, right? You with me, real deal so far? Yeah, I'm listening. He beat Bermain Stavern, right? Right, right. I was now, there. I was there. Who, oh, you was there? Oh, my man. Okay, true fan. All right. So, you know, uh, Vitaly retired, right? Right, right. He wanted to go. Um, he wanted to go do some government stuff for his country. Yeah, politics. Yeah, some kind yeah. of politics. Yeah, yeah, that was on him. He wanted to do some politics. He was tired of boxing. I, I got you. In your opinion, does Deontay Wilder back at that time, that's 2015, does he beat Vitaly? I think it's a good fight. I don't know. The this is your objective, brother. Vitaly, Vitaly only had fight. two losses. and He yeah, got I injured win. against yeah. Chris Bird. Vitaly, uh, he got that cut against Lennox Lewis, and they stopped yeah, the fight. Vitaly was a dog. Yeah, Vitaly was, was a dog. dog. He was a you know? dog. Yeah. yeah, he was a dog. Yeah. <laughs> that fight, <laughs> I really have to yeah. – that could be – that's like 50 feet from here. I'm going with Glitchko in that one. Fatality. Yeah. But Wilder, I'm think... the two. Wilder could have knocked him out, though. You never but, know. But if we say, but see, I, I, I hear y'all keep trying to lightweight bash Wilder, but like, okay, so. Nobody's trying Wilder to lightweight bash belt, Wilder. If Wilder. If Wilder got his belt, he got it. Then we right. gotta we gotta look at how AJ got his belt. Come on, now. Oh, you talking about when Charles Martin fell down? I never against did. Charles Martin. Charles Martin was. You mean when Charles Martin <laughs> fell down? But yeah, nobody Charles never Martin, said. Charles Martin gave him the nobody Come never on now. said. Charles Martin was not the Listen, truth, and y'all know nobody it. He's horrible. Said. Did, y'all did you hear, hear what I said? Right did you, you hear what I said? Uh, did you hear what I said? Real deal. I, I said when I Charles Martin it. fell down, right? Nobody ever said. <laughs> right. that, uh, he did though. He first got a was, a was uh, like from this long reigning champion. I'm just saying that people is uh kind of like like low key like squatting on him, and um you know. You know, I'm saying, like, come on now, you know. Here's my only beef, Lisa. Here's my only beef with uh, H Money. H Money wants to say that Tyson Fury is the greatest heavyweight of this era. All I want to see him do is defend the belt. Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder was the baddest motherfucking on the planet. Wilder Wilder was the number one heavyweight. But you don't respect I wouldn't give a damn if he beat King Cole. You don't don't respect Wilder. The the belt. No, you don't respect Wilder. So you don't give Tyson Fury his credit for beating Wilder. Now, I respect Wilder as a great champion. So Fury dethroned him. That's a stretch. He dethroned Klitschko. So this makes Tyson Fury number one. You know what I mean? So Wilder was a great champion. You don't look at him as a great champion. I look at no, I look at his I level at, of competition, bro. And it was suspect. Um, they were okay. better win. Real deal. I what agree. you gotta say to that? As far as what? Go what was that again? 
No, I said he said I doesn't I don't see Wilder as a great champion. I said I look at Wilder's level of competition, and to me, in my opinion, it was suspect, suspect level of competition. Mm, no, but he did beat the guys no. that was out there. I That's the guys with, that was I there. I don't agree with that though, because then if you say Wilder Wilder beat who got put in front of him, period. That's boxing. That's you all the boxer can you do. Can't That's all he can do. Ring. But but but. H money is hitting it on the button at the end of the day. Fury beat him. And let's 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 be real. The world was like, Wilder this, Wilder that, he's the greatest. So I mean, I, I get what H Bunny said. Nobody I mean, was saying that. I mean, you probably weren't. The world was. The world, <laughs> the world was, like, was not saying that. Not trust me. Okay, why well, they were not you know saying I that. Gonna, I don't really want to like go back. Like I'm I'm in the media, so I kind of know what these people are saying. Like, and right. they were they were riding wilder, like. He was the knockout king, this and that. This is what was being said. Now, as far as Thanks. opinion, personal opinion, I mean, it's cool. Everybody got their personal opinion, but the media, the boxing media, the people that go to the right. fights were interviewing right. these guys. They were riding wilder, and these right. are facts. So I'm just, I can just speak the facts in the real. I don't. Really no, that's cool. That's cool. That's true. That, and you're absolutely right. In the media, you're right. But in real boxing circles, everybody knew what wilder was. Nobody can't tell me. That they See, never looked at Wilder. Wait a minute. See, Wait a minute. The, oh, okay. Because I've been following Wilder since he was on Showbox, the new generation. Mm -hmm. With five fights. I've seen him way since back then. And right. from he back then. Sloppy. He was still sloppy. Yeah, I remember. Go from on. back then, even to the Ortiz fight, I said, if he ever gets in there with somebody who actually knows how to box, they're going to beat him. Because he's one-dimensional. I've been saying that since 2014. Well, it was definitely uh, people definitely spoke on that. My only thing, my only thing about that though is we need. I need to see fight three. Okay, so why? Because if Wilder puts some more things in the tools, at the end of the day, right. we got to okay. Fight one. He did he really win or really lose? That's what a lot of people are saying. If you look into the media, was the count too long? You know what I mean? Did they get furious? Right. It's, it's so much being said. That's why I said. Everybody has their opinion, but when you really follow right. boxing and you listen to the media and you're listening mm -hmm. to these guys who've been doing it for years and you're listening to what everybody's saying, a lot of stuff comes together and it makes sense. But at the okay. end of the day, it's, it's all opinion. It's all opinion. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So I, I get what y'all saying. I mean, everybody has a right to their opinion, but I, I right. definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I agree with everything. The AJ Wilder, whatever, how everybody feels. You know what I'm saying? It's all it's all opinion. It's all love at the end of the day. But I think mm -hmm. uh, facts, brother. Facts, I, brother. I really do want to say that. I think, I mean, a lot of people don't want to say it, but at the end of the day, Wilder was the man in America. It's like, I don't. Yes, he was. He was. He was. And, and, and he remember, that hey, all the fighters knew it. All the rest of the fighters, like, they respected Wilder. Like, yo, Wilder is the guy. Wilder is the most dangerous man. Wilder was knocking everybody out. So they respected Wilder like that. I heard Erickson Lubin say, like, he respects Wilder. He's the man. Wilder was the number one heavyweight at the time Fury beat him. AJ I got mean, beat. AJ got I beat mean, by Andy Ruiz. Now, but Wilder, you gotta understand. Okay. What you gotta I understand is where me and Lisa come from. Mike Tyson era. It is on a whole different level. So I don't. I think it's a good era, though, Lisa. Talking yeah. about. I think this era is underrated. To be honest with you, you got fighters like Wilder, it's Anthony overrated. Joshua, Wild, Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua. Tyson Fury. You I think the I mean? competition is better now. Then when? Then when? Then 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 because what what did they have? Okay, they had Tyson. Wow. They had Tyson. Okay, he was knocking everybody out. And then you got Holyfield. Take the Klitschko brothers out of it, and then who else we got? The Klitschko oh. brothers need to be in there. Well, I'm saying if you take them out, who else? You got Pinkwin Thomas. You got Tony TNT Tucker. You got uh, okay, Tim Witherspoon. Terrible oh. Tim. Those are you got Wilder George Foreman, out, bro. Huh? Wilder would have knocked those dudes out, bro. He would have <laughs> no, knocked those guys out. No, you mentioned Lewis, Nathan Thomas, Tony Tucker. Wilder would have knocked. He wouldn't beat Tony Tucker. See, Tony Tucker was too good of a boxer. Wilder would have knocked. Too good of a boxer. AJ would have smoked them. Fury would have smoked those same guys, bro. No, bro. Hey, Wilder. Wilder is very athletic. Like I don't know, y'all gotta he be. Is. He is. Gotta be. He is very you athletic. gotta watch him train and see. I can't really. I can only tell you until you see it. And then you'd be like, okay, he's he's, he's different. All Bro, of these know. guys are athletic. All the top heavyweights are athletic. Okay, let me ask y'all this. So, so y'all okay. telling me Joshua is on top? So you telling me 
Before Wilder loses the WBC belt to Fury, you mm-hmm. have Anthony Joshua, the number one heavyweight in the world. No, nah, he wasn't no. because Andy Ruiz no. beat him. No. No, 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 yeah, after, yeah, before after, that, no, 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 before after, that, before after, after, Andy Ruiz's uh, fight, I'm just, I'm just asking the panel, you guys had yeah. Anthony Joshua, the number he one was heavyweight number in the world? One. He was consensus number one, yeah. No. No. Okay. Okay. But he lost, lost though, Lisa, so he got dropped down in the rankings, right? I no, didn't. he's talking about before. The, okay, I'm um, sorry. I'm sorry. Because, he was consensus okay, number so, one. The Americans don't want to put him there, but he was consensus number one. Because of his belt. All Americans. Because of his belt. It's not right? just the belts. It's the it's the it can't name. Be the skill. It's the it can't be his skills. He lost to Andy Ruiz. Okay. So I mean, I'm just I'm just and, telling you the facts. You said okay, said okay and, right? So we gotta. In my opinion, okay. Backup. Okay. Real, deal. Real deal. Real deal. Real deal. You know how many fighters have lost? Minimal time. Listen, this is a backup that had minimal time. Signed a contract because you really wanted to get that payday. But Anthony Joshua thought, oh, yeah, I'm about to just go in here and do my thing. And not knowing, Andy Ruiz was a legit heavyweight and overlooked right. him and got beat. So right. you're telling me. So you're telling me. So you're saying, okay, he lost to Andy Ruiz. And Wilder lost to Fury. Who's right. The better, who's the better heavyweight, Fury or Andy Ruiz? Come on now. Now, let me, you you let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. That Andy Ruiz that showed up to New York to fight AJ, right? The first time? The first time. What did that beat AJ? Okay. Does he beat Wilder? No. I think you're mistaken, brother. I don't think so. I think he beats Wilder. But we don't. But but that's that's All a right. what if you just you throw All a wrench right. in there and say that then that's a what if. <laughs> but if we go All if right. we go on the facts, Joshua lost. Let's that it is what it yeah, is. He it's did. In, it's in the record books. He did. Yeah, right. yeah. He did. He did. Yeah. Wilder lost. It's in the record books. But Wilder. Yeah. But you lost. know what the difference is? You know what the difference is? Yeah, Fury. AJ came out two days later and said no excuses. What did my man Deontay do? They both got a loss. Well, that's what, yeah, that's, what did my man Deontay go, do? Well, I don't want to go into their personal what they said after. That's that personal stuff. They, you know, what I'm saying they how they they was in their feelings and you know. As and that's certain. what and that's what I don't. That's the only thing. I, that's the only strike I got against Wilder. I don't like the excuses. I do not like excuses. Oh, okay, I get it. That's a personal thing. I get it. Okay, yeah, I can respect it. Yeah, I, I can respect it. But I think if if we, I just don't think AJ. He, he not that he can box and he's beating who's in front of him. But like I said, if Andrew Ruiz come in and beat you, and at that time the first fight Andrew Ruiz wasn't he wasn't in the best of shape. I don't, he didn't even get a full camp, so I don't. No, nah, Anthony. So Joshua I hope not the I truth. hope I hope everybody. Um, if a fighter loses, you know what I mean. Things happen sometimes, unfortunately, but uh, you know we gotta hold that same, keep that same energy, because fighters do lose, you know. As I said before, the only heavyweight that retired undefeated was uh what's his name? Marciano. So what did, okay, so if y'all say all that, what do y'all have Spence at? I'm just wondering. I have uh Bud is my favorite. Um, <laughs> um what's so, so Bud, funny? So Bud is number one. That's what I'm asking you. Where do you He's my favorite? Ways? As far as the what He's way. my favorite. Well, you know what? Oh, that's not this what is how I was raised in boxing. There's not no, there's until you have all the belts and you undisputed. That's the man. Okay. These guys are just title holders. Now, mm-hmm. Bud was the man at 140, but you know he. You no, know, there's no uh I mean if you're going by belts. But see, this is what I'm saying. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. asking. I'm not right. asking. I'm not asking like personal. Like I'm trying to get to the facts. So if we went to the facts, not not who you like and who like so you're saying Crawford is your number one though. I mean he's my personal favorite, way. but he's my personal favorite, but there is no man right now. Until mm-hmm. there's until there's a Everybody, disputed. everybody agree with that. <sighs> That's how it used to be in boxing. I don't know about Do now. Do you think any of these guys have separated themselves at welterweight? You asking me? Yes. 
I think I think Spence has. Absolutely. How? And and I can give you and I can give you the reasons why. Yeah, please. Okay, so matter of fact, if, if okay. First of all, he went in there and fought Porter. So okay. <laughs> Yeah, it was a close fight, but he, he did what he had to do, right? And he, and he won, right? It was a okay. rough fight, but he, he did what he had to do. My thing is this, right. though. Right now, who is Crawford's fault, right? I got to use Crawford. I'm just going to use him. And they keep talking about, oh, Crawford is friends with Porter. There should be no friends in boxing, right? So at the end of the day, it seems like Porter's ready and Crawford's not. Uh, Crawford needs to put his O on the line and go fight a real I, I think Porter you take away the Spence fight Porter is an undefeated fighter all his fights have been close if you actually look at all his fights Porter is a, a is a legit uh he comes forward let his hands go and he's a test to any welterweight and and, and Spence is the only one at the top that really pushed him to the limit and and, and, and won that fight and I think not only that I think Spence he came from the dirt. He came from the bottom and uh, did what he had to do in the what to what division. When Keith Thurman, when Keith Thurman did want to fight him, I don't know if y'all remember that. When all those interviews and Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia kept telling Spence, oh, yeah, you need to go get a belt. Go get a belt. We on. And, and all these top guys that had the belts were, were was talking that, that bullshit. Oh, we're not going to fight you because they knew and Spence was And that's the same the thing Spence is doing now. What do you mean, though? Who was he? Who was Spence? Spence won all the smoke. What you mean? Please explain that. He not he not shine from nobody. Shelton in the wanna, back. Who does Spence H money? Shelton in the back. No, I, I said he's he's saying the same thing. Go get the belt. Go get the belt. The same thing. They all say that once they get a, at a certain level, go get a belt. No, what I'm saying is though, who's he, who is Spence saying that to? I don't give he said that to Crawford. He said that to Crawford. He said, "I'll fight you. Go get a belt." He said, "So Crawford, Crawford came up and got a belt." Crawford, now it's sixty forty. Now it's something else. I'm cleaning up my side. Of the the same way. All these excuses. Same a thing bunch of he excuses. Said to him. So I don't. I don't put no. I don't put none of these guys like you know what I mean. They okay, all say that. So let's do this thing. So, so how did part. how did Crawford okay. get his belt? He knocked out Jeff Horn. Who did Jeff Horn beat to get his belt? Manny Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you think Jeff Horn really won, or was was Pacquiao robbed? Pacquiao was robbed. Okay, so with that being said, Are you calling me an AJ protected JFL? Well, come up in here and say it. What you say now? Uh, Real deal? I said, so don't you think that was a hand-picked fight for for Crawford? Crawford moved up to welterweight, and his first fight was Horn. Boom, you go in there and fight Horn, and you get the belt. Because he not got the first get, shot. Not only did you get the belt, you got the belt from somebody that he he didn't beat Pacquiao. Like it was all suspect, right? You just said it, right? right. Pacquiao. It was. Won. So at the end right. of the day, Crawford got the easiest belt in the world. Come on now. That's so the only guess, fight he could get because Porter, uh, you got to remember, Thurman had the belt and Thurman wasn't going to give him a shot. Well, yeah, we know. Yeah, the only belt yeah. he could get was the WBO. He took the shot by being the unified champion 40. He was he moved up to forty seven. He was first in line for that belt. He took his no, shot. He did, he did he won the it's belt. It's kind of obvious. Off. Thurman is injured, but, but he, he went. But here's down. the thing. But here's the thing. Let me ask you this. Now you are around boxers. You you in the sport. You are around boxers a lot. You are around the sport a lot. So let me ask you this. Let's look at Errol Spence's last five fights. Okay. Okay. Tell me one of those guys in those last five. That right now, if you're a betting man, I don't know if you are or not, you're a betting man, you put your money on any of those guys against Bud Crawford right now. Which one? I say Danny Garcia. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Are you crazy? Uh, okay. My bad. I, I can't well, say that. You, if, I, I, can't I, say mean, I, I, I mean, I think it'll be I a can't say fight that. for Crawford. Danny, Danny Garcia? I think. I got money, and I'll take all I'm bets. Saying, I'm not saying Crawford. Any five win. of those guys, he knocks them out. Those guys don't go 12. None of them. Even Porter, none of them. They don't go twelve with Crawford. Whoa, they don't. You don't think Porter Porter's goes twelve with Crawford. Tough fight. Yeah. Porter is Porter's sleep. Never been inside quick. of nine. Inside of nine what? rounds, Porter's oh. knocked out. No, nah, I can't agree with that. 
that's that's my pick. Because this is my because if I agree with because Crawford has never been in a, a fight like that. I don't. I you know what? I'm not gonna disagree with you. I'll say I have to see it. Right. I'm be real. Yeah, I'm I, I hate when people. Folks. Just I'm I got not him washing the whole welterweight I'm division. Not, I'm not just gonna say nothing. Because a lot of people just say things and don't think, so I'm I'm gonna really right, tell right, you. Right. I'm gonna tell you, right. bro, that I have to see that fight. I don't even. Yeah, know. that's what I want. That's what I want to see. Because Crawford has here... never been in a rough and tough fight, and we know Porter's gonna come forward, let his hands go, and that's gonna be an ugly fight. So, so here's my it. other question. Here's my other question to you: Why didn't Paul, Why didn't Porter activate the mandatory? Good question. That's a good question. That's all he had to do. That's all he had to do. And they had that. They yeah. actually talked about that on um, on um, barbershop conversation. Right. That was, that was a topic. So your your guess is best good as mine. Yeah. Why did you attack the mandatory? If you want to fight. Right. Because if you let, I'm telling you. I mean, I'm just saying. I've been watching boxing since 1969. Participated in the sport from 73 to 80. I've been watching. This is my this is my sport. I've been watching this stuff. I know what I see. If you put Virgil Ortiz in there with Crawford, he's going to get beat up. I don't think Boots Ennis is ready for Crawford. Probably going to get beat up. I agree. I agree with you there. Absolutely. Wait, okay, so if you, Porter, say, that, if you say he's ready for Spence, you think Boots is ready who? for Spence? No. No. Okay. No. Okay, I, just I wouldn't put I him in there with thorough. Spence. When you say something, I yeah. got to be, you know what I mean? I wouldn't okay. put him in there with, I wouldn't put neither one of those dudes in there with Errol right now. No. Okay. He probably beats both of them. Absolutely. I just okay. think, just in my opinion, you know how, you know, you've been around the sport. You know how you see guys like, oh, that dude is different. Yeah. Crawford's different. He's different. It's something about that kid. He's different. Like when I saw Boots, he's coming along, but Boots is different. That dude is gonna be a problem. But and Boots I said is this, different. Has he? I don't want to. Honestly, his last fight looked just easy. I, I have to see. I have to see Boots. He has, the competition has to come up, and then I can really say I haven't seen him really fight nobody. You know what I mean? So now I gotta, let me say this, Lisa. I'm gonna ask you this too. This is I'm gonna ask this to you too, Lisa. Yeah. I think Boots' next fight yeah. should either be Rashidi mm -hmm. Ellis or Jamal James. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think? That's a good. That's a good uh, test for him, because he, like uh, he passed the test with. He passed the test with. What's his name? Lipinets. 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 You know who else yeah. is a is a tricky guy? You know this would be a good fight too for Boots, the guy that uh, 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 what's his name? He's named after Sugar Ray Robinson. Oh, Ray Robinson. Yeah, Ray Robinson. He's tricky. That is He's kind crazy. of a step up fight. That's kind of a step up fight. Real He's deal. Crazy. Who do you want to see Boots fight next? Yeah, he He's is. He, is. He, he doesn't make people look good. Yeah, he makes his. He doesn't yeah, make he doesn't. people look good. So it would be interesting. Yes. How, how Boots would adapt well, to kinda, his style. When I kind of look at him, I kind of look at him like, um, kind of like how I look at Devin. So people say. Mm. Oh, Devin's pillow little fisted and he's this and that. But at the end of the day, Devin to make an A plus fighter look like a C plus fighter. So that's when I see all these yeah. fighters and, and they're yeah. supposed to be this and they're supposed to be that and they step up. Right. Yeah. And I look at how they make the other fighter look. You know what I mean? Right. So right. That's because that's, if you step up in competition, if you step up to a, to a, like if somebody could step up and fight Spence and make Spence look like a C, C plus fighter, then I'd be like, oh, right. okay, this guy, even if he loses. Right, I'd right. Be like, okay, this guy, that that's pretty decent. That's that was a good fight, you know what I mean? But we haven't seen that yet. So with Boots, I got to see a step up. He has a B B B A fighter. I really want to see him fight an A fighter. I don't know who though. I just don't know who. How about Danny Garcia, Philly fight? <sighs> I don't think he beats him. You think he beats him? I think he beats Danny. Danny's slow. Ooh. Danny's flat footed and slow. I, I, I know that, that, hey, that, that I agree easy. With you, but but Danny's smart. He counters. Danny, yes. Danny's very heavy handed, and if he touches yes. you, it's it's, it's yes. good night. So yes. I, I agree with you. And with Boots, Boots is very slick. So yeah. that would be a good fight. So I I agree with you there. 
That would yeah, be a good I think he beats still talking Danny. a lot of crap in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I think he what? beats Danny. I mean, because I'm just looking at the facts with Danny, right? Danny's a good fighter. He was he was his best at 140. Because every time he fought a big fight at 47, he got beat. Every time. Well, what's I think that's not. I think some, I think some talk. Is no. he moving up? Is Danny moving up? Is that official? Or I hope talk? not. I, I hope not. He, I don't think he, he gets up. smoked at 54. He gets smoked. Right. Right. Hey, he gets stay where smoked he is. at 54. Hey, hey, can you show my name? Can you show my name? I got him. But I got him. <laughs> where is <laughs> Danny Garcia? <laughs> Garcia? <laughs> you wrong for that. You wrong for that, man. You wrong for we that. You know, JFL going to see you back in the ring. There's some guys out here who might have his number. You know, he has some explaining dude, and he has he he got to show himself, man. Is he is he the Danny Garcia that beat Eric Morales? Is this the same Danny Garcia that gave Keith some trouble and uh, went in there with Sean Porter? We need to see Danny Garcia back in his ring. Uh, Virgil Ortiz, you know, these guys are coming for his spot. You know, he has to come out here and, and make us, you know, he got to prove himself again. He has, he has some plan to do. I'm going to be honest. I think Danny Garcia, um, some of that, some of his career was uh, some cherry picking and it made him look good. I think yeah, I don't. I, that's, that's when I I I liked his. Uh, he got a good uh, resume, but um, at one forty, you know, not yeah, to say that he, he was a man at forty. One forty seven. Yeah, he was a man. You know, but at one forty, you know, he. I don't know if it's that was more of really his real size, or because he is big now. He's 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 grown, you know, into his man strength or whatever. But um. He's a good fighter, though, no doubt. Yeah, I was just going like, uh, uh, my man said he liked the facts, so I was just going with the facts. Every mm -hmm. time Danny stepped up at forty-seven, he got beat. So I don't know where this Hall of Fame and all this stuff come from. I don't, I don't know either. Mm -hmm. uh, that because if that's the case, um, I don't know. I, I, I just, I just think Porter's overrated. Every, every fight Porter's in is tough. So if we're going to say Danny Garcia is the man, then Porter is definitely up there. Oh, Porter's a Porter's a tough fight for anyone. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. right. I do not disagree. But every time Porter had a real big fight, he got beat. Every time. Well, he, he beat Danny the one time, and then he beat – um. Kel no, he didn't beat Kel Brook. That's right. Got beat. Kel Brook was holding. He mm -hmm. beat um, what's his name? Uh, Bird guy up. from St. Louis. Yeah, Devin Alexander. Devin Alexander. Devin Alexander. Yeah. Paulie. Yeah. But he lost. Huh? Who else? He uh, he beat Polly Birdo. Um, Polly Birdo. Devin Alexander. I thought Birdo uh, quit he, too. He, yeah. He had Ugas. He got he. He has he Ugas on his resume. He lost he to got Ugas. He, Granados. he lost to Ugas. That Ugas yeah. fight was close. Close in the wood. Yeah, he lost to Ugas. Ugas beat him. They count that knockdown. Ugas wins. I, they didn't count it, though. I think he's a throwback fighter. Like, you know, he's not the best or the worst, but his footwork is really good. He's a, What I, I respect about him is he's very – he's a hard worker. So sometimes you know, even if – not the best. You're still a hard worker, and you give it your all for the most part. You know who he reminds me of, y'all? You know who uh, Sean Porter reminds me of? Who? Ken Norton. Just could never quite get there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, got yeah. there a couple of times, won the title once, but just could never quite get there. He's like a That's Tim Porter Bradley type. Me. Sean Porter reminds yeah. me of Timothy Bradley. Right, he, right, right, right. Dog. I think Bradley yeah. was better though. I think Tim Bradley was better, but Porter is good though. He's a, you know he's a dog. He comes to yeah. fight. I yeah. think uh, I think yeah. Terrence Crawford dominates him. I think Terrence Crawford would have stopped him. Now now why he didn't activate his mandatory and force that fight? Obviously he we didn't know. Want it. We know it's money. We it's know. money, guys. It's money. I believe. Yeah, he wanted to be paid. He wanted to be yeah. paid. To it would have went to first bid though. I believe they said it could have went to the first bid that fight. Triller would have picked and it if, up. And if and if top right. rank <laughs> and if top rank bid it on it, he wasn't gonna. It could have been like up. the Tiafimo Lopez fight. It could have been Triller. just like a Tiafimo. 
You know, yeah, they true. would have went up for purse bid. I would like to see it too. Let me ask y'all this: Is that a pay per view fight, Porter and uh, Crawford? Oh. I think it is. Yeah. Oh, and Trilla especially. Yeah, Trilla would have put Absolutely. ten. They probably would have made ten million dollars. Good. They paid good money for that fight. Yeah. They need. They need a fight like that. I don't you know? think so. I don't think it is. They could have put it on. You don't ESPN. think so? Yeah. I like it on ESPN. Draws, you want to pay for a few draws? You know what I mean? If if Trilla is putting T.O. versus Cam Bosis on there, they had to put Sean Porter versus uh, Terrence Crawford. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. right. No, I, That's I, a, I mean, yeah. if Top yeah. Rank did it. I mean, if Top Rank did it. Oh. I think it's pay per view worthy. I think people are paying for that. I would. I definitely sure pay for that fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to see it. I'm yeah. going. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely. If I was at home, I definitely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think well, whoever, I um, see who Bud is going to fight next should be interesting. I think it's going to be Virgil. I think it's Virgil. I think yeah, I've been hearing it. Yeah, they 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 pushed um Virgil up to number one, but that doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how the WBO is, but the WBC is really weird. Like, you could be number one, but that don't mean you're um the um mandatory. You know what I'm trying to say? All right. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask. Uh, let me shit. ask. Real deal. Real deal. How's it work with the WBO? How long does uh, Bud have to fight again? Because he just fought in November. How long does he have? That's a good question. Honestly, I I don't even know. Hmm, WBO wise, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I don't even know. When did the Sean Porter become mandatory? He can't because he, he can't have the belt longer than. could deposit up to thirty. Hello? That's six months. So May is six months, right? <laughs> H H money. Doesn't he have to defend his belt within the six month time period? I'm not That's sure. Right. I'm not sure how that works, uh, Shelton, to be honest. But uh I'm disappointed in Sean Porter, man. He could have forced that fight. He was talking like he wanted that smoke. And, you know, he, he punked out the fight, man. And I respect Sean Porter, but he sh- he should have gave the fans what they wanted, and that was the Terrence Crawford fight. And Crawford wanted it. You know what I mean? Crawford said he was going to knock him out. Porter could have forced it. Now Virgil Ortiz got that position. Now we we could we could talk about Terrence Crawford versus Virgil Ortiz. I could see that fight happening. I think Crawford wins. Yeah. That's yeah, a wash. That's, that's, he that's watches Virgil. Contest. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he I watches Virgil. Really, I don't really want to see it, but I mean, I think Crawford. I don't want to see nice, that. Though. Don't, Virgil a good fighter, but Crawford is. Virgil get hit Crawford too much. Virgil get hit right too now, much. Crawford number one pound for pound, bro. Crawford, you know, Crawford is a different type of fighter than Maurice Hooker. You know, Maurice Hooker was <laughs> definitely, hard definitely Hooker hit him with some shots. I like Virgil though; I respect him. And if Virgil takes that fight, man, I would, you know, give him a lot of credit for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't, Virgil. I, I give him credit for stepping up, but it's not going to end well for Virgil. I don't, I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I think he's doing what he, what he, what he wants, what he, what he, what he's supposed to do. You know, take on that yeah. role. You know, um, right. I think he'd be wise to um, activate it and if he wants to make more money. You know, force the purse bid. Oh, I don't want him and Crawford. I see it did, so he definitely should go ahead and fight. Crawford. Ain't nothing wrong with him. If Virgil want to <laughs> get in there, I don't have no problem with that. This is boxing. Nobody's supposed to be like Dang you can't be babying these boxes. So yeah. much if you lose. So what? Whoever lose, who cares? But it's the thing with boxing. Put your ass in the fighters. ring and fight. You could petition for so much, so it's a lot of funny business going on. That's why people just you know how many um comments I seen in the last week or so? People talking about that's why MMA is better. I'm like, wow, all of a sudden this just came out of nowhere. I saw these yeah. MMA fans, they were fighting with boxing fans. It was crazy. M- MMA, they, is MMA they fight each other. They fight each it's other. High. It's uh, it, it depends to your, your taste. You know, I'm not really big on guys laying on the ground on top of each other for about five or four minutes. You know, that's that's <laughs> it's, it's it's not after a while. You know, you it's like it's a ref on step in and and it's, it doesn't. I don't want to say it doesn't take a lot of skill, but it's it, it it's not to the same skill set as boxing. You know? No, boxing is way harder. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. boxing is way harder because you got to be more technical and you can only use your hands. You know, MMA, you can I, use I, everything. Feet, yeah, you, elbows. You can wrestle guy. Yeah, and wrestle okay. for about four minutes on the ground, and then nothing happens. You know, that's that, that's when it gets it, it's boring. And you have some people who, who on their toes. You know, I, I guess it's, it's whoever like 
if you just like, it, it's, it's, I would say it's more in a sense, that's more barbaric in a sense and, and not more, you know, scientific and, and, and science to it. It's, you know, I can go in there and wrestle the motherfucker, you know, you know, and might get the, I might lift his ass up and slam him and then that's, that's, that's the fight, you know, but to get in the ring and, and box with a guy, that's, you just can't do that. It's, a, it's damn near impossible. Yeah. I don't think we ever get the crowd for the Spence fight, though. It's going to happen. I don't think so. Maybe. It's coming. I, it might. Oh, it's coming. You know what? I'm going to disagree with you, Real Deal. I think we're going to get that fight in December or January of next year. I really believe that. So you think, okay. So so basically, you would say the next their next fight. Yep. No, I'm saying Crawford's going to yep. fight somebody because he's in training camp. Right. So I know he's not in training camp for nothing. He's going to do something. Go fight somebody. Uh, Errol oh. is training because he's probably gonna get that Ugas fight. Yeah, he after that, that he got that belt. That's yeah. So after that, what's next? What does he have left? There's only one fight left. If well, he got three Porter. and Crawford got one, there's only one fight left, right? But, but Spence, Spence has came out and already said it. He he's not waiting for Crawford. So if he gets the belt from Ugas, I think Spence. Don't be surprised if Spence moves up. I'm just telling y'all. Don't be surprised. Why? I don't think he's gonna sit around and wait. And you know what? If he oh, moves yeah, up, his about. legacy will not be what it could be. Okay, that will always be a mark on his legacy. Because you could have fought that man and you did. You ran the 54. So well, I, it, I, think, it, I, think, I think it's you on ran both the 54. Them, I think it's on both yeah. of them. But some, I'm, I'm just leaning towards Spence more. I don't think he, I don't think Spence is the, is the person that's not. Um, I think Crawford is the one that the reason a fight doesn't happen. Because I don't think, how do you, okay, let me explain this to me. So let's say Spence goes and gets that third belt, right? He beats Ugas. Right. So, right. so you really, you really believe, or let me ask you, because I know what the media says, but do you really believe that's a 50 50 split? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Earl is not a. The more, the, I, it, I mean, the, the argument that most people make is well, with Crawford has done at 135 and 140, doesn't uh, warrant him as a, as a, as worthy, you know, but that doesn't. Well, I mean, the pay per view so numbers we... aren't the same. Hmm. I mean, it's it's damn near the same. Neither <laughs> one of them over five hundred thousand or a million. You know, uh, if, if if Deontay Wilder and AJ and all these guys can get 50 50 splits and all this other stuff, then that's that's, that's smoking mirrors. You understand what I'm saying? Um, just because Arrow has beaten uh, Sean Porter and Kel Brook, and he fought lightweight Mikey, you did what I'm saying? Who didn't hold the title? That doesn't warrant him as a uh, side in my eyes, you know. But I think that's just the narrative to push to prevent the fight happening, you know. In all reality, Crawford is the man in boxing, and Earl is is a is, is a is a good champion at one of 147. And that's really what it, we call a spade a spade. It's a 50-50 fight. It's, it's, it's basically for undisputed, make it 50-50. Then if you want to go into the petty bag and say, well, I just fought these guys within my 31 years of boxing, and that's it, and that shit is, it sounds, it doesn't, if you really say what it is, well, Earl's been at 147 for damn this long, and he's just finally getting a, his last belt from Ugas when he's been on PBC this whole damn time. You know, well, you gotta, Manny well, Pacquiao you gotta, was there, and well, it, you gotta, it makes them look bad. Went over. The history just went over it, remember? Nobody, these Ooh. guys didn't want to fight him when they had a belt. Danny didn't want no smoke, right? Danny was, a, uh, Danny was really ducking him. Keith Thurman was ducking him, so I, I mean, I get what you're saying, but that wasn't his fault. He's well, been right, way climbing, climbing the rankings, doing what he had to do. Who had a belt? When Arrow got his belt from Cal Brook, who also came into the division? Who came in the division? They had a belt. Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, and he can he can never hide that fact. That's that, that conversation that he had with Terrence Crawford. He, he, I think that that's another reason why he's drinking so damn much. Because he can't take that shit back. That he wanted to go another route instead of fighting that man. You can't sit there all like, in, a, in, a, in that setting and then say you do all this shit and then turn around and say I'm going to take this easy route. That, that was coward shit in my eyes. Like, you talking all this about what you're going to do to me and all this other shit. Then, you know, let's make the fight. You know, but no, I'm going um, to fight Mikey. I, I, my, my advisor say, you know, I might, I might get Sean Porter and, and back, probably double back to Keith Thurman. And, and all this other shit. No, go fight this man. You ain't had no other fights. You ain't had to take the mighty fight. You dig what I'm saying? You could have. You was strap season. Go fight Crawford. You know. I think you know, it was 60-40. 60-40. Yeah. 
That's that's just my opinion. Yeah, I don't think it's. But that's the thing I don't get. And now, this is the thing I don't like. I, I mean, I don't even take that. It's fight funny. 50-50. I don't like this fucking uh, this uh, A side B side. But neither one of you motherfuckers is the A side. Neither one of you motherfuckers has ever sold over three hundred and seventy five pay per view pay per view buys. Neither one of you. So there is no A side. You motherfuckers are equal. As a matter of fact, Bud has done more in the sport than you. So fuck all this A B side shit. Just make the fight, man. 50-50. Yeah. If I was Bud, if I was Bud, when he said 60-40, I'd have said bet. Sign it up. Because after I whoop your ass, then I'm going to get 70-30 in the next one. That's what I was. I mean, it's, yeah, it's going to be <laughs> it's your, no, automatic rematch. I don't think I, I disagree with that point right there. I think this, once I Bud mean, knocks I, him out, I think once Bud knocks him out, Earl's not going to want to fight him again. That's just, yeah. that's just, when he fights Bud, that's the last fight that he'll ever have. He's going to retire. I thought that was a good point, though. You're right. I think if you are the man and you say you this, take the 60-40, win, because on the back end, on a rematch, you're going to get all that back. So you're right. Exactly. Agree. You should have took it. That's what I would have done. That's you're what right. I would have done. That, yeah, you're right, because at the end of the day, if you believe in yourself, so then you, you're going to win that first fight. Right. And, 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 and like I said, you're going to win, win on the back end. Now tell me. Now tell me this. Now tell me if I'm wrong, because sometimes... Lisa, you know this. H Money tells me I'm wrong. But tell me if I'm wrong, a uh, real deal. I'm the unified welterweight champion of the world. Two belts, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the welterweight division, I can make any fight that I really want to make, can I? For the most part, yeah. So if Bud ain't shit and Bud's too small and I'm the big fish, and blase this and blase that. Why you don't run your ass over there and go get that strap? So you mean like what take a take a less cut or what are you saying? I mean I'm what saying, do you mean by take less cut? What do you mean by take less I'm cut? I'm saying I want you to mean fight. just come in, come in and just give Crawford I want the belt. Crawford say, just go what Crawford say and just go get the belt. No, 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 no. I'm saying you say it's strap season. I need this tub right here. You saying it's strap season. He got a strap, so go over there and get it and just end the shit. Well, if it's so easy, go take it, right? Yeah, I hear you, but that we we still at this we the split because that's all they talk about is just the split. It seemed like to me that's the issue. Earl broke the split that's, up. Earl went to the public cap. and he started talking about splits and not wanting to fight. One minute it went from I'm gonna punish you, I want the easy route. Then it came down to. I'm a 70 30. I'm an 80 20. And that shit right there is that was the most unchampion shit, man, unmanly shit I've ever seen from a guy that's a world champ. He, he could have went on the back end as way he's doing with Ugas. We don't hear shit with Ugas. You know, he could have did the same shit with Croft. He tried to disrespect that man publicly. You know, and it's all it's all on earth. You know, and, and I, I just can't expect another man to be like, yeah, yes, sir, yes, yes, and balls. You know, like, hell no, yo. But he you gotta you gotta wrong. say the same thing for you gotta say the same thing for Earl though. Earl's like I, I get where Earl's coming from. He's he's came through the rankings at the bottom. Nobody wanted to fight him. He came up, did what he had to do. So now he's like, Man, I'm not he's not bending or breaking. So I mean it, I can see it from both sides. But and this is what I see. I'm gonna just tell you what I see. And you can say I'm crazy or or I'm biased or whatever. This is what I see. Earl don't want to fight that dude until he has to. I agree. Don't want to fight that dude. I agree. I think he's banking he on that he, he ages out, he loses, or something crazy. He's he banking on everything in the world. And I just, I think it's just, it's, it should have been happening. And that's what he's banking on. You know, that's what he was advised to just wait. You know, I think that's what that is. I think his advice you know, is going to wait and take all these other fights. And really got you. But, doesn't, but doesn't that go both ways? If, we, if we're going to say, so couldn't we say, though, both of them, either one could take the split and be like, all right. Fuck it, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that and get it on the back end. Or, or, uh, Spence could be like, okay, you, you right. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna give you what you want, Crawford, and boom, let's do the fifty fifty, and then I want this for the for the mandatory rematch. Facts. So couldn't we couldn't that's we say both could, ways? It, it could go both ways. It could go both ways. But see, here's my thing, right? I I listened to my man Roy Jones one day, and they asked Roy Jones. What was your mentality when you was on top? He said, my mentality was if you had a belt, I was coming to get it. I didn't care who you was, where you was. If you had a belt, I was coming to get it. 
Right. And yeah. that's the way these dudes should be. And they're not like that. Except for Crawford. Except for Crawford. And I think I, I, I can say the more I <laughs> yeah, listen to love him, Crawford, man. No, I could say when I like he could have, you know, just went over to the PBC side to make fights. But as a man, and if you have an ego, I'm not going somewhere where people try to freeze me out and not give me an opportunity. You know, that's 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 kind of belittling my, my intelligence and myself. If PBC fighters and, and PBC in the whole they weren't trying to, you know, make those title fights. You don't Why think he wins? Just... You don't think he wins over there at PBC better? No, it's it's the it's principle. It's moral and principle at that point. I'm on I'm gonna leave Bob who who when he first gave my shot, I just kept on winning, you know. And that's what he did, you know. He got a shot, he, he had a feeling for a fight, and he won. And he kept winning, you know. Yeah, he, but Bob you know, disrespected him on live TV. Like I so we talking about being in a one man. sense. You you was, right in one sense, it and was, other sense. His guarantee is bigger than everybody's on the PBC side. Did you know that? It was a two-sided coin, too. Bud, Bud did say some shit that, as Bob is a man, Bob not going to bite his tongue, you know? So, right. I, like I, I said, I, my whole bold account was, again, that shit promoter and you the fighter. Y'all got to talk on the back. Again, there's a man on the back then, you know, not in public. You know? That's why I was on both of them and all. And even PBC, yeah. PBC, stir, PBC stirred that shit up. You did right. what I'm saying? They, that's what I said. That's, so that's, that's what they do. Let me ask you. And you this. heard what I said, right? If Bud his, signs, his guarantee is bigger than everybody else's over there at the PDC. <clears throat> Bud gets 4.5 for fight. always strive for greatness. He. Okay, so this is my thing. If if Bud. Okay, when he had a chance to get away from top rank, my thing is this. Why not just get away? Okay, let me ask this. If he signs the PBC, you guys don't think we see the Spence and Crawford fight by now? Or, or it's in the works? You really don't, don't know compared to him standing no. top rank and with Bob no. and his nonsense. No, I'm Gary, telling you, it's, Gary, it's, it's just my gut feeling. <laughs> this is just my gut feeling. That dude did not want to fight him. Errol was not going to fight him. He don't want to fight him. He doesn't. <laughs> but I think the chances are better if, he, if Crawford's on PBC. I think it's a better chance. Bob Arum is full of full of it. I don't, I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> see that. That's my thing. Bob Arum, see, Bob yeah. Money. Bob Am is about what he's going to get in his cut. Right. He don't care right. about Crawford. He said no, he so don't. At the end of the day. He, he didn't care about Ali. So he's not supposed about to, though. At the end of the day, he's not supposed to. That's that's like asking my boss, you know, I'm putting the work in. He's he not, that's not what he's supposed to do. You know, that's asking for, you're attaching yourself to people that's here today, gone tomorrow. You get what right. I'm saying? So I but understand you, that part, you know. But again, when we look at the P, entirety of PBC, it's, is it, especially at Walter Week, you know, if we couldn't get Keith Thurman versus these other guys, Keith Thurman, Cal Brook, it's different, Keith, though. You know, it's different. What's the difference? I just, I just think I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I, I think, I think Crawford and, and Spence is a mega fight. Everybody in the world wants to see, and I think if Crawford would have signed the PBC, he could have easily said, you know what, I'm gonna come to PBC. Not, Mark me down for a one year deal. Let's see what we can do. And 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 you, you that would be a mega fight we would get. And then if you why did he have to come over there? I agree. I, I understand. I know that, he didn't. I mean, he Spence, wouldn't though, because you're saying because he Thurman, wouldn't have to sign his life away. Yeah, he wouldn't have to sign his life away. Spence and Thurman didn't even happen, and they both on PBC. And Manny Pacquiao came to PBC, and the uh, Manny Pacquiao never even fought Earl Spence. So it's not like they're making all the fights in the welterweight division because Earl Spence and Keith Thurman never even fought. Earl Spence and Pacquiao ain't fought. Caleb Plant, I, I, think, I, mean, I, think it's fans, I, I think it's fans. We're focusing on the wrong thing. I don't give a – can you curse here, a H Money? Yeah, go ahead. I don't give a fuck where they fight at. <laughs> I mean, I don't give a fuck what platform they on. I don't give a fuck what network they on. These motherfuckers, these suits or whatever, should put their egos to the side and do what's best for boxing I agree. and put the fights on. So me arguing about where he signed or why he yeah. here, like we Facts. picking sides, and that's not yeah. what boxing is about. Facts. If ben, Israel, ben Israel says shouting, smoking runs, talking crazy. But Ben Israel, hop on, Ben. be real with it. If we, yeah. you got somebody like Bob Arum, 
he's a reason. Like he stops a lot of things. He stops a lot of things. Yeah, he admitted yeah. that he stopped the so bullet. Fight. Fight. Well, his, fights go, his fighters go to uh, his fighters go to, to a bid war, a purse, mm-hmm. a purse. You know what I'm saying? And 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 then top rank doesn't even pick up the fight, and his fighters end up fighting under something else. So. Yeah. He admitted See, that he stopped again, the packing and that's, like, he that's that. business. You understand what I'm saying? And I can't fault Bob for him thinking longevity. You know, Absolutely. Again, He's been in the game know, a long time. Absolutely. You're right. Only fighter I think that he truly attached himself to was Manny Pacquiao. And that's why Terrence Crawford did not get that fight previously. Got that because yeah. Manny, you know, Manny Pacquiao was stuck for a while. He stuck there for a while. You know. So y'all really don't think we'd be one step closer? If Crawford said, all right, I'm going to do a one-year deal. I'm not going to sign my life away. I'm going to come to PBC for one year. Let's see what happens. We you know what's get? How much do you think PBC would pay him in guarantee to come over there? But, two, but you're two, right. Two I'm million like the other dudes? <laughs> two million like the other dudes? But look, yeah. <laughs> you you would have to look at the back end in the rematch. You, you That could be a three-fight That could be a three fight situation. Like, I'm, I'm, Let's be honest. Let's say Who's to say Crawford doesn't go in there and it starts a uh, split decision to Crawford, and then we right. come back at the rematch and Spence Spence gets a sp- split decision. Now we got fight three. Like that's mega. Right. Right. I mean, I'm just I'm just talking. What if? Right. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? I, I just see the ego behind, I, the ego of uh, how PBC kind of went about it. I personally, I I would never you know leave top rank to go to PBC. After the after the show they just put on um Terrence Crawford. I, I feel less of a man personally. You know, we could have been did business. I was been I've been did, I previously have done business with you, but now because you're protecting certain fighters in a sense and you're trying to belittle me in the process, lead into these questions, whoever I fought, who is this and all this other stuff. Why would I even come over there and, and, and trust you? How can I trust you? You understand what I'm saying? That's that's I think that would be foolish. Leery too. You know, I, I would not I would not trust him. You just can't trust a person that, that belittled like, you as a man. And you're telling me like, this is They act like they, like the princesses or princes or something over there, like they better than everybody. The fuck only out Porter. Here. Only Porter speaks out. Only Porter is the only person on PVC that does not belittle times, bro. Only and here's part. the coldest part, right? Here's the coldest part. You're talking about who I fought, who I fought. It don't matter who I fought. You ain't fought me. <laughs> you ain't fought me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. they did to me, can you do that? I don't think you can do that. And you would never hit They hit me, see. they hurt me, they yeah. dropped me. Okay, can you do it? Exactly. And Crawford went it. to his last fight. <laughs> Crawford went to Earl Spence versus Danny Garcia because he wants that smoke with him. I think it's going to be bad for both of them. I think, like I said, I think Spence gets the belt from Ugas. He moves up, and I think. Legacy wise, if, you, if you're gonna say Spence, and you gotta say Crawford too, and we're always gonna be like, why this fight didn't happen? Oh, he's gonna get him. He hit Chase because Errol ran. Because he's gonna go undisputed. He gonna go get the ass of the belt, and then he's gonna go chase his ass. He, he can't. You can't go too far because Errol not gonna move up and go for titles. He's gonna be sitting around. Be, okay. 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 Uh. 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 DJ. Yeah. Errol Spence versus Jamel. Who you got? Jamel, he gonna knock him out. It, that's he gonna knock him out. Errol, Errol not like that. Yeah, but they know each other. They spar all the time. That fight, that fight's not gonna happen. Ever happen though? If he move up to fifty four, it gotta happen. Yeah, it's happen. Well, yeah. Nah, he, he would think, move up to sixty. I don't think they would fight each other. He can't move to sixty because Jamal, Jamal, his knock. brother's at sixty. He gonna he can't move to sixty. He Andrew busting out the team on sixty. Huh? He busting out the seams at 60. He's a big guy. But he can't move to 60 because his brother's at 60. His brother's running 60. He That's can't go to 60. I'm, he's busting out the seams at 60. You could yeah, see. Yeah, but what can you? Oh, you talking about Jamal. Jamal, yeah. yeah. But Jamal don't act like he want to move up to 60. You talking about take a COVID shot. You got to be over 26 or 25 or whatever. And I'm at 60. I'm not at 68. He making all these fucking excuses in the world. Yeah, if Earl moves up, his first fight is a joke be right me. now. Boxing is a joke right now, in yeah. my opinion. It's like, it's like, um, everybody's, you know, like, like all of this, um, capping and all of this, um, 
<laughs> social media call outs and all this stuff. Yeah, it's corny, weird it's boring. Shit. We adults, we ain't got time for no games. <laughs> she talking. Hey, you speaking the truth though. She keep yeah. it real though. She's right. Yeah, though. yeah she right. right. She's absolutely she right. right. She's right about that. Tyson Fury. So how y'all? So how the panel on, feel on about fight, that? Fight hype, hooping and hollering. I like I'm excited. It, though. I'm crazy. Well, Lisa, you excited? Tyson Fury. You excited? Though. I'm excited. He entertaining. I'm excited. Uh, so talk that shit, Tyson Fury, and he back it up. So you know that's what it's all about. That's what Ali did. That's what Mayweather did. They talk that shit and back it up. Some people talk that shit and they couldn't back it up. That's just what. That's just boxing. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, I know it's part of the. You know, it's part of it. He calling out the MMA people though. Yeah, and, I um, want to see Nigerian hey. warriors. Tyson Fury whooped his ass. Tyson Fury beat the hell out of Francis Ngannou. In a boxing bigger. ring, of course. He ain't getting in a locker gun with that fool. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, real deal. Real deal. I'm excited. I think that's going to be a better fight than people think. I was just watching uh, Jorge Linares today, and he's yeah. talking real greasy. He talking real greasy. Yeah, he posted oh, with to. Devin. Yeah, yeah, he's I, mean, I think Devin is next up in boxing, though. I think he he's the truth. Yeah, Devin I is think. the truth. He is. Oh, yeah. Think. He's actually in the gym with Devin Haney. So, real deal, he been in the gym with Devin Haney uh, plenty right. of times. You know, so oh, he can okay. let you know firsthand. I think Devin yeah. is going to smooth the knowledge out like a perm. <laughs> he gonna smooth shorty up, man. Listen, you can't underestimate Linares, though. If he you're Devin Haney, he I gonna knock Linares out with a left hook, and that's gonna be all she wrote. Well, we ain't okay. gonna underestimate Linares. Let me ask the panel. Three time world champion, bro. He dropped long. Let me ask the panel. Start with Let me ask. Yeah, you gotta respect these fighters, bro. So you gotta respect what he brings to the table. Anything. Let me ask the panel. He getting knocked out. Let me ask the panel. Start with H money. Knocked out though. H money, start, let me start with you. How can Linares win this fight? What does he have to do? Damn, I really don't think there's no way he can win this fight. To be honest with you, but if if you Linares, you gotta, you know, he got experience. If one thing he does have, it's experience. He does have punching power. He showed it against Lomachenko when he dropped him. He has speed. Former three-time champion, so uh, his experience, uh, Shelton, I would say, and his speed, his speed and punching power. Lisa, how does he win? He don't. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's crazy. Real deal. What does Lenarius have to do? Well, my my number one option, he he's not gonna win. But he, <laughs> to even make the fight look good, yeah, he's gonna have to. I think he's gonna have to be in the best shape of his life because he's gonna have to come forward. Let his hands go, and and I think just from watching Devin spar, you if you show any types of sort of tired, it's over with. So he's gonna have to come forward, let his hands go, and hopefully he lands a lucky shot. That's the only way, because he's I don't think he's out boxing Devin. Um, Devin's feet work is way better. Devin's gonna use the ring, and like I said, if Lenars gets tired in the late rounds, it's over with. So I, I his his best hope is just to press the fight early. Hopefully you catch him with a uh, what they call it a, a puncher's chance and 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 and, and that's it. DJ, he, he doesn't win. Mm-hmm. And Lenora's DJ Lenora's has bad scar tissue too. Yeah, he gets cut a lot. DJ, what do you got to do? Yeah. Lenora's has to stay. He has control. You know the outside foot. He has to stay. Keep his foot on the outside. You know, keep keep going towards his right side. You know, set you know, faint, you know, control the outside foot. Do do some feints, faint rather well, you know, faint with the jab, faint with the right hand, and set it and ultimately set that right hand up, you know. And sometimes if he gets deterred, you know, that right hand is not landed, you know, but you know, keep coming back to it. He has to set his punches up and make sure they count, you know. Control the outside foot and it'll be a great fight. Not square, and not square up and not square up. He square up is over. I think he got to make it ugly. I think he got to press Devin. He got to get in his grill. He got to make it nasty and dirty. He got to right. try to overpower Devin because I don't think right. he can outbox Devin. No way, no how, 
no year ever. Devin right. should box his ears off. I think he got to get inside and make it dirty, and that's the only way he got a chance to win that fight. I think if he stays on the outside, uh, Devin, will, Devin will win the fight unanimously, easily, and it'll yeah. be easy night. Yeah, 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 easy. He probably won't win around. I don't think. I don't think he can box with Devin. I really don't. Yeah, Devin okay. is young. Yeah. 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 He okay. Said pray. Yeah. Ben Israel said he got to pray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I'm really upset okay. to see a female when he got them belts and ran off. He should have got them belts instantly, he turned around and said, I want to fight uh, Devin. Now he's talking about he want to fight Ryan and shit. Right. Like, I don't know. That's so he got to come back and fight Devin because Ryan is on a hiatus right now. Well, let me ask you Devin. this. Let me ask you this, real deal. Now I've been telling people this, and they tell me I'm tripping. Do you do you think I'm right? I think I think that Tiafimo Lopez is under tremendous pressure right now, because if he goes twelve with this dude, or by some lucky act of God he loses, what's his mm. career gonna look like? Mm. Like bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no. Million vanilla. Well, you know what? No, I, I wouldn't say he, that. If I he goes twelve, that. yeah, he. Uh, man, that's a tough one. It should. I don't think it should go twelve though. No, that's what I'm saying. He got to knock this guy out. He got to do it fast, right? Three yeah, rounds. Because my thing is, if you don't, if you don't knock him out, well, okay, yeah, it's a payday, but you could have just fought Devin for the WBC. That would have made more sense to me. Because, see, people are forgetting, people are forgetting, right, that this fight with Triller, this is a one-fight deal. Right. Yeah, because he's top rank. And if and if Triller don't buy him out, you got to go back and see Uncle Bob. Absolutely. And Bob don't oh. forget. Yeah, and Bob, Bob don't forget. Now, you got to go back to see your pimp. Now, Bob, that's <laughs> <a deal. laughs> Big hand, Bob. But look, if he, and if he loses, it's just all it's going to do is make Bob look even better. Oh so yeah, if he loses, it's a wrap. He's on the shelf. Bob is going to yeah, be like, he loses, hey, he's on the shelf. He definitely ain't going to lose. He's going to knock him out. See if Emma Lopez going to knock out George Campos. Lee Selby just outboxed the dude. It was a split decision. He barely won that fight. I thought Lee Selby won that fight. Then Mickey Bay, Devin Haney's trainer, you know, and he uh he passed this prime. He, he had a split decision with George Cambosis. Tiafimo Lopez, bro, going to destroy George Cambosis. He's going to knock him out. Going to make it look yeah, easy. He's going to punish him. If Cambosis goes past three rounds, I'm going to be disappointed. He Ooh. probably go past, well, probably give him five rounds. Be generous. Six rounds. Give him six. Six, six seven. Yeah, six. Yeah. I'm, st I'm sticking with three rounds. If he doesn't, if he doesn't get make it past, if he makes it past three rounds. Tiafimo Lopez hit hard. He could knock him uh -huh. out beforehand. Hey, y'all being harsh, man. Wow. For real. Now, hard, let's, go this, let's go to this one, y'all. We got Taylor Ramirez coming up real soon. The 22nd, I believe. I got That's Josh Taylor. Idea. I like Josh Taylor. Jo I think Josh Taylor, underrated fighter. He got a similar skill set to Joe Kawasaki, and he, they both from the U.K., I think he's the next Joe Kawasaki. He punished uh, Regis Prograce in that fight. He beat Ivan uh, Berichick as well. He beat Victor Postal. I think Josh Taylor, underrated fighter. I think he should be on the top 10 pound for pound after this fight. Matter of fact, he should probably be uh, top five after becoming undisputed by beating uh, – Jose Ramirez wiping out his weight class. I think Josh Taylor's on a different level, and he's been in training camp with Tyson Fury, you know what I mean, and Billy Joe Saunders. So, yeah, he working. So, Josh Josh Taylor is going to win this fight easily. Lisa? I got Josh Taylor all day. Um, I think he's a more talented fighter, although um, I give Ramirez a lot of credit. He's, a, um, he's also a great, talented fighter, pressure fighter. A vicious body puncher, you know. Um, but I, I, I respect Taylor as far as um him winning the WBSS tournament and coming out. And um, he hasn't had any like real easy fights. You know what I mean? Like he's been in there tough. So 
you know, I, I, I just think he'll edge it. That's just my opinion. Real deal. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely it's gonna it's gonna be an ugly fight, but I got Josh Taylor winning it. He should he should if he doesn't stop him, it should be a split decision. DJ Um I think Robert Garcia is a, a very great trainer. Um I think Ramirez, he, he's 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 different, you know. Um you know, he's very different. He's way bigger than Mikey. You know, um I just think in this fight, skill wise, skill for skill, Josh Taylor is just a little a little bit more ahead of him. You know, um and the Regis Pro Ray fights show that Taylor can take a punch. He can take a lot of punches and he can go twelve rounds. Um the guys Jose Ramirez has beaten their good wins, but styles when those two styles collide, I, I just see Taylor just cruising and cruising to that decision. Well, I guess I'm the hot man out because I got Ramirez. I think Ramirez is a dog. I think he's going to wear Josh Taylor down and probably stop him late. I got Ramirez with 10th to 11th round stoppage. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a possibility. It's, it's going to be an ugly fight. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, I seen um Jose Ramirez get pretty much outboxed by Victor Postal in his last fight. I mean, um, and I seen Josh Taylor dominate Victor Postal. You know, I seen Terrence Crawford, you know, destroy Victor Postal, dropped him four times. And uh, I think uh, Josh uh, Josh Taylor too fast, way too fast. Jose Ramirez, he's very slow, very slow, but he does have power. You know, he's very rugged. I just think uh, skills, skills wins fights. And Josh Taylor got a lot of skills, man. He got a lot of skills. Yeah. But I don't think he got enough pop to keep Ramirez off of him. Oh, he do. I seen Regis Progress that found that out. And he had his nose leaking when Josh, Josh Taylor was punching him in the face, hitting him with those uppercuts and those temple shots. You know what I mean? Ask Regis. He didn't Pro stop him, though. You. Yeah, ask Regis. He didn't stop Regis. Regis. Regis he didn't didn't stop you Regis. About him. Yeah, ask Regis. He took his old way. Regis didn't be. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's well, hopefully if if Josh if Josh Jack that's my dog Lisa he gonna, gonna have a long night. Mm-hmm. Oh, you gotta respect. He was in that WBSS tournament, mm-hmm. you know, and I love the tournament style. I Me wish too. all boxing was like that. I think it would be more fair. You know what yeah, I mean? You got it. You got to fight. You really you get to I mean? see who the best. Yeah, right. He's exactly. trained up. Yeah, I agree. Ramirez was supposed yeah. to be in the tournament. Ramirez was supposed to be in that tournament. Let me ask y'all about this one. We got this coming up Saturday. And none of Bob Aram's fighters was in the tournaments. Nope. Stop. He gets them after they leave it. Can you believe that? It's a yeah. bunch of BS. Bob is smart. Bob is smart. 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 Okay, Saturday. Neary Figueroa. That's the Saturday. Yeah, I think that's Saturday, yeah. That's on the undercard of uh. Figueroa. Easy. That's on the undercard of uh, Ariola and uh, fucking Ruiz. Yeah. Neri Figueroa, what you got, H? You you talking about Brandon? Uh, Brandon Figueroa, yes. And Luis Neri. I gotta go with uh, Luis Neri in this one. I like Lu- uh, Luis Neri. He he got a lot of power. He's a Mexican warrior. You know uh. Figueroa is good, but I just think Neri is better. He's explosive. He got power. Too much power. I think Neri knocks him out. Lisa? I'm going, I'm going with my youngin. I'm going with Figueroa. He's oh, a dog. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. You next. Real deal. I agree with her, Figueroa. I, but I, I will say this: he he can't. I hope that defense got to be a little better because he just can't take <laughs> shots. So if he, right. he's in there just taking shots, he might he could get stopped. But I think he should go in. I think he should win that fight if it goes the distance, split decision. But I think he okay. should win. I like him, DJ. Um, Neri won't have his pads with him this time. And I think about it, so. Figueroa is probably uh, walk through. Hmm. Oh, it's a yeah. tough one for me. It's a tough one for me, but I I I think 
I don't. I like Brandon Figueroa, but I don't think he he been in the ring with anything like Luis Neri. I think Neri's a dog. I think Neri need know he needs this fight because Neri wants to get next to Schoolboy Steph, which in my opinion, it don't really matter who wins this fight. Schoolboy <laughs> Steph gonna wash either one of them. Right. You know. So, mm-hmm. but uh, I think Neri gonna beat Figueroa this time. Yeah. Now we got another one coming up. We got Mel and Castano. Undisputed. H Money. Um, this is a good fight right here. I think it's a 50 50 fight. We know that Charlo been in some uh, good uh, close fights with uh, Tony Harrison. We know Tony Harrison beat Charlo before. We know that Charlo is beatable. Um, Castano, very good fighter. I thought he beat Lara. They robbed him. They gave him a draw in that fight. You know, um, uh, Castaño from Argentina, you got very good fighters from Argentina. Julio Cesar Vasquez was the first man to beat Winky Wright. You know what I mean? People don't remember Vasquez who fought against uh, Pernell Whitaker. He was a very good fighter. You know what I mean? Also, uh, Marcos Maidana's, you know, uh, Sergio Martinez, and also, uh, of course, Carlos Monzon. From Argentina. Now you got Castaño. I think it's a very good fight. I'm going to lean towards Charlo right now. I think I like what Charlo been doing. You know, Charlo, been he's been digging deep. He's been fighting uh, the best competition. I think Charlo's a little bit too tall for him. Charlo, his height will be the difference. You know, I think it's a 50-50 fight now. It could go either way, but I'm going with Charlo by split decision. Split decision, Charlo. Very close fight. Lisa? Uh, Castaño, right? Yeah. Um, I got uh, Charlo knocking him out. A TKO. <laughs> yep. Real deal. Oh, yep. man. Me and Le- we thinking alike, Lisa. I, I got, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think Charlo stops him. I just... <laughs> He not mm-hmm. letting, I, I think at this point, both brothers, they, they're not letting nothing else go to the cards. They don't got time for that. So, DJ. Yeah. Inside four rounds, to Jam- Wow. Wow. Y'all gonna, y'all, 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 you you going to see that, man. He going to melt. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. Too much power. Castano, he he I You know, he I you know. <laughs> He's he good. He's good. He's good. He, he I he just ain't he he never he he hasn't the guys he's fought they're good doing those two styles collide he, he it's just too much pressure four rounds he, he it's not gonna be it's not gonna be close at all you know all all that wild stuff and and and, and, and he's okay you know but nothing nobody sport is preparing him for that type of uh, that devastation he doesn't have that type of power to to make Jamel be like let me. You know, get on my horse. Jamel was he all they got Jamel's gonna hit with some hooks. The hook's going in the fight early. The guard is too loose. He's gonna knock him out. Four rounds. Then four rounds. Easy on the I'm thinking this fight is gonna be better than people think it's gonna be. Castanio mm-hmm. throws like 110, 115 punches around. His workhorse. We know that Jamel can be outworked. We've seen it before. But I think Mel stops him like nine, in, anywhere between nine and eleven. I think Mel stops him late. Oh, Mel got too much power. Stops him. Stops Castaño late. Mel stops him late. Knocks him out. Okay. Yeah, because he's Smuggles. sitting on his punches more now. Yeah, Mel got power. Mel don't throw Perfect. a lot of punches, but Mel's very accurate and he's efficient with his punching. I wouldn't be surprised I, I, if he I wins. I think in the Jamal first is more accurate with his punches. I think Jamal is slings wild to me. Not that he's well, not he does accurate. when he gets hit. I think whenever Jamal gets hit, accurate. he go he gets mad and he starts swinging. Yeah, you're right. But yeah. when he's when he's in composed and he's in his game, he's efficient and he's accurate with his punches. Mm-hmm. It's just he loses his temper so much. Yeah. Did y'all see when um, Jamel hit Jason Rosario when he grabbed his temples? 
Yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be the first. Time. <laughs> first time I'm trying to tell you, he gonna hit that boy and he gonna be like, "What the fuck?" I'm trying to tell you, he gonna hit him right in this shit. He gonna make, he hit chin, eyeball, nose, step. He just gonna touch him. I, I, right, he, he's a gym rat, you know. I, that line's the only thing is real with him, and he, he just gonna touch him. He's gonna touch him a couple of times. And that's gonna be the fight. Yeah, I don't think coming. I, I just can't see coming off a Texiera fight. It, it's it's even in you with like you know Harrison had a dog in him. I think Castano he's good. You know, Lava style is not the same as Jamel. You know, he's not coming there to truly punish you. Besides when he fought uh, Jared Hurd, you know, he sat down went toe to toe, and you see how that turned out. Um, Castano's gonna go in there. He's gonna try to just touch, you know, throw all these punches. And in that first round, you know, Jamel was just gonna counter. It's, it's not gonna last long. You 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 have to legitly. I don't, I don't know what he can do. I, I, I've been trying to think of what he can do. I just don't see any options. Okay, let's move on. We got one. We got another one. The fight that I'm going to, the 26th of June, in Atlanta, Georgia. I ain't been to Atlanta in a minute either. Uh, we got Tank, and we got Mario Barrios. Lisa? I don't really know that guy like that. I only seen him fight once. So I, I can't even really say. Real deal. Oh, man. I <laughs> I, I got tank all day. I think that's going to be easy easy work. But I, but I will say this. If tank gasses out late, that could be a problem. But other than that, I don't. And and not only that, he's gonna have to stand up at some point in time. He's gonna have to stand up to Tank, and it's, they're gonna have to fight. And if you can't take right. them fights, and you can't keep Tank off your ass, it's gonna be a short night. Okay. H money. You know who I got? I got Mario Barrios. <laughs> you know Mario Barrios. You know he's the bigger guy. So Tank ain't gonna try to go stand and bang with Mario Barrios. Barrios is bigger than him. Now, if he want to box, Mario Barrios got a great jab. He's a great body puncher, and he's trained by one of the best trainers in boxing, Virgil Hunter, the trainer of Andre Ward, straight out of Oakland, former trainer of the year. You know what I mean? So, Tank Davis, you know he's gonna be in trouble. He thought he was gonna he he thought he was gonna get an easy fight against Mario Barrios. They took Mario Barrios lightly. Mario Barrios is a hell of a fighter. He sparred against Devin Haney. Devin Haney told me he sparred. He told me himself he sparred Mario Barrios. And Devin Haney respected him. You know what I mean? So we know Tank Davis been fighting small guys his whole career. I like Tank, but Barrios is going to be Barrios with the upset, bro. Barrios is too big. It's too big. You can't be jumping up in weight, making those mistakes that Adrian Broner did. When he fought against Maidana, it's going to be a similar fight to that. I got Barrios. DJ? See, see I, I like everyone's opinions. You know, I like, I, I think, uh, what Adrian is saying, the, the difference is, is Tank is a way better boxer than Adrian Broner. He's way better offensively, and he doesn't, he just does everything way better than Adrian Broner. He, he's, to me, the prototype of a Floyd Mayweather. No, like no, no. out of all the fighters in in boxing, Tank really and he, he he's basically what Floyd is as a fighter, you know. And the further he goes up, he may not get those knockouts, but his power will, will be respected. Or in this fight, y'all gonna see a trigger shot. It's gonna go head, body, 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 head. He's gonna knock body was out. I say eight <laughs> rounds. Gonna chop the tree down. Well. Y'all should already know it's the reason why I'm going to this fight, right? I'm going to this fight because I got to be there to see my prediction come true. I got Barrios. Late stoppage. Stops tanking 10 or 11. Barrios is 5'11". He got a little swat. He can box. I think the length... And the punching, the body punching is going to affect Tank. I think he stops Tank late because I think Tank is going to gas out. 
I got Barrios late stoppage. I agree with you, Shelton. We finally agree on this one. You know what yes, I mean? We do. Yeah. What's <laughs> up, Red? Y'all going? Yeah, y'all y'all What's gonna up, lose Red? a lot of money that day, man. <laughs> y'all y'all gonna be like, God, damn. y'all gonna see probably seventy five percent of tank that night. Seventy five. And you can't even say Tank is better than Broner. Broner's still a four division world champion. And Broner, you know what I mean? At 135, he was a monster. So, I mean, at the same age, Tank with Tank is 26. I mean, Broner was already a four division world champion, bro. You know what I mean? So, I think Broner accomplished more than Tank. Now, who has Tank beat? You know what I mean? Who, who has he really beat, Tank Davis, besides Leo Santa Cruz, who was at 118 pounds? And the Tank Duck Lomachenko. Let's not forget about that. He's been ducking fights. Now, you're going to run into Mario Barrios. He's underrated. Mario Barrios, an underrated fighter, bro. Virgil Hunter, he's going to have him ready. He's going to beat Tank. I'm telling you. All right. So, after Tank knocks out Barrios and then he knocks out Keo Fimo after that, then what y'all going to say? Because that's what's going to play out. Floyd yeah, gonna let him lose some Barrios and that he knock out Barrios. All that Teo coming to 140 talk on cease. I'm telling you, that's it's, it's, his Teal probably goes to try to go fight Tank. The Tank gonna knock Barrios out first, then he gonna go knock Teal out, then all that. Well, Loma could listen. Tank great punish both of them dudes, both of them. They gonna be, they gonna Tank, be exact, that's why you say that. Tank, Tank, your favorite nah, fighter. I think skills pay the bills, man. Skills pay the bills. That's I all think I know. Barrios got more skills though. Barrios is great. Get folded like a lawn chair, man. I and it's it. gonna be Tio. At the at the bar, first is Barrios, then come Tio. If Barrio wins, it's gonna have to be late. It's definitely gonna have to be late. But see, Javante got power in both hands, so it's gonna be an ugly situation for about eight rounds. So he ain't gonna knock him out at 140, bro. His his power don't translate. Tank should have stayed away from 140. That's a mistake. Going going up to 140 was the, the biggest mistake of his career. Yeah, I've I think Floyd catch. made a mistake. I think Flay, Floyd made a mistake. I think he thought he picked the right guy, but I think Floyd this time picked the wrong guy. I really do. I think Barrios uh, is a better fighter than they think. I, and you got to look at the mentality of a fighter. So Barrios is probably sitting there thinking, so y'all think I'm weak. So you're going to bring this 30-pounder to my division to whoop me in front of all these people. I tell you what. Bring his little ass up here, and I'm gonna beat the shit out of him and send him back to you. Well, That's what I'm thinking. Y'all yeah, know Ivan under, Red catch. underestimate him though. Y'all yeah, huh? know Ivan Red catch be John Molina, right? And Ivan Red catch be him at 140, right? So be who? I'm just gonna put Ivan Red catch be John Molina at 140. Ivan Red catch, okay. you, know, you know, if Ivan Red catch is still making 140, I think he'll give Barrios a hell of a time. Even Adrian okay. Granados, I, I don't see. I, I think I just think Tank is a special fighter. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think he has to go in his bag and and be this extremely defensive fighter or or do certain things. You know, I don't think he has been tested. And um, I, that's why I say I think after he beats Barrios, then we will see Tio and Tank. I think that's the next people we fight after that. And it's going to be two back to back knockouts. It's going to be. Two bad to bad knockouts. He's going back on that knockout streak. Mayweather, he's coming eighteen. Yeah, Mayweather know what he's doing. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think. Uh, real I, deal. No, I just Tank not my favorite I fighter, know. but I, I seen him spar, so I just he just different. But like I said, yeah, other, you was telling other, me about other that. Other than like, if if he like I said, if he's let's be clear, if he's in shape though, if he's in shape, it's a problem. Okay, but if he gasses out late. He can lose, yeah. I, you know what I mean. But I, I don't even think it goes that to the late, to the late rounds. So okay. we'll see. And it's I funny you he... say that, bro. It's funny you say that because you remember DJ, what uh, Mister, what was his name? Uh, DeMichael, DeMichael Harris. Remember what he was telling us today? Yeah. He said Tank is different. He said that, did he not? Yeah, my yeah. My, my, yeah. my trainers, my trainers, they um. That, that, uh, before Tank, you know, went with Floyd and them, you know, in Baltimore, you know, that's what all the trainers, was, you know, they, that's that, even my trainers just said, you know, they've seen him fight. Like he, he's really a special fighter. You know, he understands the sweet science. He's really, he's a student of the game. Seriously, he's a, he's a student of the game. I think his flaws are outside the ring, but when it comes down to inside that ring, 
he can perform, you know. Um, Amateur-wise, as we use with Lomachenko, Tank has had over 200-something amateur fights. You know, um, he, he, right. really, that, you know he can really box. But okay. his power is something like, when we think about them old school fighters, he has the power and the skill. You know, and a lot of fighters, they don't have that balance. You know, it's either they strong in this side or they just strong on that side. And Tank is, is like a, a, a well-rounded box. He has that power, he has the IQ and all these other assets. You know, he, he could be one of the greats. You know, he just has to be focused. So let's not forget, though, those uppercuts put people to sleep. Let's not forget about it. That's it, true. It, made, it made Leo Santa Cruz start rushing. That's why Lance, Leo Santa Cruz, once he started hitting with them uppercuts, flusher and flusher, he said, shit, I got to keep trying to rush him. And then he just batted him there to the corner and knocked that knock off. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask everybody on this panel this. Who on this panel actually gave Leo Santa Cruz a chance? I rest my case. <laughs> Nobody thought Santa Cruz was going to win that fight. Everybody knew Tank was going to knock his little ass out. Santa Cruz started at 118 pounds. He shouldn't even been in the ring with Tank. He just wanted the money. He needs the payday, which I ain't mad at him. And he made a good account of himself. He did. You know what's crazy? Leo, Leo, he didn't think about Leo. From what I heard, um, Al paid Leo well. He didn't really need the money. I, I, I will never understand what the hell made him want to fight Tank. I would never understand because <laughs> he, he was living. If you seen him doing the, uh, the press closing, uh, the trailers and stuff, he had a beautiful yeah. home, beautiful family and stuff. But this motherfucker yeah. just decided I'm going to fight the heaviest puncher, one of the biggest punches in boxing. You know, yeah, I didn't understand it. But you know, I think it's a Mikey Garcia move. Why, why not stack the bread? Because everybody knew Mikey shouldn't have been in the ring with Errol. Everybody knew that. Right. At all. I didn't. I was so shocked. When I saw Sugar Ray Leonard say that bullshit, that damn near turned the TV off. <laughs> I was like, damn, damn, Ray, I, I respect you. You gonna say some dumb shit like that? This motherfucker finna get killed up in there. He can't whoop Errol. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he dared to be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he dared, all right. I think, I think Mikey threw a total of like 80 or 90 punches in the whole fucking fight. Come on, man. He, he ate, what he ate over a thousand punches? What he ate like, <laughs> he ate a lot <laughs> Errol of beat the, <laughs> Errol beat the dog shit out of him. Oh, he beat the shit out of him. That was embarrassing. I was yeah, embarrassed at that. dog day. shit out of him. But Danny, but uh, Mikey got $7 million for that fight, didn't he? Yeah, no, he got 7 for for uh, Jesse Vargas. I, oh, I wow. think he's moving. I think he's moving good though, because isn't isn't Mikey? Uh, he's independent, right? He's his own promoter, ain't he? Yeah, well, Mikey's I, his own promoter. Yeah, so yeah, he's, yeah. He's just jumping the fights here and there, signing here, getting that bag, going over here, getting that bag. So as far as money you, wise, he's moving real good. Did you hear the dumb shit he said yesterday? No, nah, cool. Mikey. Mikey oh, Pacquiao. Pacquiao. No, he said if he can't get the Pacquiao fight, he won't. Uh, Terrence. Go ahead, shit. Go ahead. Go right in. Go ahead. Yeah, that's all. Best fight party in my life. <laughs> Easy money. I'm, <laughs> make it happen. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't even gamble. I know it's going to be a couple suckers out here. You know what? Though? He's, he's smart, though, because that's a big fight. Everybody going to watch. Yeah. Because everybody, you got to, you know, he just, just as far as the Mexican side alone, Everybody yeah. want to watch just for that, and then everybody now see. Proper, so now see, proper. real deal. You just brought a point to the table, and that's the thing I be trying to get across to the Spins fans. They say, "Oh yeah, he fought Mikey. He sold out the Cowboy Stadium. Well, he did that by himself. Mikey didn't have nothing to do with that in Texas. Come on, man, y'all can't really believe that, right?" <laughs> Mikey was on this. Mikey was a philanthropist. He went over. Where did he go? He, he was doing a lot, making a lot of moves before that fight. Making right, a lot right. of moves. Right. He built that fight. Mikey brought a lot of the I people like to Mikey. Mikey. I he like how he dropped. moves as far as his career now because he's mm -hmm. not tied on to anybody. Yeah, it's facts. I think I think Mikey and Danny are um they they both want a a page of trying to um assist fighters now um. After boxing, they're trying to um, educate boxers and help them uh, invest their money now. You know that's good. That's good. Yeah, Mikey's sitting on some chippers too. Mikey's yeah. sitting nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
It's a lot we of got, fighters that's doing well. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. We got one Saturday night, y'all. Saturday night. Who? We got Dimitri Vivo. And some oh. dude named Richards. I never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> never heard of him, yeah. Ooh. Some dude named Richards. H Money, you heard of Richards? I guess H is gone. Lisa, you heard of Richards? No, but I know uh, Dimitri Bivo. He's a very good fighter. <laughs> what very about you, good Real Deal? Mm. Real Deal, you heard of Richards? No. <laughs> so you already know how that fight going to go. Yeah. What about you, uh, DJ? You heard of Richards, right? I don't, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Why has he been out the ring so long? Is it just because of the COVID or? Bevo? Yeah. Yeah. Probably had COVID. You know, he don't live in the state, so. No, no, no. Uh, I didn't say he had it. I'm saying that is it because of the pandemic? Yeah, I'm saying, you know, most of the people, you know, most of them Eastern Europeans, Eastern Europeans caught it, though. A lot of the dudes caught the shit. They had to sit right. out and get well and all that shit. So it could be that. I don't know. I don't know why he been out the ring so long. But he in the ring Saturday night. So we all know we got b in that one. All right. A lot of people think he the best at 175. I don't know about that. I think there's two fighters up there that can beat him. Better be if I think, beats him. I just something better be if is a dog. He's a monster. And it's a new guy in the division just came back. Just got re-signed by Golden Boy. Gilberto Zerto Ramirez. I think Zerto Ramirez is the truth. I think he's gonna <laughs> get both of them boys some problems. Yeah. Bertoriev don't fight a lot though. He yeah, just fought when he just when did he fight last? Lisa, did he just fight a couple weeks ago? Yeah, yeah he, he he he's got a long amateur pedigree, but not a lot of yeah. old fights. He was supposed to fight as mandatory over in China, but um it was something going on over there politically with the Muslims. Right. He didn't fight. And then something came up again. And then uh, the COVID. And then we finally just got this fight recently. Yeah, he fighting Joe Smith next. He going to beat the show. He got... yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> Joe Gray get a couple dollars. And he going to go back to Iron. I don't know. That's just sad. He need, yeah. he need to hang that shit up. Joe probably going to become a... Uh... Buy him a construction company. You know he's a carpenter, right? He's a labor. Joe's a labor. He's a union labor. So he probably gonna buy him a construction. Company. Yeah, he gonna become. He gonna buy him a company probably. <laughs> yeah, one problem. Because Joe going, got a little paper. Joe got a little money, man. Joe like four five million dollars strong. Joe got some paper. Four five million. Yeah. Joe got See, that's money. the reason I want to box. I'm like, shit, quit <laughs> easy, man. <laughs> four five million, just do that. Shit. Shit. What you think about that fight, uh, Real Deal? Joe Smith and uh, Better Be F. Mm. I like Joe Smith, but I don't know. To me, that it, it should be a good fight. I don't think it goes the distance. Uh, I can't even pick, really, honestly. Between who? You said you can't fighters? pick between Smith and better be if he can't pick. Oh damn! <laughs> I don't know. Like it, I, I could, I don't know. Smith going to get into that exchange with him. That's all she. Listen, he he he's a tough guy. I, I, you know he's tough. You know he's gritty. But that's not how you fight a better be if. And you can't even try to outbox better be if. We saw that what, with what if Smith wins though. Let's say he wins. Mm-hmm. Dang, that's a good question. If he if he wins, I'll tell you exactly what he's gonna do. Go ahead first. I'll tell you later. Go ahead. I know exactly what he's gonna do if he wins. Yeah, yeah if he wins, I think he'll 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 fight he'll fight for that undisputed win or lose a draw, but you gotta pay him now. You have to pay yeah. him on good money. Of course. So I think you know what I think he's gonna do? Hmm? If he wins, because you know we got Zerto. And uh, Bevo coming up in September, October, right? But if Joe, Sw- Joe Smith wins this fight with better BF, I'll tell you what he's going to do. 
he gonna skip the undisputed. He gonna call out Canelo. Oh shit! That's a good point. Damn, I didn't even think of that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy pay there. Easy pay there was like <laughs> God damn. Right. That's perfect sense. <laughs> yep. Easy fight to make. That's what that yeah, like. That's that makes sense. that's his, that was exactly gotcha. that's his, that's how I would play y'all too, just like that. That's, no what fans are that's guaranteed. A uh, nice little check. Yeah, because he go he if he beat the monster and better BF. Because let's look at the real deal of it, right? We all know why Canelo jumped up to one seventy five and fought Kovalev. Because there was other two other motherfuckers up there with belts too. He could have fought, right? Right. Oh yeah. He could have fought better BF, and he could have fought Bevo. Didn't pick them. He picked Kovalev. You see what I'm going with that? Yeah. So, if B2B is out the way, he'll damn sure fight Joe Smith. Won't he? Absolutely. Yeah, easy fit it. Easy, well, Canelo, easy, Canelo, easy, yeah, legs, not easy dumb, legs. He understands the level of competition and, and, and the risk factor. So, he, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's, that's a quick two belts, quick payday, uh, a concert again, and, you know, <laughs> right. seriously. That's, I'm serious. If it's the easiest mm-hmm. fight, the, easy, the Caleb Smith fight was easy. That fight would be way easier. Yeah, that fight would be way easier because Joe Smith is slow as the last is in the winter time. <laughs> okay, we got another one. I forgot all about this one. We got Dubali versus Nonito Donaire. Ace Money? H still gone. Lisa. Yes. Um I got Donair. Donair's like 35 now. This kid's like 28, 29. Yeah, but he's still uh he's still a good fighter though. Yeah, Donair can still fight. Real deal? Yeah, me and Lisa thinking alike. I got Donair, and I just say that because I think um, his experience will get him through that fight. I'm a DJ. I, I'm gonna go with my. Uh, I'm gonna be a casual on this one. I don't know anything about uh, about Dubali, Dubali. I'm just gonna go with the <laughs> name. I'm gonna go with the name in uh, Donair. Okay. I don't know much about uh, Ubali. I seen him fight before. He's decent. He got decent power. He's one of those in and out guys, kind of like a Pacquiao style. But I think Donair gonna wind up timing him and catching him late. I think Donair stops him late. We forgot about this one, and I shouldn't even even ask because y'all motherfuckers might laugh me off the Please. panel when I ask you this. No, I, I'm not, I didn't even put that on my list. I don't care nothing <laughs> about that. Uh, Maul. Versus Montiel. <laughs> mm. Lisa. I, I don't know who that guy is. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go with Jamal. I don't know the guy. No disrespect, but I just never heard of him. Like that Real deal? Guy. What's good, like Yeah, I'm I like good. Jamal. That's, say I got the same pick. See me and you. I love that's the Charles. That's brothers. easy. That's yeah. Easy Lisa, money. That's easy money. Yeah. What you say, Lee? Hold on, H. What you say, Lee? I said I love the Charlo brothers. Um, but I got Jamal. Okay, H. Money. I don't want you laughing me off your panel for this one. Now, this is the next fight on the list. We got Jamal Charlo versus. Whoever the hell Montiel is. <laughs> yeah, it's set up for Charlo to uh, beat this dude. It's set up probably for him to knock him out. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know if Charlo got the power to even knock him out, to be honest. But I got Charlo winning. Oh. I got Charlo winning. I don't know if he knocks him out, though. Because he couldn't knock out Brandon Adams either. So, you know, oh my Brandon God. Adams been knocked out by, he been knocked out by a bum before. And, you know, I'm sorry for using that word bum, but it was an actual Ooh. Uber driver, this dude. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, but you know what H money? But you know what H money? Brandon Adams is cool. elusive. 
Yeah, you but know? he been stopped before, Lisa. That's all I was saying. He got stopped by like a, a guy that we don't even know that stopped bragging at us before. All right, DJ. We already got real deal. DJ, Maul, I mean, and whoever Montiel is. I got Maul saying, uh, Jamal going up. Jamal going up, Maul. Uh, um, I'll be surprised if, if it's uh, – I'll be surprised if it was a decision. JB, you just got here, brother. Good. Jamal, Charlo, and Montiel. <laughs> Whoever this Charlo, dude is. It's Charlo by knockout. Like them five, <laughs> six rounds. Okay. Okay. Well, I got uh, Montiel. I think. <laughs> no, I got Jamal. <laughs> Jamal will kill this dude. <laughs> uh, okay, we got another one. Now, this. Actually, I think this fight is going to be better than people think. We start with H Money. We got Chris Lil B Hop Colbert versus Yuriokis Gamboa. I got a. Uh... Man, I think it's gonna be a, a very a pretty good fight. Um, I, I think uh, I think uh, Chris Colbert could outpoint him, but uh, I think this is first time really stepping it up, though, really in competition. You know what I mean? He fighting at one thirty, so it looks like Gamboa going down to one thirty. I mean, I think that's what it looks like, but mm-hmm. I think Gamboa, you know, gonna test his chin. Um, I think Gamboa gonna be strong. I think Gamboa gonna be a good test for this kid. Uh, it's a good test, but I'm gonna go with Colbert by points. But uh, you know, uh, you gotta you gotta respect Gamboa, man. I want to see what happens when Gamboa touches him. This is a real step up for him. So you do, you know, don't sleep on Gamboa on this one because Colbert, right. you know, he never really stepped it up. He this is first right. time stepping it up. I gotta go with uh, I'm gonna go with Colbert, but I'm not sleeping on Gamboa. Okay, Lisa. I got Chris Colbert all day. Okay. Real deal? Yeah. I agree. Got to go with Chris. JB. A little beehive by knockout. Whoa. He, out of really, he been calling Gamboa out for the last three, three two years. He won Gamboa, so. You're going to make a statement. Okay. Okay. I think Gamboa. DJ? Is, uh, I'm going DJ? with Gamboa. Whoa. I'm going, I'm going with Gamboa. I'm, I'm, I'm a sick. I, I'm, I think Gamboa is going to get a decision. Ooh. I'm bullshit. I'm bullshit. <laughs> I'm bullshit. Um, I, I don't think uh, in this early uh, Cold Bear's career, he'll take that type of fight. I think uh, PBC. When um made that fight happen, Colbert's gonna be. What you mean? This early uh, in his career, do we? He been pro for like almost six, seven years now. That's not the PBC way to throw a fire that they want to be champion and with a guy that can beat him. Yeah, but uh, man, it's about time he step up. He been he been pro just as long as Shakur Stevenson. They were supposed to be on the Olympic team together, but he ended up turning pro instead. So, probably. All I gotta say though. Is Gamboa a step up fight? Yes. The Colbert? Yes. He ain't fought nobody close to Gamboa. He ain't fought nobody close to that. I still think Lil B Hop go get him with just uh, athleticism and skill. I think, like, H Money is going to be a a decision, 12 round, unanimous. But I think Colbert beats him. We played at 130. 130. I'm going back with Gamboa. I'm going to pick Gamboa. Okay. I I pick Gamboa. Okay, we got one more. We got Rigo and Casimero. I think it's 118. That fight is canceled. It's canceled. It got canceled? Casimero what happened? pulled out. He pulled oh, out. He pussy. Wow. Excuse me. Pussy. <laughs> Another wow. Another fight that's ringing down. Damn, why did he duck at Rigo? Come on, real deal. You on the inside. Why are you ducking him? Your guess is as good as mine, but I think he knows he's going to get that ass whooped. <laughs> oh, wow. Rico got ducked again. Thanks, Lisa. I didn't even know that. When would you hear that? When would you hear that, Lisa? 
I saw a, a video about it. It's I don't know if it's on boxing scene, probably so. I don't know why he pulled out. I got five letters. What? Oh, I know. He's pussy. I know. He's pu- <laughs> he pussy. That's what he is. Soft ass. He a punk. They be hyping Ooh. these dudes up, and they be fucking soft, man. Who that uh, is? Casimiro. Casimiro pulled out. He pulled out of the Rigo fight. Who? Casimiro's nice though. He a good fighter he, for real. He pussy, man. He bet no. on Rigo <laughs> fight, man. He pussy. Casimiro, I mean, nice, he's excited if, type of fighter he, to watch. If he ran from Regal, he pussy. Because he, he talked all that nah, shit. He ain't he fight no he he if he, he back out, out he pussy. Fight? I don't know he why he pulled out. Andre pulled out a Charlo, uh, Jamel Charlo fight. And, it, I mean, it was something to do with some contracts, you know what I mean? Some business. So, okay. Yeah, not, it could be I'm not, I mean, I seen uh, Ryan Garcia. They tried to give him a Romero-Duno fight after uh, Avery Sparrow had got arrested. So, well, Ryan didn't take that fight. They tried to say Ryan ducked him. And then, but then Ryan knocked him out in the first round when they did fight. So, you know, I mean, I don't know, man. Ain't no ducking mm-hmm. just because a fight fell apart. We don't know why. You know what I mean? But right. Casimero is a good fighter. And Rigondeau pretty much, you know, he, he is a good fighter, too. I think he's Cuban, too. So he is a good mm-hmm. fighter. He's older. But uh, I think uh, right at this point, I think Casimero gets him, though, at this point, for sure. Casimero is, is coochie. He's a pussy. Nah, he's soft, nah. man. He's soft, <laughs> man. If he backed out that fight, he suck. He a sucker, man. And, and, and then to use Russ, then, then, and then to use Ryan Garcia as an example is terrible because he puts him too. He, he know that shit. Nah, you can't, you, you can't, fighter, you can't bro. use a hoe to validate oh. whole shit. Hey, that's whole shit. I mean, we, we don't know what's going on with Ryan. He pulled he out. <laughs> and they see had a picture of Ryan hanging out with some girl. Looked like he was on a vacation. He looked like he, he was. was. I saw it, it yesterday. Like it, though. And it she like was fine was too. It looked like he was high and shit, but you know, you know how that goes. You know, he's focused, you know what I mean? You know he's getting high, you know. He taking a break for a reason. He over there doing, you know, partying, getting high, getting drunk and shit. And the raw. He ain't got time for no boxing right now because he, you know, enjoying his life. You know what I mean? Eating, them, the ca- eating them Canelo tacos, you trying to say? Yes, sir. He, nah, he's gonna roll, man. taking steroids, bro. Started, I ain't going to Started fucking with his, his temperament, man. I'm trying to tell you. I ain't going to yeah. him to taking steroids, though, Aki. You know what I mean? That, I, I mean, we don't, I don't think he is. You know what I mean? I think he nah, just... I think... He needs some I don't people trying to get on that at every note so diet, man. Look, These fat motherfuckers losing a lot of weight. Look, he needed some fat. time off. We seen, we seen Tyson Fury take his time off. We seen, uh, we seen, uh, what, Rick, uh, Ricky Williams, the running back, remember? He retired from football. You know what I'm saying? All this. Oh, stuff. he changed. He changed Ricky. his mind, though. Age. Remember, he changed his mind. He we changed his ring. mind quick. We, we got Ricky that Wade, ring. When we got uh, that ring. Miami said, you know, "When Miami said, hey, you can go ahead and retire, but we're gonna need that seven million dollars back." You go, know, oh, 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 no, 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 no. Remember Ricky Williams <laughs> sure. smoking weed and shit and he quit football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he quit until they told him they needed it. <laughs> hey, tell him real deal. He quit until they told him they needed that seven million dollars back. Bought his wreck ass right back to the NFL. Oh, yeah, he had to. Like, he did have to. Yo, the money. I remember. That's crazy. Who yeah. knew? Like, I'm coming back. Yeah, I thought you would. Get your ass back over here. But that's yeah. what Ryan pretty much is doing. He's pretty much doing the same thing. You know, I think Tyson Fury has some real issues with himself, but I don't know about Ryan. And then this is a sensitive situation. This is a sensitive issue. He claims that he got mental health. So, you know, he you don't never said that, anybody. though. That's he what kills me. He never, he said, never that. said that. Yeah, he, he said, said, he said that in the past. He said it in well, doctors. He, he said it doctors. He never had any type of, uh, you know, inclination that he was right. actually going through something. I mean, like, we just hear this out, out of nowhere, out of the blue. Right. And, you know, right. And then we see these pictures surfacing. Now you you put it in the public. So now we, you know what I'm saying, got to break it down. We're going to react to your picture that you put out in the public. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a bad look. It's definitely a bad look on his part, bro. So, yeah, I just stay away from it. I don't say, oh, I think he's lying or this and that because, you know, so many people are going through uh, mental health, mental illness, and all of this shit. So, man, I just leave it alone, bro. Okay, I got one more fight for y'all. All right? It's the Neri Figueroa winner versus Cool Boy Steph. I got Fulton winner. beating the winner. I got Fulton beating Neri, Fulton to beat um, – He'll beat Figueroa. He'll beat any one of those guys. The only person in the division that I could see beating Fulton or giving him some problems 
will be MJ. And that's Murajan Akhamadiev. He's a um, unified champion at 122 pounds. I got MJ right now, number one. I got Fulton, number two, in that weight class. Okay. I don't think Lisa, I lean. Oh, Lisa, cool boy Steph versus the Neary figure royal winner. Um, I got cool boy stuff. Yeah, he's nice. He's really nice. He showed me a lot he's when he good. beat Leo. He showed me a lot. Real deal. Real I think deal? he might be away from his mic. Yeah, I think he away. All right. JB, cool boy Steph, Neary figure world winner. Cool boy stuff bees waffle. There's that. Yeah, JD, I, I pretty much know where you're going. Yeah, JD, uh, DJ, I know where you're going. Yeah, I know um, where DJ going. Cool. I got cool boy stuff winning, and then I think he moves up. I doubt um cool boy stuff, Eileen, and MJ fight. I don't think they ever gonna fight. Oh, undisputed. Ooh, Why not? Let's do the undisputed fight. I, I think that's the fight reasons. though. I think religious reasons they won't fight. Oh yeah, real deal. Fight. Back to you. Right. They are. They, 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 yeah, they're not gonna fight. I like real cool deal. Boy back Steph. to you. Cool boy, cool boy Steph. Steph. The way. Yeah, I think he's slicker. Um, he's gonna set the tone for that fight. I really believe that. And he he should he should win easily. It might get rough here and there in spots, but he 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 should do his thing and win that fight easily. Pa Paradise uh, Paradise found said Tio is fighting on the undercard now. What? Is that true, Paradise? Paradise found T.O. is fighting on the McBride undercard? Come on, man. Stop it. No. 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 no, yeah. I, gotta no. I gotta see that. I gotta see that. I don't believe that. What's um, the source? Mike Tyson supposed to be fighting Lennox Lewis? Yeah, Please. I saw that bullshit. I couldn't believe it. Lennox gonna knock his ass up. <laughs> hey, but is, is that official? I heard Tyson. I heard I heard him talking about it, but is that official? That's the truth. I don't. Answer. I don't know. I don't know, bro. H money is that official? official yeah, <laughs> that's a bad trip he took. That's a H money is that official? Are you away from his mic? Yeah, I got a cool boy Steph uh, smoking these, either one of them dudes. But I think the fight I want to see is cool boy Steph and Ali, bro. I want to see that. They're not going to fight. I know, cause of, I know. Um, I, it's it. It's see, what I'm saying it's it sound. I would. I would. You know, in all good purpose, I would like to see it, but I know they're not gonna fight. Yeah, I just yeah. know it. they're gonna move up. Why not? I'm gonna move up. Yeah, I get you. I get you. I get you. They might, you know, I, I never know, but I, I, I'm right now, I'm doubting it. I don't doubt it, but I never know about them. Okay, JB, I'm getting back on your head because you said some way out shit back there minutes ago, Mr. Brown. But, uh, you said uh, Dubali is going to smoke Nonito Donaire. Yeah, Explain Obali. it, though, sir. Nah, I've seen <laughs> Obali a good. He got a good, like, y'all realize Obali's an Olympian. A high, high amateur pedigree. He's a good boxer. He, Donaire's on a decline. Uh, they made this fight for a reason. I think Obali just going to uh, trend to the top after this fight. He gonna, I think he's going to win comfortably like, by wide decision, unanimous decision. I don't know. I said Donaire probably gonna win like two rounds, honestly. Damn. I don't know why. That's damn. That's probably right. Definitely. He gets hurting. I mean, Luke Campbell was an Olympian and he fights like he's ass. He fights like he hit all though. Oh, Bali is the world champion. You know, there's a difference. Oh, Bali is a good fighter. Oh, Bali ain't Luke Campbell. What do you think Ubali brings to the fight that Donaire hasn't seen? You say that he hasn't seen? Mm hmm. That he hasn't seen. Hasn't. Never saw. Nothing but Donaire on the decline. I don't see Donaire beating any any elite fighter anymore. He's on the decline. <laughs> you think Dubali's uh elite? I think he's an elite fighter. I mean he ain't no he ain't no known fighter. I mean if you're talking about him being known, he's not known. But he's an elite fighter. Okay. Ooh, that's this Saturday. Yeah. And that's on PBC? Nope. Showtime. Showtime. All right. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. 
I'm gonna side with Donnell right now. Um, dude, just because of a new way, the new way fight showed that he can hang. Um, I mean, after when does that fight? Are they, are they pushing for a new way? They versus who? Uh, the winner of that fight with are they gonna be pushing for a new nah, way they, fight? They was pushing for Rigo versus Casamayor. They was pushing for uh, that for the winner of that fight to fight the new way. So Rigo might just fight uh the new way off the, off the rip. I mean, he was supposed. I mean, if he would have beat uh, the fight would have happened between him and uh, Casamayor. That that fight probably would, that fight probably would have happened because that's the fight that they wanted. They wanted Casamayor because he was calling out uh, anyway. He said he wasn't no monster, or whatever talking shit. But <laughs> he pulled out the fight. So, I mean, that was the fight that was probably gonna happen. They was trying to make that film tape yeah. must look real bad. They studied them tapes. They said, "Damn, we don't know what to do." That's what that is. Man, they'll probably make they'll probably make this fight happen. Uh if if Obali can pull out the victory, they'll probably make him in any way next. I can see that happening too. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh because they'll try to get uh, a new face in there. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he they they want any way. He needs a he need a big fight. You know, he's been in the the North fight, but he need that, that mega fight. And I believe Obali or the or the Casamora fight would have been been the uh, the two choices, but since he pulled out the fight, I think they're gonna go to uh, Plan B, probably go Bali. If Rigo beats a new way, what does that say about it? Like, how how would that change or redefine his career? Like, would he would that make him a Hall of Famer? I mean, I think he a Hall of Famer. Definitely, already. definitely, I think he is already too. But definitely, that makes him a Hall of Famer. I mean, he been ducked, so I can't really. He been a lot of guys ducked Rigo. Uh, we we gotta remember. After he beat Donaire, he dominated Donaire, embarrassed him. Uh, Bob Rank, I mean, Bob Aram in top rank, basically blackballed him from being on t- television. So, yeah. for, uh, like a three, four year time frame, he wasn't even on TV. He was fighting in, in Japan shit because he couldn't get no fights on, on television because Bob Aram and HBO and all them haters said he was boring. Mm hmm. Knocking dudes out. So he was knocking guys out and they say he was born. Remember, this is before that when he was just out boxing guys. Damn. But but you know, after he beat the the, the cash cow at the time, well one of their cash cows, and no no need on Donaire, because y'all remember Donaire was like top five pound for pound at, at the time when uh when Rigo beat him. So mm-hmm. that kind of that kind of messed up uh, you know, Bob Aaron plans. You know, because they he was like, Oh, he's a born fighter. If you go back and watch the uh, commentary when he fought Donaire, you can hear Lampley and, and all them dudes saying this guy they don't want to see him again on HBO. But basically, after the fight, he just got he got blackballed from being on TV. So us the boxing fans couldn't really see him because he wasn't even fighting on TV. Yeah, he was uh he was very well respected in um Japan. They loved Rigo over there. What do y'all think about Loma yeah. versus Nakatani? Let me ask, uh, yeah, let me ask real let's start with real deal on this one. Real deal. Loma Nakatani, how you see that? I think I think we'll see the classic Loma. I think I think it but I think the fight uh how can I say I think the fight would be more um aggressive, but I think we'll see more of a boxing style, a real good boxing style from Lomo, and he'll put it together. I think he should. I think he should win that fight. JB, because no, don't because we a lot of people are sorry. A lot of people are going to compare him to his last fight, and we can't do that. Okay, I got you, JB. I expect. I expect the. Uh, I expect. Uh, a dominant performance from Lomachenko coming off that Ooh. loss in his deal. Yeah, me too. Uh, you too, Lisa? Mm-hmm. He's coming back with a vengeance, yeah. I mean, I, you know, Nakatani's a spoiler, though. He he can upset the, you know, he has the length. He do have the attributes as far as uh, he can outbox him, but Nakatani's coming off a 
he's had so many different things being in the hospital for a long time after the TTO fight right the brain bleed and then right. then he broke his eye socket was broken in the last fight so oh no man but he's tough though very tough hey money he's still going okay <laughs> DJ, that leaves you. Um, skill wise and just overall as a fighter, I'm not a fan of Nakatani. Um, just from watching uh his most recent fight, um, he's there to be hit. He's kind of like alert to you. He's he just plunders forward in a sense. You know, he, he he has grit, but that doesn't, you know, I don't think that's gonna be enough to be a, a boxer. You know, Lomachenko. You know, I think Loma could actually go in that fight unscathed and just cruise to a unanimous decision. Um, especially with no excuses coming from Loma. You know, he just goes in that fight and just boxes. You know, I, I don't think uh, Nakatani has the skill set to even um, get started. Well, here we go. I got Lomachenko. Uh, I'll box him. I think uh, Lomachenko gonna give him a boxing a boxing lesson. Nakatani is very slow. He has no defense. I think Lomachenko gonna outbox him and make it look easy and just put on a clinic. Lomachenko gonna school him. He might stop him. Lomachenko, I think Lomachenko gonna stop him. To be honest, when I think about it now, Loma will stop him because Verdejo almost stopped him, and Loma, you know, way better than Verdejo. You know what I mean? So I got Loma dominate. Okay. I don't agree with the, the knockout part just because the Loma doesn't have that power. Um, I think I think if Verdejo punishment though accumulation of punches and Nakatani don't have no defense, so he gets hit very easy. I think uh, Lomachenko, you know, will overwhelm him with uppercuts, different angles, give him different looks, and Lomachenko gonna stop him. Man, man has no defense, bro. He he gets like a human punching bag. He like a human <laughs> punching bag, bro. He I for think real. I think Rodeo can stop Loma, but I don't think Nakatani can. Well, watch the chat blow up on this one, y'all. I got Nakatani by stoppage. So knock Loma ass out. Nah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I got That's Nakatani. Hey, nah, boxing. Any, anything can happen in boxing. That's the way I feel. Yeah, I mean, that's, it, it can. We, I doubt it will. I I just haven't seen anything from Nakatani. Um, I, I, I think, you know, he's good for – he's he's doing a great job performing for his, his country and all. But <laughs> he, he, he has probably the worst skill set outside of Comey, in a sense. Like, those guys can beat you if, you if you're slipping, but their skills are just, like, subpar. Comey just got power. That's it. That's the only thing he get by on his power. He can punch hard. That's it. The real deal in J and JB. Y'all don't agree with me, man. Nakatani ain't gonna stop Loma. Hell no. Nah. Uh, I think <laughs> Nakatani. He he. Saw, I think his size is a problem, but that's it. Like but you can't. I was like, shocked. He, I was shocked he stopped for Dejo. For Dejo is a good fighter. I know he had well, the he bad in his tracks. <laughs> Yeah, but he was a touted. Um, I mean, you know, he was a, a good oh, fighter <laughs> coming from Excuse the me. amateurs. But, yeah, I um, think he had that bad accident, though. I think Verdejo gassed out, Lisa. I think he gassed out. Yeah, yeah he, he gave that fight away. Verdejo had that fight in the bag. See, I think if Loma Loma knew better than go for Verdejo, I think Verdejo stops him. Then I think Verdejo can beat Loma. I think he can time him. And, and land of one of those big punches, you know he has he is he, he's more polished than a uh, than a um, Nakatani, so he has more of a chance to catch Loma and hurt him. You know, uh, right. Loma yeah. couldn't take one of those big shots. You know, he's going out. Right. Yeah, I know Loma beat him in the amateurs, but you know this is the pro, so you never know. Yeah. Right. Real deal. You up there close with the Haney's? What is Devin saying about the Loma fight? Real deal boxing, you still there? Or you sleep? 
Now nah, I'm sure you guys, but I'm about to get out of here, man, because I got to get to work in the morning. All right, brother. Thank you for coming, man. Appreciate you, man. Good talk. All right. Appreciate the panel, it's man. I'm going to get Great uh, talking to you. Yeah. Salute to you. And I apologize for all that rah-rah earlier. I apologize, boxing. brother. It's all this love. heavyweight stuff got, got me heated. Oh, no. It's all love. <laughs> Everybody got a right to their opinion. We, it's all love. Yeah, it's all love, yo. All right, you guys. All right. All right, brother. Peace. 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 Have a blessed evening. Yeah. Let's go into it, uh, JB. I know you got some motherfucking uh, 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 opinions on this shit. What you think, Davey? What you think Devin should do after this? Uh, Lo- after this Lenares fight, he should go right after Loma next. Yeah, we're going right into it. Like, you know, Devin Haney been wanting a big fight for a long time. Allegedly, been calling these guys out. On, on on social media and stuff, doing interviews saying want to fight these guys. And then Lomachenko, they say like they don't be going around saying Lomachenko ducked them when he, when he when he uh vacated that belt. So go right after Lomachenko and get in there and with the big dogs because a lot of people you know what I'm saying call him an email champion. He hasn't proven himself. Well, when he get that Lomachenko fight. He got an opportunity to, to do that by going in there and beating a uh, three division world champion and Vasile Lomachenko. So he go 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 for the big fight. After this, I want to see him in the big fights. You know, we we need this. It's about time. You know, and, and, and he and he he wants it. He he trying to prove himself, prove his, that you know his skill set is legit and it's not just fabricated fighting against you know these old older guys or. You know, uh, like uh, Gamboa or Lenares that these that they claim that he's fighting against. So it's about time that he, he get these big fights. All right, Lisa, what you think? Think he should go right after Lomachenko after Lenares? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? That'll be a great fight, and that'll be a um. Great learning experience for him. If he can't, so you saying if it's not Tio uh, Loma, right? Excuse me. Yeah, I think uh, I don't think Tio will fight him. That's the problem. I don't think Tio gonna fight him next. I really think Tio is cap. I think he's gonna have to go after Loma because I know Loma wants to smoke because Loma trying to get back in the title picture. You see what I'm saying? Right. I don't think I. I can't say like totally Tio is capping because I do think he did. Um, I want to see him fight Devin Haney to clear up any disputes. You know what I mean? Right. There, there is a dispute there, but yeah, I mean, you know, he he's a big smash talker, smack talker. But um, I think that he did go in there and um, you know, kind of prove it in the ring. But I would like to see him clear that up, huh? He did. You're right. Absolutely. No, but I, I just want to see that. I want to see these two young lions getting in and, um, you know, mix it up. And I want Devin to get his opportunity because he deserves it as well as any other um, champion. You know what I mean? And he, he he's a WBC uh, world champion. Um, he deserves it. You know, but you think, uh, DJ, the wisest thing Devin Haney could do is go to Triller during that fight, slide in that ring like he like he the Rock and Hulk Hogan, and talk his shit right there in front of Snoop Dogg and all these people, and embarrass the shit out to you and say you ducking me and we need to fight. That'd be the wisest thing he could do because Bob ain't there, nobody's there. It's just him and Tio in that ring. If Tio wins. If Tio wins, he gets right in that ring. All those people and all those people watching Holyfield there, you can embarrass the shit out of him. If you gotta, whatever you gotta do, make his ass fight. You don't talk, you don't tweet, you don't type shit. You slide your ass in that ring, get in this motherfucking face. If you gotta mush his punk head, I'm just talking from a, 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 a fan of sport. And you degrade yeah. the shit out of him, embarrass him, you make him feel less than a man in that sense. In that sense. The same right. way Duran, B.B. Little, Sugar Ray Leonard, you got to do that. You got to go in there when it's everybody watching. 
on that night. The same. Where ain't nobody, nobody going to stop you. They going to let you go in there and you get right in this shit. You got them. People's elbow, rock bottom, uh, you know, DDT is that. Do whatever you got to do to make his ass sign them papers. Right. So you say doing the, See, doing the Ali list, do the Ali list, you know? Yes. You got to go say do the Ali do the Ali nope. list. Just, no more Mr. Nice Guy. No more Mr. Nice Guy. You got to go in there know. with Snoop Dogg and him there. Embarrassed. See, I don't That's know how it was talking. back in the day, but I know nowadays you just can't go in people's rings. You have to be invited in there. Snoop Dogg um, and them ain't going to give a shit. Yeah, but there's a COVID yeah. rule too. He so he put, put a mask on, slide. I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you, you got Snoop Dogg and them ain't gonna give a fuck. Hey, that, the Haney's and them, they have they have good. Uh, they have a lot of connections. He can get in that damn ring. Oh yeah, day. yeah. I think I think that'd be the wisest thing to do is instead of you know when you know T. One thing about T. He, he's done a great job. He won the title, but it's been a lot of hypocritical things and and. And things that just I don't I don't like personally. And then and I have been said, you know, he, he needs to stop being Mr. Nice Guy and just saying, I beat you gotta go in that ring when there's celebrities and uh, all these people watching, you know. There's a lot of people going to tune in, you know. I'm I don't know what numbers, but if you got Snoop Dogg there and all these, you know, famous people, you do it in front of them. You you make mm-hmm. you make an example out of them and make them sign them pictures. Anything after that, you know, is it's cowardice. You know, you, you you have to be. You gonna have. You will have to step to him in front of those people. You know, as a man, he got to do that as a man. You know, if he want if he wants those belts, that's all you gotta do. You don't type and congratulate. You say you got going there and say f you. You've been ducking me. I want these belts. I'm the real WBC champion. That's all he got. It's it's, it's, it's simple. You know, Tio kind of put himself in that situation. Bob ain't going to be there. Top rank can't stop nothing. It's Triller. Triller's already wild. You know, it's a wild setting, and they love to eat that shit up. That's the night. That's the night to do that. That's the perfect uh-huh. night to do that. Go slide in there, unless T.O. gets a, a restraining order saying they can't get in the ring. That'd be the perfect night to do that. That's not. Yeah, because I don't. I never heard nothing about no restraining order. I just thought that you are not allowed in people's ring unless you were invited in. That's oh, from right. what I from what I understand. Now in the past, well, you know, back I'm, in the day, yeah, it was different. The past was different. I, I Ali was the dog. master of that shit. Ali I'm was not. the master of that shit. Ali will yeah. show up to your fight, and next thing you know, his ass is up in the ring with the mic in his hand. <laughs> yeah, Snoop Dogg and them would love that. They would eat that shit up. Triller would, Triller would need something like that. that and, and Haney, that's the perfect time to do something like that. Because Triller, you know, and Triller, Triller, we just saw Jake Paul versus Ben Askren, you know. And, and that's, if that if that don't motivate you to that's your moment out your window. That's your only window of opportunity of catching Tio to get him to try to fight you. And you and you and have speak, to show up. And, and speaking of that, and speaking of that, JB, did you see that motherfucker Jake Paul last Saturday? Uh that, nah, I ain't see. I was well, seen, I seen a little bit. And I, that motherfucker is crazy. He went to the UFC say? fight, y'all. And you know, DC is a commentator, right? And he was crying and shit. No, this nigga start making faces and talking shit to DC at the desk. And you know, DC is, you know, he from Louisiana. DC one of the real nutty niggas. That nigga DC got up and went to the goddamn rail and put his finger in his face like, motherfucker, I'll yeah, beat you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did call out uh, Daniel McCormier. That's what he did. Yeah, he did that. I think it's a dumb move. I think DC will beat the brakes yeah, off was, that boy. I was going to see Jake Paul get knocked out, right? <laughs> I want to see him get knocked out because he, he keep picking on guys that can't they can't fight like hey, on Nate I'm, Robinson. Uh, Astro, I'm gonna yeah, say this. Like, come on, now. I'm gonna say this right now. If uh, hopefully he can hear me, leave DC alone, man. Don't don't fuck with that dude. <laughs> leave DC alone. Yeah, he been fighting a lot of small guys. <laughs> you know, um, Jake, and, and, and Ben Askren. Looking at Ben Askren, Ben Askren, what he weighed in like one seventy something with a gut. Yeah, yeah. Benasca is probably in boxing terms a middleweight. You know, um, right. Jake Paul is he, he's a he's a punk. You know, he, he doesn't really want to fight anybody. But if it, if it pays the bills, you know, people you know they, they like that eat that stuff up. Use that as an example. You know, if he want to prove himself and earn some respect, in, in my eyes, twice somebody to fight. I, I honestly have no problems. In, in my eyes, he's a heavyweight. Um, Jake Paul, he's a heavyweight to me. You know, I think he yeah, can make that two hundred pounds in box. He, he can fight his- DC. 
he would get knocked out trying to compete. That, that nigga everybody. DC said, "Hey man, that nigga DC said, Lisa, he said, I'm fat right now. I'm happy. I'm about two forty five. But if this motherfucker keeps calling my name, I will go all the way back down to two o five. I don't want to do it because I'm an old man. I'm forty two." But I'll take my ass back to 205 and beat the... I'm going to punish him. I'm going to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> he needs to do it. I hope he does it. I, 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 would be, I would be happy if he does it. You know, because um, just seeing how the MMA world responded to him, you know, and how he's been talking, you know, it's, it's, I don't think he understands it. I, he's a weird cat to me. He's very weird. You know, he likes, he likes that type of attention. You know, I'd rather be... I'd rather meet a person... I would rather want to be embraced positively instead of people saying fuck me when I'm in a when I'm in a stadium, you know. Right. That, that right, says a lot right, about right. you as a person. You know, right. hopefully DC knock his ass out. You know, hopefully by he 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 he's selling wolf tickets. He don't sell the wolf tickets and he see he write a check his ass can't cash. You know. Oh no. Well DC said, first of all, DC said, first of all, I'm not getting in no boxing ring with you. You want oh, yeah. to call my name, come to my events, you wanna fight me? You really wanna fight me? Come in the octagon. <laughs> yeah. And that's Jake Paul. Um, DC. Daniel Cormier. He oh, was the okay. former two time light heavyweight champion, one time heavyweight champion, UFC. Okay. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, DC is a monster. DC is a monster. I wouldn't fight DC. I'm if really I could get away with it. I'm liking those Nigerians. They pretty good. Yeah, they yeah. monsters. They monsters. Yeah. That motherfucker. Uh, what's the boy that won uh, uh, Saturday night? Usman. Usman. Kamaru, that dude's a monster. He's he mauling people. Yeah. He mauling motherfucker. I was I was looking at the video of Ryan uh, Garcia. Mm-hmm. Punching him with the the thing on his stomach. Oh, got him. Punching, punching, punching. Yeah. The guy was just laughing. <laughs> Francis ain't shit. Francis is just a big, strong motherfucker. I seen him pick Shaq up, and that ain't nothing easy to do. Ooh, wow. he, so he picked Shaq up. Shaq said he had never been picked up in his life. That's the first time he ever got picked up. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> wow. That's a strong dude. Yeah. He said he wanted the box on uh the hot yeah. box with Mike Tyson. He said he always wanted yeah. the box, but um I forgot right. the, the reason why. But he always wanted to. Yeah, he don't yeah, need to get in there Fury though. What's in Fury calling out? In Ghana, yep. the big one. Oh Lord. Wow. He don't want to get in there with Fury though. Fury beats the shit out of him. In the boxing ring. Yeah, yeah, in the boxing ring, yeah. So, <laughs> let's get back to uh, JB. You missed it a little bit. We got uh, who you got in the Neary figure roll fight, JB? Oh, uh, I said, uh, shout out to the pick. Uh, uh, I'm going to say Neary. I think Neary going to edge it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got Neri in that one. Did you do the big uh, mega fight we got coming on June 18th? Uh, who fighting on June 18th? Jamal Charlo and his toughest test ever against some dude named Montiel. No, I, already, I did that. That was the, the first one uh, you asked my OG when I came on. Oh, yeah? He asked yeah. you about that? Yeah, we, we <laughs> talked about that. That one. I think Jamal might be in trouble, y'all. Nah. <laughs> oh, I, I don't see. I, don't, I see him knocking Brad out five or six rounds. That's a tune-up fight. You know that's a tune-up <laughs> fight for Jamal Charlo, man. But, hey, man, you know, I appreciate it. It was a great show once again, Shelton Moore. Yes, Lisa it was. Bell, thank you, Queen. Lisa Bell. Our brother, JB. Man, I can, you know, Tyson Fury right now. Number one heavyweight in the world, Neo <laughs> champion, two time Ring Magazine champion, undefeated. Just beat Deontay Wilder, the most dangerous man on the planet. Wilder was the number one heavyweight, and Tyson Fury shocked the world. What a great performance by Tyson Fury. Um, shout out to Anthony Joshua and all the other great uh fighters in the heavyweight division. 
Um, a special shout out to DeMichael, DeMichael Harris with the great interview. Shout out to yes, Yova. Sir. Appreciate y'all being Israel. Appreciate it. Lady Chan, everybody, uh, JC, Rob87, and 24 Geezy. And my boy Coco, the Don, JFL. Be out of here. Peace. Peace. Peace, everyone.